Hello everyone. Good evening and welcome to the session. So today we'll be discussing the uh, PYQs of computer system architecture, basically of uh, digital logic. So I'm just let's just wait for a few uh, seconds and let everyone join. Uh, before that, a brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Ria Rawal, and I have cleared my NET and JRF. And uh, this PYQ session is a uh, is a session for all of you, so that you may practice your concepts well. And okay, and basically, it uh, the classes uh, take place every day except Sunday at 6 p.m. Okay, so the time is fixed, 6 p.m. Uh, let's just wait for few more seconds to for other people to join and then we'll start our class. I hope abhi tak ke jitne bhi sessions hoye hain, it must have uh, helped every one of you. And uh, you must have understood all the concepts very clearly, I hope. <clears throat> if there's any problem, if there's any concept that uh, you were not able to get it, so please do mention in the comment section, in chat section, uh, we'll discuss that concept again, okay? Let's wait for a few more seconds for the people to join. And if you have already joined, please do send a hi and hello so that I may know that uh, people are there and we may start our class without any delay. Hello, Shiji. Uh, good evening, Deepak. Hello, Gaurav. So okay, uh, people are joining. Uh, so let's start with the class. I hope you are all clear with the concepts of DLD, that is your digital logic. Okay. So from your DLD, basically there are no, uh, not much difficult questions. The most important questions are based on your complement, right? Ones complement, twos complement, and addition of negative numbers and questions like this. Then we have K map. Another interesting and easy topic. Then we have simplification, right? Then we have questions on multiplexers and uh, decoders, right? Then we have flip flop, and we have uh, sequential uh, circuits. We have combinational circuits like flip flop, your RS flip flop, JK flip flop. Okay. So today I have tried to uh, cover the concepts from your PYQs of uh, earlier, we have done the uh, PYQs of 2020, 2019 and 2018 of computer architecture, okay. So I try today to cover the uh, DLD questions, your digital logic questions of these papers only so that from tomorrow when we will start our papers of 2000. 17 and 16 we may take the uh, concepts of ca plus dld together okay so let's start our class for today uh, uh, just wait these were the previous questions that we did so for today the question starts from here another important uh, topic another important concept that is based on your radix that is your base okay so here they have given you a following equation in which they have said 142 to the base B plus 112 to the base B minus 2. It is equal to 75 to the base 8. You have to find base B here. Okay. So try to do this question. And uh, I have started the timer. And try to do it within 1 and a one, one and a half sec minutes. Okay. Do not take much time because in papers you have to complete 150 questions in 3 hours. So you have to work on your speed as well along with the concepts. Okay. So try to do this question and answer in the chat session. Okay. Gaurav has already given the answer 5. Okay. And what about others?
ओके वन मोर आंसर आई हैव रिसीव्ड दैट इज सेवन ओके नाउ लेट अस सी द करेक्ट आंसर द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर डी फाइव नाउ वन मेथड टू सॉल्व दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन इज दैट वी वी ऑल नो दैट व्हाट एवर नंबर वी हैव सपोज आई हैव फोर टू so i am very clear that the base b base b will be greater than 4 and base b will be greater than 2 right we all know that this base will always be greater than the elements present here right so if i look at the options the only option that i can eliminate with this method is option number a why because here the question that they have given is 142 to the base b now if i put b is equal to 3 that is if i write 142 base 3 so 4 is greater than 3 so i cannot put my base b as 3 so 3 will not be the option now remaining answers are 6 7 and 5 how to solve 6 7 5 because all these three options follow the criteria that this base should be greater than the value here okay so the basic way to solve this question is just to simplify it by changing it into decimals and then solving the equation that we'll get so what i'll do is you all know that this is 0 1 and 2 the places right so it will be 1 into b square theek hai plus 4 into b raised to power 1 plus 2 into b raised to power 0 This is your 142 in decimal. Then we have addition. Then add. Similarly, 0, 1, and 2. Again, we'll raise the powers. So it will be 1 into b minus 2 raised to power 2 plus 1 into b minus 2 raised to power 1. Why b minus 2? Because here they have given the base as b minus 2. Okay, plus. 2 into b minus 2 raised to power 0, and what is it equal to? It is equal to 75 base 8, and we are converting here into decimal. So it will be 7 into 8 base 8 raised to power 1 plus 5 into 8 raised to power 0. Okay, so when I will solve this question, th this equation, I will get two values of b. I hope you all know how to solve this uh, equation. The equation that you will receive is I write here two b square plus b minus fifty five. Okay, so this will be the equation that you will receive, and when you will solve this equation, you will get two values of b. So one value of b is b is equal to five, and another value of b will be minus eleven by two. Now you all know that. the value of base that the base cannot be negative and it cannot be in decimal so i will discard this b and the answer will become b is equal to 5 okay i hope this is clear to everyone so now let's move on to the next question this is another important question we have already done a question like this theek hai so i hope ki uh, you all know you have all studied what these instructions mean so let's uh, do this question it is saying the following program is stored in the memory unit of basic computer theek hai and show the contents of accumulator register what will be the contents in your accumulator register at the end after each instruction is executed so they have given the location and they have given you the instruction and they are asking you to tell the final value that will be stored in your accumulator register okay so try to do this question uh, the timer has started and try to give the answer once you know what does this instruction means this these type of questions become very easy to solve so only thing that in these questions what you have to know is how what does each instruction means okay so whenever you encounter questions like this 
just make a page somewhere and write what all different instructions you see and what does they mean okay by that whenever you will practice questions of these types you will be able to get the answers and you will be able to solve them any answers anyone Anyone? किसी का somebody has solved it. Any any answer? What a point you? Okay, I have got an answer. One Alok is saying D. Okay. What about others? Well, let's see. D. Uh, ये question गलत हो गया था पिछले net exam में. No problem. No problem. अभी uh, we'll discuss this question and then I hope कि आपके uh, if you will see any questions like this in your future exams वो कभी गलत नहीं होगा ठीक है always uh, we have already discussed this type of question in one of our previous classes always no just use a pen and always write अगर zero one zero पे जो accumulator make an accumulator like this so that आपके question सही हो जाएं ठीक है so the correct answer is option D okay now how to solve questions like this see they are saying on location zero one zero the the instruction that is given is cla cla means here a represents your accumulator cla is saying clear accumulator okay i am representing accumulator by acc accumulator by acc okay so why they are giving this instruction because there is a slight possibility that certain garbage value or certain value is already stored in your accumulator and it needed to be clear so that up aage ke instructions you can save the values which are given to you in the further instructions so the first step is clear accumulator okay so suppose this is my accumulator and this is the accumulator box okay now at 011 they are saying add 016 now you all know that 016 016 represents an address here How you can say that? Because the locations value are starting from zero, and I can see that the values that are given to me are in hexadecimal. Okay, so this means that they are saying add the content that is present at address zero one six to your accumulator. How can I say to your accumulator? Because whenever they don't mention any to see to perform addition function, we need Two op two operands like A and B, right? Now here they have only uh, only written add zero one six add zero one six to where? So it is by default understood that add zero one six to accumulator. Okay, so now we'll go to zero one six location. From here we will go zero one six. Now what is stored in zero one six? C one A five. So I will add C one A five. to my accumulator c1 a5 theek hai okay now what is the next instruction next instruction is saying bun 014 now what does this bun means it means branch unconditionally branch means basically jump Okay, so it means jump unconditionally to zero one fourth location. Now, what does it mean? Ki I was at zero one two. Now, without following any condition, I just have to jump directly to zero one four. Now, what is at zero one four? At zero one four, they have and zero one seven. Now, what is this and zero one seven? And zero one seven means. Take the content from zero one seven location and perform and operation with the content of accumulator. Why will accumulator? Because here they have not mentioned 
कि what is the second? Similarly, if I perform and, I then also I need two operands, ठीक है? But here they're only saying and zero one seven. So when they're not mentioning what is the second operand, it is by default assumed that the second operand is accumulator itself. ठीक है and the value will be stored in the accumulator itself because they have not mentioned कि store somewhere store on this location or there okay now what is the content at zero one seven zero one seven has nine three six c c six sorry nine three c six and what operation we have to perform we have to perform and so what we will do we will write c one a I think आपको visible नहीं होगा ना यहाँ पे so I will write here C one A five in your binary values because I have to perform and so what it will be C C represents what C represents twelve and A represents ten in hexadecimal right so I will write C uh, separately with the four blocks because it is in hexadecimal so C will be eight four zero zero eight four twelve हो गया आपका then eight four two one then eight four two one and five will be eight four two one. I hope this is clear. Then other one was nine three and it was C six, right? So nine three will be eight, then nine, then three will be eight four two one, then C is again twelve, so eight four two one, and six is eight four two one. I hope this is all clear to you. Now I have to perform the AND operation between these two. Now what is AND? And me, what happens is that if I have two ones, if I perform the and of two ones, I get one. If any of the operand is zero, okay, zero and another operand is one, then I will get the answer as zero. Okay, so both ones, then only I get the answer as one when I perform and operation. Okay, so now see here it is one one, so I get one. Rest all will become zero. Here zero 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 and one. Here one zero 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 and here zero one zero zero. I hope this is clear to all of you. And now when I will convert it again into your hexadecimal, what it will be? It will be eight. It will be one. It will be eight. It will be four. So eight one eight four is what I have received till now. So here the answer becomes. After accumulator, when we remove the value, it will be eight one eight four. Okay. Now what they are saying? They are saying branch unconditionally to zero one three. Now they are saying that from zero we were at zero one five. Now they are saying move to zero one three. That is jump to zero one three. And what is that zero one three? Halt. It means halt. Halt means stop. So now, what is the value in accumulator? Eight one eight four. So our answer becomes eight one eight four. Okay, I hope this is clear to you now, everyone. Any problem? Please uh, just ask. I'll answer it. Clear now, everyone. Now I hope when uh, when you will have questions like this, you don't you will not get confused, and there's a high probability that it will not get wrong. right everyone yes okay very good now this is the next question it is a very easy question because this is simple and boolean ex expression ab plus ab bar plus a bar c plus ac is unaffected by the value of boolean variable they are asking you repeat again the previous one okay uh, everyone just write this and try to solve this meanwhile i'll repeat the previous one just write this expression and try to solve it okay See here in this question, they have given you certain uh, you see uh, instructions, and they're asking you to find the value that is stored in your accumulator register. Okay, so let me just erase it. Then we will. I'll explain again. Okay, now the first instruction that they are saying is that CLA. What does CLA means? Clear the accumulator. So okay, I have cleared my accumulator. No problem. Then zero one one instruction is saying add zero one six. Now zero one six is definitely a location. Okay, so zero one six ko zero one six pe you will see what is the content at zero one six. At zero one six you have C one A five. You will uh, add this 
C1A5 with the content of accumulator and in accumulator you have just cleared it now so the value at accumulator is either 0 or it is null okay so what it means it means that send the C1A5 to your accumulator now my accumulator has this value C1A5 now they are saying now we move to the next instruction what they are saying it, they are saying BUN014 BUN means branch unconditionally now what does this branch means branch means to jump okay so there are two types of jump instructions one is your when you have to jump unconditionally and second when you when there is a certain condition you have to check that condition when the condition comes true then you have i don't understand now okay wait let, uh, let me explain again see now they are giving you certain instructions and they are saying that you at this location this is instruction and you have to follow it okay now first we will start from here what is given at location 10 at location 010 they are saying cla cla means clear the accumulator okay you all know that accumulator is a type of register so they are saying clear the accumulator register okay now there is an accumulator register with me ar okay it contains certain value and now it is refreshed or it is cleared now it contains no value within itself okay now i'll move to my next instruction what it is saying it is saying add 016 now whenever we have few uh, what you say whenever we have to add something we need two operands right we need two values to be added together if we have to add anything right now here they have given add 016 now i know 016 i can see that it is a location here right so it means and nothing is given here so it means add 016 to a 016 means the content at 016 because i can see that at 016 they have given me a certain value the value is in hexadecimal how can i make it in hexadecimal because it contains c and it contains a what is that 016 c1a5 now i have added this i have shifted this value to your accumulator register okay now we see our next instruction it is bun014 what does this this mean it means branch unconditionally okay now what is branch branch means jump jump unconditionally means that there is no condition you just have to jump to your location 014 clear now i will move directly to 014 instead of covering 013 i will go directly to 014 what is given at 014 at 014 they are saying and 017 now 017 i can see is another location to me okay and at 017 they have given this value it is also in hexadecimal what operation i have to perform i have to perform and operation now similarly like add for and also i need two operands a and b i have one operand that is 936 what about the second operand now nothing is being mentioned mentioned here so it means that and 0172AR it is by default your accumulator register only whenever we perform any operation between accumulator register and any other content we do not mention separately the accumulator register we, sep we mention only one operand that is from where the value has to be taken the address from where the value has to be taken and the second operand is considered as the content of your accumulator register now we have to perform and between 017 017 kya hai 93c6 okay and between what 93c6 and c1a5 now here i have told you how to perform and operation c1a5 okay now c ko if i have to represent in binary i know that c means 12 c represents 12 in hexadecimal right so if i have to represent c in binary it will be 8 4 1 1 0 0 i hope this is clear to you because this represents your 1 this represents your 2 raised to power 0 2 raised to power 1 2 raised to power 2 2 raised to power 3 
that is 8 4 2 1 so 12 will be 8 plus 4 so 8 plus 4 will give me 12 okay so c1 a5 i will write it as 1 1 0 0 then 1 will be 8 4 2 1 a, a is 10 so it will be 8 4 2 1 and 5 is 8 4 2 1 this is clear c1 a5 then we have 9 3 c6 Okay, now 9, 3, C, 6 will be 8, 4, 2, 1. Then 3 is 8, 4, 2, 1. C is your 12, so 8, 4, 2, 1. And 6 is your this value. Now, how do we perform AND? Whenever we perform AND, which are our two values, hai, both the values has to be 1 for your final value to be 1. If any of this value becomes 0, my answer will become 0. And if both are 0, so I will get 0. This is the truth table of AND, if you remember. Right? So, simply I will perform AND. They both are 1, so 1. Rest all will be 0. Here also 0, 0, 0. And this is 1, so 1. Now, 1, 1 will give me 1. Rest all will become 0. Similarly, 0, 1 and rest will become 0. So, what is the value? 8, 1, 8, 4. So now I got after performing and I got here the value in accumulator as 8184. Now I will go to the next instruction that is 015. What they are saying? Bun 013. Bun means branch unconditionally to 013. That is move back or jump to 013 location. Now I will go from here to here. What is 013 saying? 013 is saying halt. Halt means stop. So what we have to print? We have to show the content of accumulator register at the end. What is the value in accumula accumulator register? 8184. So my final answer becomes 8184. I hope this is clear to both of you. And anyone else who was having the problem. Clear now? Everyone, is the question clear now? Okay. Okay. Now, this question that I gave, I hope all of you must have done it. Any answers for this question? Did anyone solve it? Okay. Okay, Akshay. Thank you so much. Have you done this uh, this one question? Anyone? Kisi ka answer aaya hai wale ka? What is the answer everyone? Okay, so Emily saying option 1. Okay. So, Purnam is also saying option A. Kirti is also saying option A. The correct answer is option B. That is option number 2, that is B. So, the Boolean variable that is unaffected is B. How come B now? See, I have this Boolean expression. I will simplify it. How can I simplify it? If you see here, from these two terms, if I say AB and AB bar, can I take A common? Right? It will be B plus B bar. Correct? Then add. Now from these two terms, can I take C common? And it will be A bar plus A. And we know this property that if we add two numbers where one is the complement of other, the answer will be 1. Right? And if we multiply A dot A complement, the answer will be 0. So please remember, when we perform OR operation, that is plus, the answer will be 1. And when we perform AND operation, that is multiplication, the answer will be 0. Now what will come here? It will be A dot 1 plus C dot 1. Now dot represents your AND operation. Right? 
so uh, if we see the table of and if we see the truth table of and what does it say it says that 0 0 is 0 0 1 is 0 1 0 is 0 and 1 1 is 1 right now when do i get 1 i get 1 when only both the values are 1 okay now here one value is 1 okay out of the two values now this a can either be 0 or it can be 1 I am not sure what this A will be. Either it can be 0 or it can be 1. So the resulting answer if we perform AND operation between A and 1, it will be A. Because if A is 0, the answer will be 0 0.10 and if A is 1, so 1 1.1 is 1. In both the case, the answer is similar to A only. Okay. Similarly here, C can either be 0 or it can be 1. So when I perform this AND operation with 1, it will be C. Now this is my final Boolean expression which I will get after solving this. Now after seeing this, I can see that the final Boolean expression is independent of variable B. So I can say that the variable B will be unaffected by the Boolean variable. Sorry, uh, Boolean variable B will be unaffected by this Boolean expression. Okay, clear everyone? So when you have questions like this unaffected type questions, what you have to do is you have to solve this expression and in the, in the answer if you get any variable that is not present, that the final expression is independent of any variable, the answer will be that variable. Okay, now this is another question. What will be the number of states? when a mod 2 counter is followed by a mod 5 counter repeat after a plus c uh, see after a plus c what i said was ki now i can see that out of a b and c variable b is the only variable that is not present in this final expression so the variable that is not present in the final expression will be the variable that will remain unaffected by this boolean expression. So B will become my answer. Okay. Now try to solve this question. What will be the number of states when a mod 2 counter is followed by mod 5 counter? And the timer has started. So try to solve it within the given time and give the answer. Kirti is saying 2, okay. Yuvraj is also saying, okay, option 2, okay. What about others? Any guesses? Guess work will also work. Kabhi kabhi it okay bhi sahi ho jate hain. So, guess work will also work. Kunam is also saying option 2, okay. So, let's see the correct answer. The correct answer is option number two very good everyone the correct answer is option two now see this is basically a formula you can say or it is well, it is a proven fact when we have a question where we have to find that mod x counter is followed by mod y counter then the resultant counter will always have mod x into y counter here mod x was mod x is mod 2 and mod y is mod 5 okay so the resultant counter the number of states that the resultant counter will have will be mod 2 into 5 so it will be mod 10 okay so do remember this point this is an important point because it is a direct question and if you if you know this point maybe your answer is very good but those who are having a little bit confusion so always remember this when you have a question like mod x counter mod counter is followed by a mod counter sorry 
so just sim simply perform multiplication between this value and this value and that will be your final answer okay now this is another question and this is the same question that we have did only the values have changed so try to do this question the equation that is given to us is 146 base b plus 313 base b minus 2 is equal to 246 base 8 okay so try to solve this question and give me the try to give the correct answer but no problem if it is wrong also but try to give the answer please Anyone? Any answer from anyone? So the correct answer is option number that is 7 option number 2 that is b is equal to 7 is the correct answer now how to solve this question is basically correct correct you have to give the right answer correct see what you do is you just convert it into uh, decimal base, base 10 okay so when you will convert there are two methods to solve these type of questions First one is just convert it into your base 10. Okay, so it will be b square plus b square plus 4b plus 6 plus 3 into b minus 2 whole square plus 1 b minus 2 plus 3. Okay, it is equal to 2 into 8 square plus 4 into 8 raised to power 1 plus 6 into 8 raised to power 0 now what you do is you simply you try to put this value here put b is equal to 8 then put b is equal to 7 okay either you can solve this way or what you can do is you try to solve this equation and then get the answer now the equation that was obtained from this question was 4b square minus 7b minus 147 equal to 0 okay now how to solve question like this you all know that we have a formula that if we have to find base if if it is written in the form 4x square minus 7x minus 147 equal to 0 so how do we calculate x x for x we use minus b plus minus under root then we have b square minus 4ac upon 2a right so a is your 4 b is your 7 and c is your 147 because the equation is always of the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 so when i substitute this value what i will get is the final answer i will get that 7 or something else but when i will see that the other value is basically I guess negative so it will be b is equal to 7 okay but if the condition only here is ki yaha pe if you will substitute the value of b every time the problem may occur maybe your correct answer lies at option number 4 so it will take a whole lot of time it is based on a luck basically agar ho sakta hai, your answer is first option only so it is very good without so wasting much time you got your answer here but in case when your option 4 is the answer it will take a whole lot of time so please do remember this formula as well it is also equally important 
मे बी एट टाइम्स यू मे नीड दिस फॉर्मुला टू सॉल्व क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस सो जस्ट डू रिमेम्बर दिस क्वेश्चन दिस फॉर्मुला ओके राइट इट समेर इट विल हेल्प यू ओनली ठीक है नाउ दी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज बेस्ड ऑन योर गेट दिस इज अ गेट क्वेश्चन लाइक लॉजिक सर्किट सो ट्राई टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन इट इज वेरी इजी ओके सो आई स्टार्ट द टाइम ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट एंड गिव द आंसर ओके फोर्थ ऑप्शन ओके एंड व्हाट अबाउट अदर्स ओके अनदर ऑप्शन नंबर फोर इज द आंसर ओके so the correct answer is option number थ्री option number थ्री is your correct answer let us see how option number थ्री is the correct answer see this is your NAND gate this is your NOR NOR gate and this is your NOR gate okay so if I have to perform NAND here what will be the output of gate वन it is basically a dot b whole bar right you uh, we all know that if we have to perform nand nand is basically and plus not right nand is basically and plus not so first we perform and operation and then we apply the not theek okay? hai so a and b ke beech mein if i have to perform nand operation it will be a dot b whole complement correct now second is what will be the output here it is a complement i have to perform nor nor is basically what nor is your or plus not right so it will be a complement plus b whole complement right theek okay? hai now what will be your y i will get the input as a dot b complement plus because it is nor plus a complement plus b whole complement and the whole complement how i did this i hope this is clear to you that this is the value that i got from here this is the value that i got from here i perf this not this and this uh, complement is because of your not this gate okay i hope this is clear to you i'll just change the color so that aapko samajh mein aa jaye what i'm trying to say is what i'm saying is because of this gate i have to put this complement over here okay so now when i will solve this final operation it will be a dot b complement and i will perform de morgan's law here right de morgan's law of i hope everyone has heard de morgan's law what does de morgan's law say that if i have a plus b whole complement so it will be a complement this plus will change to multiplication and this whole complement will get distributed between the two operands and means that a and if i have a dot b whole complement so it will be a complement plus b complement okay i hope this is clear to you so it will be a dot b complement whole complement this plus will change to your multiplication and this will be written as a complement plus b whole complement whole complement i hope this is clear to you now i know if i have a variable and it is having double complement it will become the variable itself so here i will get ab because this double complement will give me the same ab dot that is your multiplication here i get a complement plus b 
right i can do this because this is one term and this is one term so here i'll put the brackets and it will be ab into then we have a bar plus e b okay now what will happen is c i'll perform the multiplication here because i can perform the distributive law so it will be a b a complement plus a b b now in previous slide we have studied if i have a dot a complement so it will become zero and if i perform and with any other operand and zero i will get the answer as zero so it will be zero plus and it will be a b right so 0 plus ab will give me ab itself so i will get ab and my final answer will become option number 3 i hope this is clear to you how did i do it i think it is clear now everyone why now you know why the answer correct answer is not option number 4 last step uh, this one ab a bar c i it, the last step was ab a bar plus ab b right so what is uh, what we have to do here is now a and a bar so when we multiply two numbers which are complement of itself it will give me zero and if i perform and operation of zero and any other variable it will be always zero because for the value to be yeah i come to that abb also okay so a it will be zero plus now see if i have a b b this b and b are same things so i will just write simply a b if i have two numbers like same if i have two variables which are repeating and they are in and or in or operation suppose if i say b dot b or i say b plus b theek hai they are same they are not complement they are same so they will become simply b and here also b theek hai so b b will be will uh, two b's will turn into one and it will be a b so when i perform all with zero and ab it will be ab as the option okay clear now if you have this also that a plus b plus b so always if they are not the complement of one another theek hai so simply it will be a plus b and if i have a plus b plus b bar so b plus b bar i know will give me 1 so if i add something with 1 the answer will be 1 itself theek hai these are basic properties jo aap sabko you know pata honi chahiye they will help you a lot when you solve when you simplify questions like these theek hai so now the next question i hope it is not blur it is clear to you is this uh, equation clear if it is blur i'll write it again here okay please tell me if this is blur okay so try to simplify this boolean expression and tell whether they are right or not and the timer starts now clear okay D okay both one and two are false okay answer for this question what about others well let's see the correct answer is option c both are true 
both are true now how come both are true let's look at the first question first equation w x plus w x plus y plus x x plus y so let us simplify this equation ठीक है लेट इज सिंप्लीफाई दिस इक्वेशन वॉट इट विल बी डब्ल्यू एक्स विल बी रिटर्न एज इट इज राइट देन प्लस नाउ वॉट आई डू इज आई डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड हेयर सो इट विल बी डब्ल्यू एक्स प्लस डब्ल्यू वाई यू नो ना दिस इज बेसिकली एंड ऑपरेशन परफॉर्म बिटवीन दीज टू प्लस एक्स डॉट एक्स प्लस एक्स डॉट वाई ठीक है आई राइट डॉट हेयर सो दैट कुछ कंफ्यूजन ना हो ठीक है सो नाउ वॉट आई डू इज डब्ल्यू एक्स Now W X and W X are repeating. So what I can do? I can write simply one time because wo, abhi abhi we have studied that if I have two variables which are just same and they are repeating, so I can write in write a single variable in place of two variables. Okay. So W X plus W X will be a single W X plus W Y. Similarly, abhi we have studied that if we have B dot B, so I can write it as a single B. so this x dot x can be written as a single x plus x y right now what you can see here is yahan pe from w x from x and x y can i take x common right so when i take x common here i will get w plus 1 plus y right plus W Y. Now we have studied just now that if we add anything to one, if we perform or operation with one, so my answer will always be one. Be it a, be it a complement, anything, right? Because in all we have studied that if any of the value is one, the answer will be one. I hope you all remember the uh, truth table of or, just for your. Uh, Uh, I'll just draw it again. So it is a, it is b, and it is a or b. Okay. So zero zero will give me zero. Zero one will give me one. One zero will give me one, and one one will give me one. Okay. So from here I can see that if I have a single one with me, agar if any of the value is one, so my final answer will be one itself. अगर दोनों वन है सो इट्स वेल एंड गुड बट इफ सिंगल वैल्यू इज ओनली वन देन ऑल्सो आई विल गेट दी फाइनल आंसर एज वन ठीक है सो हेयर आई हैव डब्ल्यू प्लस वन प्लस वाई सो वेन वेन आई विल एड डब्ल्यू प्लस वन प्लस वाई द आंसर विल बी वन सो वॉट इज इट एक्स इन टू वन प्लस डब्ल्यू वाई एंड आई नो वेन आई परफॉर्म मल्टीप्लीकेशन विद एनी वेरिएबल ऑफ वन I will get the variable itself. So it will be x plus w y, and see this is my RHS, right? So option, so equation one is valid. Now let's talk about equation two. What does equation two says? So what is your equation two? The equation two is w x complement. Then I have y plus x z. complement plus w complement x complement this was the whole bracket and y right now i have to solve this now what i will do here is i will simply open the bracket so it will be w x bar or x complement y plus w x complement x z complement plus w complement x complement now this y i have not included yet now we have studied that if i perform the and operation between the two variables which are complement of each other like if i say if i perform and of two variables which are complement i will get a zero right and if i perform and of zero with any variable i will get a zero correct so this value will become zero theek okay? hai so now the answer becomes w x complement y plus zero plus w complement x complement why zero because of x and x bar 
ठीक है नाउ आई विल ओपन दिस ब्रैकेट वॉट इट विल बी वेन आई ओपन दिस ब्रैकेट इट विल बी डब्ल्यू एक्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट वाई वाई प्लस डब्ल्यू कॉम्प्लीमेंट एक्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट वाई ठीक है नाउ सिंगल वाई हम इसको वी कैन रिप्लेस इट विद सिंगल वाई डब्ल्यू एक्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट वाई प्लस डब्ल्यू कॉम्प्लीमेंट एक्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट वाई नाउ वॉट आई कैन डू इज आई कैन टेक दिस एक्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट वाई कॉमन फ्रॉम बोथ दी टर्म्स राइट so when i will take x complement y common from both the terms what i will get i will get w plus w complement and a plus a complement if i have a plus a complement it will give me 1 so x complement y plus uh, sorry into 1 and when i multiply any number with 1 i will get the number i will get the variable itself so the answer will become x complement y which is my right hand side so this proves that my equation 2 is also valid clear this thing if you have any problem in any of the equations please just ask me i will explain it again clear everyone everyone those who answer on anything other than c clear now okay so the next question this is your question from k map and it is another easy concept very easy concept so there here uh, d is your don't care condition okay so try to solve this question and uh, the timer has started now done everyone any answer from anyone so the correct answer is option 2 option 2 is your correct answer uh, anyone who got the answer right see k map we can draw k map of three variables four variables right we have questions of these variables now here i know that the variables are four so what i'll do is i'll draw a k map of four variables theek hai four variables means 16 cells i hope you all know the uh, basic of k map right theek hai so here i'll say ab and here i'll say cd why ab and cd because they are given a b c d if they would have mentioned a d b c then you would have taken a d here and b c here okay so uh, very uh, just be very careful on writing whether what have they given a b c d or any other variable in any other order okay so it will be a bar b bar a bar b a b and a b bar similarly c bar d bar c bar d c d and c d bar now what i have to do is i have to fill in the values so it is given summation sign here so it represents s o p that is the cell will have the value 1 okay so 0 is here 0 0 1 2 
नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन फोर्टीन एंड फिफ्टीन दीज आर दी सेल नंबर ओके सो नाउ आई विल फिल इन द वैल्यूज दिस इज जीरो इज वन देन आई हैव वन देन आई हैव टू then i have 8 then i have 9 then i have 12 and then i have 13 now they have given me don't care condition as well don't care conditions means that if they are necessary for you add them include them if they are not necessary you can discard them theek hai there is no hard and fast rule ki you have to use don't care conditions okay so 10 11 14 15 10 11 14 15 sorry it will not be 1 uh sorry it will be x or you can write it as d theek hai so it will be d d d and d theek hai four don't care is given to us now we have to form the cells now we have studied when we did the previous question that ki cell jo aap uh, combine karoge the cell that you will be combining they either be eight or in pair of 4 or pair of 2 theek hai now when you see here it is forming 8 right when i will combine these it will form 8 i can combine this 8 into 1 i have to combine basically in the power of 2 okay so i will i can combine these 8 together by using these don't care conditions theek hai then next what i can do is next i can combine this with this theek hai and next what i can do is next i can combine these corner ones these corner ones with this don't care condition theek hai so when i will combine them what i will get is my final answer that i get is this whole eight will give me a right because the common is a here a and a theek hai so i will discard option 3 and option 4 Now next is this quad. This quad that is four. So it will be a b bar and a bar b bar. What is the common thing? Common is b bar. Then c bar d bar and c bar d. What is the common thing? Common is c bar. So the second option has to be b bar c bar. Okay. Now though my answer is option two, I got it now. But I'll still check for another option. That is this the corner ones. So it will be. A bar. It will be. It will be B bar. Okay, and it will be D bar. So my answer becomes option two. I hope this is clear to all of you. How to solve questions using K map? Okay. So uh, for now, I'll just talk till here only. Okay. From uh, tomorrow, uh, what I will do is. we i will take the questions of your previous years 2017 16 and i think uh, these five previous years were enough 2020 we have done 2000 i have i have not taken all the questions repeat uh, from where i have to repeat matlab what do i have to repeat in kema okay so i have tried to uh, uh, take all the uh, questions that are important right important concepts i have tried to take from the previous years 2020 19 and 18 there may be some questions that are still left so no problem for that we will uh, we will do if uh, whenever i'll get time again theek okay? hai so i i'll try to include it uh, in tomorrow session as well if i find anything important to it or related to it uh, kirti what do i have to repeat do i have to repeat again whole or from where do i have to repeat so please students try to practice more and more questions of your pyqs okay and uh, try to try to solve a uh, final statement this a plus c after uh, calculating all these uh, values of all the uh, octa pair that i have made of different quads quadrants no quad is a pair of four that i have made i will simply add the values so from here i got a so a plus from here i got b bar and c bar so this 
and then from these corner ones I got B bar D bar so this so I will add all these three and my final why I will add because of this summation summation means sum of products okay so this is a product term this is a product term and I have performed addition between these product terms if they would have given me pi okay pi is also there so pi would have meant that P O S and instead of 1 in case of pi I would have written 0 okay I try to find certain questions of pi as well if I get in your PYQs then if I will not get in PYQs I try to add it from somewhere else so that uski bhi aapko ek practice ho jai okay so this is till this is uh, for today and please try to questions uh, practice more and more questions so that uh, aapke concepts are clear ho jai and whatever we have studied today whatever questions we have done today try to solve them again so that if there is any problem or if there is any concept that you have missed so you will be able to do those uh, concepts and clear those concepts again okay so so meet you all tomorrow same time 6 pm do not get late okay thank you everyone thank you good evening everyone welcome to today's class so <clears throat> Patafat se please join kar liya aap sabhi lo so that we can start our today's session. Today we will be starting with a new subject for your PYQs and that is your discrete mathematics. So everybody please join and then we will start our today's session and just please everybody tell me is my voice audible and all and is the video clear to everyone. Okay and then we will start with our class. So just a brief introduction about myself. Uh, good evening Balakrishnan and Jarif both. And I have started this PYQ session just for you all so that you all are able to achieve your uh, goal that you have that is clearing net and JRF. Okay. And uh, this is the website name where you can visit for more information. And this is the telegram group that you can join in order to receive all the required PDFs and the notifications about the class uh, good evening navdeep and this is the phone number that you can contact on if in case you have any queries and all yesterday i gave my number as well if you if you have any doubt if you want to ask anything regarding questions or regarding any problem you have uh, related to your subjects related to any other queries related to net and jrf so you can ask me over on that number okay that is the telegram number that i have messaged you i have uh, told you yesterday in the yesterday's class okay so now today we will be starting with discrete mathematics we have already discussed the basic uh, layout of discrete mathematics the different different subjects that we have subtopics we have in discrete like we have set theory we have graph theory we have group theory right we have optimization so we will be covering all that today i have um, put more focus on set theory and relations and functions type of question Okay, so uh, let's start the question. Let's start the uh, today's class. Okay, so this is the first question that I have for all of you. Now, <clears throat> this question is basically on your relations. Let me message share. Nahi kitta. Navdeep, I have given your number on Telegram. If you have any query from me, you can ask me. Uh, that is the channel of Telegram. Ke channel hai, that is just for your for information to the students. That when classes are going to be classes scheduled. And if you want to share any PDF. Karne hai. If you have any query related to the questions, if you want to ask any question, then I have given you your Telegram number. You can ask me to ask me to ask me. Okay? This is the telegram channel link t.me slash digimento and channel ka naam hai digimento education. Hanji ma'am number save ni kya number? Ye bol ra. Okay, mein phir se ek bar aap kuro ko number bata deti hu. Just. So, mera jo number hai telegram ka, telegram channel ka, mera number jo aap, jis pe aap contact kar sakte ho, wo hai 98218. 76106 okay? contact on telegram pe. only on telegram do not call or message okay? this is just for telegram sake so telegram pe aapko koi bhi doubt ho kisi bhi cheez ka if you have any doubt related to any uh, question anything just just uh, message on this number on telegram and i will try to clear your doubts okay <clears throat> good evening priyanka 
ठीक है सो लेट स्टार्ट आर टूडेज क्लास सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैव फॉर यू द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज दैट यू हैव द फॉलोइंग प्रॉपर्टीज लाइक रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रॉपर्टी एंटी सिमेट्रिक प्रॉपर्टी एंड सिमेट्रिक प्रॉपर्टी गुड इवनिंग तृप्टी ठीक है एंड दिस इज द ए सेट दैट हैव बीन गिवन टू यू दैट ए इज ए बी सी डी ई एफ एंड जी दीज आर दी एलिमेंट्स दैट आर प्रेजेंट इन योर सेट ए and this is the relation that has been given to you and these are the elements of the relation okay the elements that are present in the relation and this relation is on set a now what does it mean relation on a relation on a means that i just give you a brief uh, what knowledge relation on a means that we have done the cross product of a with itself and then we have found the relation So now you have to tell which of the following properties are satisfied by the relation R. So the timer starts now, and just start with the this. Okay, I have already start getting the answers. D D. Okay. Good evening, Ruhi. Anant Wali. Uh, uh, students, I try to speak in more in English only. Uh, but still. somewhere i just get slipped on so uh, just really sorry for that i'll try to speak completely in english only okay so uh, ruhi singh option number 3 tripti singh option number 4 i hope you all are well aware about these properties about the relations that the properties they have uh, reflexive property anti symmetric property symmetric property transitive property okay so as as we'll proceed and we'll get the questions we'll discuss the uh, properties as well okay so the correct answer is your option number 4 that is b and not a ma'am channel mil nahi raha hai a uh, telegram channel uh, name is digi mento education okay this is the name of the channel and uh, the link is this only i don't know aapko why you are not getting me link uh, this is same link that i have told you um uh, try to find it again this is the link t.me/digimento okay try to find it you will get it with this help only because everybody else have got this link okay now yeah so we were discussing this question the correct answer is your option number 4 now what is reflexive i hope you all know what is a reflexive uh, property what does reflexive say that if i have one thing that i have to keep in mind in case of reflexive is that suppose if i have if my set has three elements a b and c so for my relation for my relation r to be reflexive all these three elements must have an element or must have a relation with itself like this a comma a b comma b and c comma c if any one of the following will not have a relation with itself suppose not this relation is reflexive in nature i will say this is reflexive but what happens if i have a relation with on a and that includes a comma a and b comma b i will not say that it is reflexive because it does not include the element c in itself okay so always remember that if i want my if i want my uh, relation to be reflexive all the three elements all the three elements must have a relation with itself so if you see here we have a b c d e f g we have seven elements okay and a is having a relation with itself b is having a relation with itself e is having f is having and g is having but c and d are not having relation with itself so this is not reflexive in nature i hope this point is clear a uh, good evening lakshmi theek hai now moving on to anti symmetric now mostly most people have confusion about these three terms one is your symmetric then you have asymmetric and then you have anti symmetric theek okay? hai so just remember the difference that i'll tell you just remember this uh, table that will help you a lot theek okay? hai good evening jisna see what what is symmetric is ki if i have a set a and it has relation a comma b ठीक है, so the if it has elements a comma b and relation R is having a set a b, ठीक है, so if I want my relation R to be symmetric, 
B, comma, A should also exist. ठीक है? This is what they are saying. If A, comma, B is there, if A, comma, B is there, B, comma, A should also be there. And diagonal elements, diagonal elements. What are the diagonal elements? Diagonal elements are your A, comma, A, B, comma, B. ठीक है? These are your diagonal elements. Diagonal elements are optional in case of symmetry. They may be present. They may not be present. ओके गुड इवनिंग दीपा एंड गुड इवनिंग दिनेश ठीक है दिस इज योर सिमेट्रिक नाउ व्हाट इज ए सिमेट्रिक ए सिमेट्रिक सेस कि इफ ए कॉमा बी एग्जिस्ट बिलोंग्स टू आर ठीक है देन बी कॉमा ए शुड नॉट बिलोंग टू आर ठीक है गुड इवनिंग आलोक दिस इज व्हाट ए सिमेट्रिक सेस एंड एंड डायगोनल्स आर नॉट अलाउड डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स आर not allowed okay so this is your asymmetric what does symmetric says symmetric says that if a comma b is there if a comma b exists then b comma a should also there and diagonal elements are optional they can be present they may not be present diagonal elements are your a comma a b comma b these are your diagonal elements okay Then what asymmetric says? Asymmetric says that if a comma b belongs to R, then b comma a should not belong to R, and diagonal elements are not allowed. And then what happens in anti-symmetric? Anti-symmetric says that if a comma b belongs to R, then b comma a should not belong to R, and here also diagonals are optional. Diagonal elements are optional. So this is the basic difference between the three. Not allowed means ki if I have a element, if I have this a. Okay, this is my set a. If you look here, if I have this set a and the relation, if I describe the relation as a comma b, a comma a. Okay, so now my this relation will not be asymmetric. This is not asymmetric because A comma A is there, and diagonal elements are not allowed in the presence of diagonal elements are not allowed in your asymmetric. Is reflexive and diagonal? Yes, reflexive. Reflexive relation means the relation that contains all the diagonal elements. Okay, reflexive relation means the relation that contains all the diagonal elements. If you if you try to understand the diagonal elements, if I have this A B C and A B C. so this a comma a b comma b and c comma c are your diagonal elements right these are your diagonal element this is the diagonal element so what does reflexive says reflexive says that my relation my relation r if r is a reflexive relation then r must contain all the diagonal elements r must contain all the diagonal elements okay now moving on to the question Anti symmetric. What I have told, anti symmetric. Me, if a comma b is there, so b comma a should not exist. Diagonals are optional, so I will just skip diagonals for now. Now they are saying c comma d. If you look here, c comma d. Now c comma d is there. D comma c should not exist. Correct. C comma g is there. G comma c should not exist. Correct. D comma g is here. G comma d should not exist. Correct. so my relation is anti symmetric in nature okay now let's see for symmetric up if my relation is anti symmetric there is no chance that it will be symmetric why because symmetric says that if a comma b exist then b comma a should also exist but here i have already seen that c comma d exist but d comma c does not exist so if i find any one pair also any one pair also that does not that does not follow the symmetric property i will say that my relation is not symmetric so that is why the answer is b and not a i hope this point is clear and the terms are clear to everyone okay now moving on to the next question this is the next question the relation divides the relation they have mentioned here is divide that is two numbers are dividing now you have to check how you have to make a set first make a set take example solve it by taking an example make a set from that elements of the set make a relation and following this property and then tell me what will be the answer so the time starts now
Ma'am, what is the difference between anti-symmetric and asymmetric? Okay, I'll clear it. I'll clear it. Just wait. The main difference between anti-symmetric and asymmetric is that in anti-symmetric, diagonals are allowed. Diagonal elements are allowed. Okay? I can have diagonal elements. Diagonal elements are allowed. I mean, diagonal elements are optional. You can have them. You can, you, if you want, you can add them. If they are not present, then also it's okay. So, diagonal elements are optional. But in case of asymmetric, if I talk about asymmetric, diagonal elements are not allowed. That is, <clears throat> if any one element is having a relation with itself, it will not be an asymmetric relation. So, diagonal elements are not allowed. Okay, so this is the difference between anti-symmetric and asymmetric. Okay, Rosalyn, I hope your doubt is clear. Now, we, okay, so let's see the correct answer for this question. The correct answer is option number two. The correct answer is option number two, that is anti-symmetric and transitive. Now, how to solve a question like this? What you can do, for you, you try to solve it by taking an example. Okay, so what example you can take? Take, take the example of, let my set A, B have four elements, one, two, three, and four. Okay. What they are saying, they are saying that the relation divides. Divides is the relation. So, what I can say divides means that if I have two elements A and B, so the relation will be A divides B. Okay. This will be my relation that A divides B. If I have, if I have this relation that they are saying divides, the relation divides. So, how will I read this? I will say that Two elements A and B are in relation, belong to relation R if A divides B. This is the meaning of this line. I hope this word is clear to you. Okay, so this is the meaning that A comma B belongs to R if, if A divides B. Uh, Rosalind, uh, basically there are no tricks to remember. This, that table which I draw now, that was the basic thing and that was the easiest way that you can remember this uh, uh, difference between anti-symmetric, symmetric and asymmetric. Okay, I'll add that table in your, what I say, the PDF, I'll add it so that uh, you all will have a, a clarity of how to remember the difference. But there is no short trick for now. This is basically the shortest thing that you can uh, see if you want to remember the basic difference between the three terms. Okay, now what happens is, now I have to make a relation R here. So how can I make relation R? Okay. So now if I have to look for relation R, it can be, I can have, see, if a number is 1, then we all know that a number divides itself. 1 will divide itself, 2 will divide itself, 3 will divide itself and 4 will divide itself. I hope this thing is clear to everyone. So in my relation, these elements that will belong will be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 and 4, 4 with no doubt. Because every number will divide itself. Okay. Then I have what? Then I will see whether 1 divides 2. Now tell me 1 divides 2? Yes. 1 will divide 2. 1 will divide 3? Yes. 1 will divide 3. 4. 1 divides 4. Now tell me does 2 divide 1? No. 2 does not divide 1. So it will be 2 comma 1 will not be the element of this relation. 2 comma 2 I have already added. 2 comma 3 will not be the relation. 2 comma 4 will be the relation. That is 2 divides 4. Okay. Now about 3 comma 3. No, 3 comma 3 here. 3 comma 1 will not be there. 3 comma 2 will not be there. 3 comma 4 will not be there. And in case of 4 comma 4 also, only 4 comma 4 will be there. Okay. So this, these are the relation, these are the elements of my relation. I hope this point is clear to everyone. How I made the elements of relation. Okay, now moving forward, if I see, if I if I want to check symmetric, whether the relation is symmetric or not. What I told you for symmetric, symmetric key property, I mentioned that if in order I have to check for symmetric, what I have to check? I have to check that if A comma B belongs to R, then B comma A must also belong to R. This was the property of symmetric. Now I see here, 1 comma 2 belongs to R. Does 2 comma 1 belong to R? 
टू कॉमा वन डज नॉट बिलोंग टू आर टू कॉमा वन डज नॉट बिलोंग टू आर सो आई कैन से दैट दिस इज नॉट सिमेट्रिक इन नेचर दिस रिलेशन इज नॉट सिमेट्रिक इन नेचर नाउ वट आई डू आई विल लुक फॉर नॉट ट्रांजिटिव नाउ वट डिज ट्रांजिटिव से ट्रांजिटिव प्रॉपर्टी से that if a comma b belongs to r and b comma c belongs to r then a comma c must belong to r this is your transitive property okay i hope this is clear to everyone so this is my transitive property that if a comma b belongs to r and a b comma c belongs to r then a comma c should also belong to r now moving on i will check One comma two. If I take one comma two with me, and I take uh, two comma four. Okay. So this is my a comma b, and this is my b comma c. So as a result, what I will get? As a result, I will get one comma four, and I can see that one comma four belongs to R. Similarly, you take any relation, any two relations where these two. Just uh, keep a check here that these two elements must be same. ठीक है वेन एंड देर इफ वी फाइंड एनी एलम इफ वी फाइंड एनी रिलेशन वेर दीज टू एलिमेंट्स आर सेम सो वी कैन से वी हैव टू चेक दैट दिस एंड दिस एलिमेंट फॉर्म्स अ रिलेशन सो इफ यू विल सी यू विल फाइंड दैट दिस रिलेशन इज ट्रांजिटिव इन नेचर सो आई विल से ओके ट्रांजिटिव इज देयर बट दे आर नॉट सिमेट्रिक सो आई रोल आउट ऑप्शन वन एंड आई रोल आउट ऑप्शन थ्री नाउ आई विल चेक फॉर एंटी सिमेट्रिक वॉट आई हैव टोल्ड फॉर एंटी सिमेट्रिक anti symmetric says i'll just write anti only theek okay? hai anti symmetric says that if a comma b belongs to r then b comma a should not belong to r and diagonal elements are optional so now diagonal elements are optional okay no problem now i have to see if a comma b belongs then do does b comma a belong no so this why that is why my answer is anti symmetric and transitive i hope this is clear to you if you have any doubt please anyone just ask me any doubt related to any term if there is no doubt just write it so that i can move forward with the next question clear everyone okay so now moving on to the next question the next question is basically your question on the thing that suppose there are two relations with me r1 and r2 and they are reflexive in nature theek okay? hai and they are on same set a single set hai a aapka so they are reflexive relations on set a now they are asking you which of the following statements is correct so they are saying that r1 intersection r2 is reflexive and r1 union r2 is irreflexive so these are the four options try to solve this question and then we will discuss the answer okay chalo let's see the correct answer the correct answer is option number c that is both intersection and union will be reflexive now how to do this question see take a set take an example suppose i take set a has three elements 1 comma 2 comma 3 okay now they are saying that r1 and r2 are reflexive relations so what i have told for reflexive that any relation agar if any relation has to be a reflexive relation then all the elements of the set must have a relation with itself matlab if i suppose if i have r1 and i want r1 to be reflexive one thing that i should know beforehand is that 
these three elements will definitely be a part of R1. Rest I can add anything. Suppose I add 1 comma 2 and I add 1 comma 3. This is my R1. Now if I look for R2. R2 is also mentioned as a reflexive relation. So this means that R2 will also contain these three elements for sure. If because they are reflexive. Now I can have 2 comma 3 and I can have 3 comma 1. This is my R1. This is my R2. Now first let us find the union. First let us find the union. So R1 union R2 will be what? R1 union R2 will means that I, I will add all the elements that are present here. Right? So it will be 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, 2 comma 3 and 3 comma 1. So this is my R1 union R2. Now R1 union R2 if you will see that all the three relations, all the three elements 1, 2, 3 are having a relation with themselves that is 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3. So this will make this union a reflexive relation. Okay, now let us check for the intersection. Now how can I check for intersection? That is R1 intersection R2. Now intersection means the common part. The common part between the two elements. The common elements between the two are these three elements only. 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2 and 3 comma 3. So now if I see that this intersection also is a reflexive relation. Why? Because in reflexive what matters is the that these three elements must have a relation with themselves. So since they are having a relation with themselves. So these three these intersection and union will also become a reflexive relation. I hope this is clear everyone. Okay, so whenever in doubt, just try to take a small example and solve the question by, by uh, taking this example and then we proceed further. Okay, now moving on to the next question. Now they are saying which of the relation on the set they have mentioned 0, 1, 2, 3. These are the elements of set. They are saying is an equivalence relation. So try to solve this and then we will discuss the answer. So the timer starts now and try to solve it everyone. Ma'am what is the difference between it reflexive? Okay I will tell Lakshmi please ask, but first you do this question then I will tell you the difference between the two. R1 and R2. How the last two elements come ma'am in R1 and R2? Uh, I just took an example, a random example. I just, I would, I see in reflexive, our main focus, if we talk about reflexive relation, our main focus is that all the elements that are present in A, that is 1, 2, 3, must have a relation with themselves. That is 1, 1, 2, 2 and 3, 3. Rest two examples that I took, that is your, uh, this, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, this all was just an example. I just took it by assumption. My main focus was on these three elements only. Ticket that was just by assumption I have written 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 3. Okay, Rosalind. Now the next, okay, so this answer, what is answer everyone? B, 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 B. Correct. Correct everyone. The correct answer is option number B. Now, equivalence relation is, what is an equivalence relation? In equivalence relation, it has to be first a reflexive relation. Second, it has to be a symmetric relation. And third, it should be a transitive relation. Okay, so ma'am, I really don't know my no worries, no worries, Rosalind. I hope my doubt is clear. Well, your doubt is clear, sorry. Okay, so if I want any of my relation to be an equivalence relation. These three properties must satisfy all the three, not any one, all. All must satisfy. Okay. So now if I look in this example, first of all, I'll check for reflexive. So 0, 0 exists. 1, 1 does not exist. So this is not equivalence. 
in C option zero zero exists, one comma one exists, two comma two does not exist, so this is also not an answer. Zero comma zero, one comma one, two comma two. But what about three comma three? So this is also not an answer. This is the only relation that is satisfying the property of reflexivity. Symmetric may diagonal elements are optional. You can have them. You want to have them. It is okay. If you don't want, then don't add. So this is symmetric as well and transitive as well because there is no pair that that is in the form of a comma b b comma c. Since there is no pair, so I don't need to check transitivity. This will become my equivalence relation. Okay. Now uh, Lakshmi uh, uh, has asked one question. What is the difference between reflexive and irreflexive? Okay. So now everybody, just please pay attention here. Suppose I have my set one, two, three. Okay. And I have a relation R. Which is saying one comma one, one comma two, two comma one, and three comma two. Now, ma'am, please. Yes, Lakshmi, I am explaining your question only. Now, please, everyone, tell me whether R is reflexive or not. Whether R is reflexive or not. Yes or no. What is R is reflexive or not? Everyone, just answer this question. No. Right. R is not reflexive. Why R is not reflexive? Because one comma one is there, but one comma one belongs to R. Correct. But two comma two is not there, and three comma three is not there. So that is why this relation R is not reflexive. Okay. Not reflexive. Okay. Now the second question that I have for you is now tell me is R irreflexive? Is R irreflexive? See. R is neither irreflexive. Why? Remember this property that if any relation R, it has to be irreflexive. Every element in A, every element in A must not be related to itself. Must not be related to itself. Okay. And since one comma one belongs to R, that is why one R will not be reflexive. Okay, this is what I mean. The other, if my relation would have been simply this, that one comma two, two comma one, and three comma two, then my relation R would have been reflexive. But since I have one comma one as well. In this R, that is why it will not be irreflexive. I hope the difference between the two is clear to everyone. Okay. So if R R will be reflexive when when each and every element of set A will have a relation with itself, and when R will be irreflexive when each and every element will not be related to itself. Okay, so this is the difference between the two. Now this R, this relation R is neither reflexive nor irreflexive. Okay. See what is irreflexive is that if I say that if my relation R is on set one, two, and three, so for any element R to be irreflexive. Each and every element. मतलब if I have this type of relation, ठीक है? Since I have one comma one, so it will not be irreflexive. Why? Because for any relation to be reflexive, for any relation to be irreflexive, I'll just write I R. Okay? Each and every element of set A, each and every element of A. Must not be related to itself. Okay. So if I want my relation R to be irreflexive, it should be of the type one comma two, two comma one, anything, but not one comma one, two comma two, three comma three. 
ठीक है सो दिस इज वॉट इ रिफ्लेक्सिव से अगर इफ आई हैव अ सिंगल एलिमेंट इफ आई हैव अ सिंगल एलिमेंट विच विल बी रिलेटेड टू इट्स सेल्फ माई रिलेशन विल नॉट ऑफ द एलिमेंट फ्रॉम द सेट ए मस्ट हैव अ रिलेशन विद दम सेल्फ if any one of the relation if any one of the element will have a relation with itself it will not be an irreflexive relation now clear roslin for any relation to be irreflexive each and every element each and every element must not have a relation with itself If any one of the element has a relation with itself, अगर किसी एक single element में भी if single element will have a relation with itself, then that relation will not be irreflexive. Okay? If you want, I can give you a few uh, question to try so that uh, suppose I have this A and this is on set वन टू थ्री and फोर ठीक है Suppose R1 is a relation. R1 is a relation that says 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, and 4 comma 4. Tell whether it is irreflexive or not. You have to tell about irreflexive. Okay? Then I have relation R2 that is 2 comma 2, 1 comma 3, and 4 comma 3. And then I have R3 that is 1 comma 2, 3 comma 1. Four comma three and two comma one. Now tell me whether R one is reflexive, irreflexive, reflexive. What is R one? R one. I'm asking about R one. What is R one? <coughs> Right, R one is reflexive. Why R one is reflexive? Because each and every element is having a relation with itself. Now what is R two? What is R two? What about relation R two? Right, correct. Neither reflexive nor irreflexive. ठीक है एंड वॉट अबाउट आर थ्री आर थ्री आर थ्री इज इ रिफ्लेक्सिव नाउ आई होप द डिफरेंस इज क्लियर बिटवीन रिफ्लेक्सिव एंड इ रिफ्लेक्सिव एज वेल ओके now moving on to the next question <coughs> okay now this is the next question this is the question based on composition of two functions two or more functions okay so now just try this we'll discuss it they have mentioned you they have given you three functions one is f of x that is x raised to power 3 minus 4x Then one is g of x, that is one upon x square plus one, and next is h of x, that is x raised to power four. Okay. Now they are saying that you have to find the value of h o g of x, and you have to find the value of h o g o f of x. Okay. This is basically a composition of two or more functions. So try this, and then we will discuss the answer. so the time starts now <clears throat> okay roslin just wait first do this question then uh, at the last i will tell you about neither nor theek okay? hai just do this question for now then we'll discuss about neither and nor
what about this question everyone answer for this question let us see the correct answer the correct answer is option number 4 good everyone who gave the right answer very good now let us see the uh, way how to solve this question see first we will take h of g of x now how do we represent this so in order to represent this just remember it is basically this thing h of g of x theek okay? hai so this is how we represent this function this dot function this composition function theek okay? hai now what does it says that uh, here i will have h and g of x will be written here g of x is 1 upon x square plus 1 so now this h of x now this is my value of x this is my value of x okay so h of x if i see here they have given me h of x is x raised to power 4 ठीक है, so now in place of x, what I have to substitute? I have to substitute this one over x square plus one. ठीक है, whole to the power four. ठीक है, now how can I write this? I can say that this one upon x square plus one can be written as x square plus one to the power minus one. Or you all know now that if I have a value one over x. so i can write it as x to the power minus 1 theek okay? hai whole to the power 4 so these powers will multiply and i will get this answer x square plus 1 to the power minus 4 okay this is how you solve h of g of x this is clear everyone this part is clear to everyone then i'll move to the next part that is h of g of x now mm, good evening komal now moving on to the next part that is h of g of f x now how do i represent this i will represent it h will be the outer one navdeep try to understand this one then you will get it theek okay? hai try to understand this one theek okay? hai h of g of f of x so how can i write h will be the outer bracket g will be inside this then in the inner bracket i will have f of x so this is the representation of this theek okay? hai that is h of g of f of x this is how i how i will represent it now what i will do i'll substitute here the value of f of x what is the value of f of function f of x the value of function f of x is x cube minus 4x right so now what it will become it will become like this now my equation will become like this theek okay? hai now they have told me that g of x g of x is 1 over x square plus 1 this is my g of x now what is g of x here ab yahan pe if you will see here if you look here the value of x has become what the value of x has now become x cube minus 4x right so now my g of x cube minus 4x means that in place of x i will substitute this value so what it will become it will become 1 over x cube minus 4x whole square plus 1 this thing is clear to everyone this point this thing is clear to everyone this is basic maths just you have to substitute here the value of x theek okay? hai and i can write it like this x cube minus 4x whole square plus 1 whole square minus 1 right so now what i will have here i will have h and here i will get this value x cube minus 4x whole square plus 1 raised to the power minus 1 theek hai now what was h of x h of x was x raised to power 4 theek hai so now what means that in place of x i have this value what is the value in place of x now x cube minus 4x whole square plus 1 raised to power minus 1 so now it will become this is my current x 
so now what i will become it will be x raised to power 4 so that is what it will become x cube minus 4 x whole square plus 1 this will become your minus 4 this is how we solve these questions basically what happens in these questions is you substitute the value of x now my innermost bracket was f of x just everyone please try to pay attention here this could be this is not clear my earlier the innermost bracket was f of x now my inner i know that the value of f of x is x cube minus 4x right so now it will become g of x cube minus 4x that means in place of x in place of x i have x cube minus 4x so in this equation at the right hand side i have to i have to substitute x as x cube minus 4x so when I substitute the value of x as x cube minus 4x, this is what I will get. So now I will substitute this value here in place of g of this x. Okay? And then I have h of this value. So now h of x was x raised to power 4. So now my x will become this value. That is x cube minus 4x whole square plus 1. Okay? And then when you will solve it, you will get this answer. Clear everyone? Thank you, Tripti. Clear everyone? I just feel so good that you all get it. You all get it so nicely. That is so enough for me. Okay, clear everyone now? If anyone is having any doubt, just ask me and then I will move forward with the next question. Okay. Navdeep and uh, Rosalind. Ruhi. Navdeep and Ruhi, this was not clear to you. Now clear? Okay, so now moving on to the next question that is this. This is very basic question and it is very easy as well. So we'll do and whenever you will have a question like this, okay. Whenever you have a question like multiples of 6 are there between a certain range. Always apply the method that we will be explaining now. But first try to do it yourself and then we will see how to do these type of questions. So the time starts now. So, what is the answer for this question, everyone? B, okay. And what about others? The correct answer is option number C. Correct answer is option number C and now we will see how. Okay. So first they are asking how many multiples of 6 are there between 0 and 100. Now first we will consider 0 to 100. Okay. Now what are the multiples of 6 between 0 to 100? If I, write, if I try to write the sequence it will be 0, 6, 12, 18 up to so on. And what will be the number last number? That is less than 100 but multiple of 6. If I try to find it, it will be 96. Right? This is clear? This thing is clear this much? Okay. Now you all must have heard about AP, arithmetic progression. I hope you all must have heard about arithmetic progression. That it is a type of sequence where the uh, it is a linear sequence like suppose if i have 2 4 6 8 that is the common difference between the two terms is always constant right so here if i take this example 2 4 6 8 common difference here is 2 so ap is a progression where linear progression where the common difference between the two terms is constant throughout the entire term okay now we will try to apply the formula of ap here 
if i if if i i just want to know how many terms i should know my first term okay ap if you remember the formula of ap it is it is an is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d tara i consider priyanka we have oh, acha aapne nahi kiya hoga maybe okay theek hai so now what is a of n a of n is basically your last term just please write it down somewhere because each and every question where you have of this type no where they'll give you following pair of numbers between and they'll ask you multiple of 3 multiple of 5 you have to do like this only it will be the most easy method for you theek hai a is your first term n is your number of terms and d is your common difference theek hai so now if i look at this case at this case what is my last term my a of n is 96 what is my first term my first term is 0 i don't know how many terms exist between these two numbers so i will simply write n minus 1 only and what is my common difference common difference is 6 if you will check here 0 and 6 so 6 minus 0 6 12 minus 6 6 18 minus 12 6 and then you will solve this equation so 96 divided by 6 is equal to n minus 1 and if you will solve it you will get the value as 17 so between 0 to 100 i have 17 values that are multiples of 6 clear now try to do with this method only for minus 6 to 34 minus 6 to 34 what will be the ap what will be the sequence that will be formed we start with minus 6 then we will have minus 12 then we will have minus 18 up to which number up to 30 we will have because 6 5 are 30 and 6 6 the 36 so 36 will exceed 34 so that is why we will take only till 30 again if i apply the same formula a of n is equal to a plus n minus 1 d so a of n is your 30 a is your minus 6 plus n minus 1 and common difference is again of 6 so when you will solve this equation you will get the value of n as 7 i hope this is clear to everyone how you solve these type of questions i have added one more question of this type but i don't know at which number it is so there i i'll expect all of you to give the correct answer okay so this is clear yes it is plus 34 minus 6 and 34 now if you have understood this thing i just want to uh, but no just leave it like this only try to draw like this only because the series will change and i do not i do not want you to confuse more so i think this question is clear this ap1 is clear to everyone uh komal wo questions abhi maine nahi karaye hain we have not covered those questions yet whenever we will talk about the operating system whenever we will consider the pyqs of operating system then and there i will take these questions that are this scheduling ones okay clear this question everyone second one clear but uh, second line repeat ma'am second line which which line uh, ruhi and tripti uh, what is not clear to you second one c second one may they are, they are saying that the range is from minus 6 to 34 so i have to start from minus 6 the next number that will lie will be minus 12 then minus 18 up to what will be my last number my last number will be less than will be up to 34 only so i know that 6 multiply 5 is 30 and 6 multiply 6 is 36 so 36 is greater than 34 so i will not take this number i will take 30 because 30 is less than 34 i have to be i have to come between this range so if you remember this it will be minus 6 minus 7 minus 8 up to then it will go to the positive part okay 
ठीक है नाउ नाउ वॉट आई कैन डे वट वट आई विल डू हेयर इज की आई विल राइट ए ऑफ एन इज माई थर्टी ए ऑफ एन इज इज ए प्लस एन माइनस वन डी ठीक है सो ए ऑफ एन इज योर थर्टी इट विल बी ए इज योर माइनस सिक्स माइनस सिक्स प्लस सिक्स ट्वेल्व एंड थर्टी सो इफ यू टेक माइनस सिक्स प्लस सिक्स ट्वेल्व एंड थर्टी ऑल्सो राइट ओके हाँ आई मूव इन द रॉन्ग डायरेक्शन करेक्ट 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 सॉरी एवरी वन जस्ट सो सॉरी फॉर दिस जीरो विल ऑल्सो बी एयर जीरो विल ऑल्सो बी इंक्लूडेड येस 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 I'm so sorry everyone. Just it will be minus सिक्स zero plus सिक्स plus ट्वेल्व Right? Correct. But here it will be थर्टी only. Right? <coughs> Right, right. Sorry, um, I'm really sorry for this. Uh, I just wrote the wrong series. ठीक है. But I hope कि uh, अब अब आपको समझ में आ जाएगा. So it will be minus six plus n minus one into d will be your six only because common difference is six only here, right? So thirty plus six will give you n minus one six and it will be thirty six by six that is n minus one. So now I'll get n is equal to seven. Okay. so that is now how you will get n is equal to 7 okay so sorry everyone for this wrong series but it's good that you are attentive but rest my mistake my bad but uh, okay so i'll change it here mm. it will be minus 6 then 0 then plus 6 and then up to 30 okay theek <clears> hai <throat> now but just remember this ap the formula of ap okay just remember this formula Now moving on to the next question. Now this is the question of poset. Okay. Now they have given you a set and they are saying the relation between the two numbers is this. What does it mean? It means that division. Division is the relation between the two numbers. Okay. Now you they are saying which of the following is correct for the given poset. So you must have remembered that in every poset there is a greater element and there is a least element. so they are asking you about the greatest element and the least element so try to solve this question and then we will discuss the correct answer uh gp ka formula okay abhi aap ye wala question karo tab i'll write i'll write the gp formula as well gp basically mein aapka jo uh, terms hote hain wo multiplications mein aate hain jahan tak if i'm not wrong geometric progression right <coughs> Try to do this question and then I'll we'll explain it. Okay, so the correct answer is option number four. Now, how come option number four is the correct answer? See, they have given you a set. Take it three, five, nine, fifteen, twenty-four, and forty-five. And the operator that they have given you is your division operator. This means that. the elements will be linked if they will be dividing or if they are multiple of each other how can i say that you must have heard about hash diagram right so whenever we talk about poset and whenever we have a question of this type we always consider the hash diagram because that is that will be yes yes you 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 have to include because it is minus 6 to 100 minus 6 to 34 was there so that is why you have to include minus 6 okay you will include minus 6 as well okay now moving on to the hash diagram how do we draw a hash diagram see 3 3 and 5 now i'll first draw this element 3 here theek okay? hai now i will see 5 does 3 divide 5 no 5 is not divided by 3 so i will write 5 here theek okay? hai Then I have nine. I know that nine is divided by three. Nine divides three completely, so it will be three. Say it will be nine. I will draw a line to note nine like this. Okay. Then what? Fifteen. 
15 is divided both by 5 as well as 3. So, I will make a link from 3 to 15. Like this. Okay. Then I have 24. Now, I will see whether 3 divides 24. Yes. 3 divides 24. Correct. But whether 5 divides 24? No. 9 divides 24? No. 15 divides 24? No. So, only term that divides 24 is your number 3. So, from 3 node, I will make a line to node 24. Right? Then I have the last number that is 45. So, now 3 divides 45? Yes. 5 divides 45? Yes. But see, I have up here at the top, I have 9 and 15. And 9 and 15 also divides 45. So, it will be a line from 9 to 45 and 15 to 45. Now, when I will draw this line that is 9 to 45, it will be uh, understood that 3 will also divide 45. Now, see, if 3 divides, if uh, 9 is divided by 3 and 45 divides 9, so can I say that 45 will also be divided by 3? Obviously, 45 will also be divided by 3. So, this will be my hash diagram. Now, is there any doubt in this hash diagram? Do you want me to repeat this hash diagram? Any one of you is having any doubt in this hash diagram? If yes, then please say. If no, then I will move forward. Yes, Matlab, you want me to repeat? Hello? Everyone, is this hash diagram clear or do you want me to repeat? Okay, chalo. Okay, I'll repeat it. Just uh, see uh, what elements we were having. We were having 3, 5, 9, 15, 24 and 45. Okay, these were the elements that were given to me and they said that the relation that the operator with which they are linked together is this. This is basically your division. Okay. This means that two elements from these set, from this set are related to each other if they divide. That is, if 9 divides 3, then it will be a relation. But if 5 divides, if does not divide 3, so that, that will not be a relation. This is the basic meaning behind this division. Okay. Now we will start with the hash diagram. Now, what hash diagram says is, key in hash diagram, in your hash diagram, each and every set, each and every element of the set must have a node. Okay, simply must have a node. So, first I will start from the first element that is 3. So, I made a node of 3. Okay, now I will I'll move forward to 5. Now, tell me, does 5 is divided by 3? Now, 5 is not divided by 3. So, I cannot have a relation like 5, 3 or 3, 5. So, what this means that 5 will be an another separate node. That will have no connection with 3. Okay. Now, I will move forward to 9. Now, first I will check with 3. So, 3 divides 9. Yes. 3 and 9 divide. 3 divides 9. So, this means that there will be a line from 3 to node 9. Okay. Now, I will check for 5. Does 5 divide 9? No. So, I will leave it as it is. Then, I will move to 15. Does 3 divide 15? Yes. So, I will write, I will make a note 15 here. And I will see whether D3, that is 3, 5 and 9 divide 15 or not. 3 divide 15, so I will make a link like this. Okay. 5 divide 15, so I will make a line like this. Now, if there would have been a number, suppose like 27. Just for your explanation, I am telling everyone. Okay? If suppose I would have a 3 here, there would have been a 5. Here I would have a 9. Now, if my next number would have been 27. So, 27 is divided by 9 as well and 3 as well. Okay? So, since I have divided the 3 and 9, I have uh, linked the 3 and 9. So, 27 will be linked to 9 as well. And by default, it will be understood that this 27 is divided by 3 as well. Here in case of 15, 9 does not divide 15. 
that is why i have not linked this 9 with 15 i have to link 3 with 15 because 3 divides 15 but 9 does not divide 15 is this point clear everyone is this point clear why i have not added or linked 9 to 15 because there is no division possible between 9 and 15. 9 does not divide 15. Okay, now I move to the next that is 24. Now out of the three out of these four elements, 3, 5, 9, and 15, only one element divides 24, that is 3. None of the other divides 24. So I have to make a note, I have to make a link between 3 to 24. Like this. Okay, now I have 45. Now 45 is divided by 3 also. 45 is divided by 5 also, by 9 also and by 15 also. Okay, so now I can make a note of 45 here and I can simply link it with 9 and 15. And uh, by linking it with 9 and 15, I am making it obvious that it is divided by 3 as well by because if you see it now it will be like 3 to 9 and 9 to 45 so this is 45 divides 9 and 45 divides 3 similarly 5 will divide 15 and then 15 divides 45 so 15 divides by 5 is also possible and 45 divides by 15 is also possible and 45 divides by 5 is also possible so that is why i have linked it with 45 this is clear everyone. This is clear how we draw a hash diagram. Okay. Okay. Now the question that they gave us. The question was. You have to tell whether there exists a greatest element. A least element or not. Okay. Now suppose if my hash diagram is of this type. This type, okay? That is, if I have this element, that is the least element. That is joining this also, this also. And I have this element, that is the greatest element. That is combining this and this. So, this element will be my greatest. And this element will be my least. Okay? But, if I have a hash diagram of this type. Okay? So, now... Always remember, there is only one greatest element. One greatest and one least element. Okay. So now if you see in this example, there are two elements that are on the greatest level. Right. There are two elements that are on the highest level. So my this diagram will not have a greatest element. But since the lowest level, at lowest level, only one element is there. So, this will become my least element. Now, if my diagram is of this type. Okay. So, I have a one element at the highest level. So, this will be my greatest. But here, I have two elements. So, I will not have a least element in this case. And if I have a diagram of this type, simple like this. So, here, uh, here there is no single element and here also there is no single element. So, neither greatest and nor least. These four points clear to everyone? Okay. So, now if I move to my example, if I move to the question, sorry, you can see here that 45 and 24 are the two elements that are at the highest level. What if I draw it like this? Suppose I draw it in this way. Mm. I have this 24 here and now I join it with 3. So now I can say that 44 and 45 and 24 both are at the highest level. Right? There is no single element that is at the highest level. So greatest does not exist. Greatest does not exist. And similarly 3 and 5 are the elements that are at the lowest level. So that is why 3, it does not have a least element as well. This point clear everyone? Clear?
ओके ठीक है नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू डी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सी दिस इज द क्वेश्चन ऑन ट्रांसिटिव क्लोजर दिस इज अ वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन बट ट्वेंटी फोर इज सेकेंड इन नो नो अरुणा ट्वेंटी फोर इज नॉट सेकेंड इन हर आर की वाई बिकॉज इफ इफ माई इफ दिस वुड हैव बीन लाइक दिस दैट थ्री टू थ्री टू ट्वेंटी फोर एंड ट्वेंटी फोर वुड हैव बीन लिंक्ड टू दिस एलिमेंट इफ इट वुड हैव बीन ऑफ दिस टाइप दैट दिस वॉज ऑल्सो लिंक हेयर and this 15 was also linked here and this 5 was linked here and if this 24 would also have been linked to this element then this would have been my greatest element but here what happens is that this 24 is not linked here right 24 is also an element that is not linked with any one so this is that is why this and this will be on the same level Why same level? Because if in order to have a uh, greatest element, the possibility it has to be there that no element must be left without being connected to the highest level. मतलब if it would have been like this, if it would have been like this, then my forty five would have been the greatest element. But since twenty four is also similar like forty five, that is. on the low uh, there is no second and third level the devil is decided as if that whether this number is connected to this or not see if i draw a diagram like this suppose i have this diagram theek okay? hai this is my diagram and i say that this num this is a node and it has a certain node like this also theek okay? hai so now whether i draw it at this level here or if i reduce it to any मतलब इफ आई मेक इट अ बिट स्मॉल लाइक दिस दिस डज नॉट मीन दैट दिस इज एट दिस लेवल मतलब दिस इफ इट इज ए एलिमेंट दिस इज बी दिस इज सी दिस इज डी दिस इज ई दिस इज एफ एंड दिस इज जी सो इफ माई डायग्राम इज ऑफ दिस टाइप आई कैन नॉट से दैट डी एंड जी आर ऑन डिफरेंट लेवल डी एंड जी विल नॉट बिकम अ ग्रेटेस्ट एलिमेंट अंटिल एंड अनलेस दिस डी विल नॉट लिंक टू जी इट सेल्फ okay so if i want a uh, greatest element so my all the elements if i have here one element it should either link to this or it should link to this for to become a greatest element similar in case of your least element clear now ambilian aruna aruna singh clear okay ambili clear to you okay now moving on to the next question here what they have given you they have given you a matrix and they are asking you that try to find the transitive closure of this relation this is a relation basically and they have given a matrix on this relation a so now try to find the transitive closure and then we will discuss how we can solve questions like this so the timer has started try to solve it everyone okay so the correct answer is option number a and only one person answered why what uh, see now try to uh, understand this concept everyone how do we solve questions like this the basic method of solving question like this is that suppose i have a set a with elements a b and c ठीक है, इट इज अ थ्री बाय थ्री मैट्रिक्स सो आई डिनोटेड इट बाय थ्री एलिमेंट्स ए बी एंड सी सो व्हाट आई डिड हियर आई रोड दिस एज दिस इज द रो ऑफ ए दिस इज रो ऑफ बी दिस इज रो ऑफ सी दिस इज कॉलम ऑफ ए कॉलम ऑफ बी एंड कॉलम ऑफ सी ठीक है नाउ व्हाट आई हैव टू राइट व्हाट वन डिनोट्स वन डिनोट्स दैट देयर इज अ रिलेशन बिटवीन द टू एलिमेंट सो देयर एग्जिस्ट अ रिलेशन बिटवीन ए कॉमा ए 
a comma c b comma b and b uh, c comma a and c comma b now tell me this much is clear everyone okay up now how to solve the question see what does transitive closure says transitive closure says that if i have a comma b and if i have b comma c then i should add a comma c to my table or to my relation this is what is transitive closure okay transitive closure says that if i have a comma b and i have b comma c then i must add a comma c as well to my relation okay now in order to find transitive closure you tell me if i have a comma a in my relation whether it will get deleted or whether it will not get deleted in the transitive closure what i am asking is suppose if my relation r is having a comma a a comma b okay so if i have to find the transitive closure of relation r what will be the transitive closure of relation r transitive closure of relation r will be a comma a or just add one more thing so that clear ho jaye a comma b hai and b comma c is also there okay so what will be the transitive closure everyone a comma these three elements will be written as it is okay a comma a a comma b and b comma c extra elements will be added what will be the extra element a comma a a comma b what will be the transitive of this one a comma b and a comma b is already written so i'll just ignore it now a comma b and b comma c what is the transitive of this a comma c so i will add a comma c to this relation this is clear this is clear everyone this is basically a transitive closure theek hai clear now ac right clear now theek hai ab see one thing that you have to remember is when we were calculating the transitive closure this a comma a a comma b b comma c that were the part of original relation will always be written as it is in the transitive closure obviously you will not delete them you will add new elements but you will not delete the old elements in transitive closure we add new elements okay new elements or new relations new elements are added but we do not delete do not delete the previous elements or already present elements okay now why i am mentioning this because if you will see in the question if you see the question here see a comma a is a relation is a element a comma c is a element b comma b is an element a c comma a and c comma b now if you look at option c here try to look at option c a comma a is there a comma c is there b comma b is there b c comma a is there but c comma b is deleted right in my question it was one but in answer in option c they have deleted so i will rule out option c then and there <clears throat> this point clear everyone ठीक है, दिस इज हाउ यू कैन एलिमिनेट दी ऑप्शन एंड मेक यू क्वेश्चन बिट स्मॉलर टू सॉल्व क्लियर नाउ आई लुक फॉर ऑप्शन नंबर डी ए कॉमा ए इज देयर ओके ए कॉमा सी इज देयर ओके बी कॉमा बी इज देयर सी कॉमा ए इज देयर अगेन सी कॉमा बी इज डिलीटेड एंड दिस शुड नॉट बी द केस सो ऑप्शन नंबर डी विल ऑल्सो गेट एलिमिनेटेड क्लियर दिस पॉइंट इज क्लियर एवरी वन okay now we will look for option a and b option a and b if you will see one is this one is present this one is present this one is present this and this so okay nothing is deleted so we will check okay then we will look for b b mein this is also present 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 so okay b may be we, we have to check because they have included the already present actions or elements now let us check the transitive closure now you see here i have uh mm, 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 mm. okay now see this a comma c a 
a comma c and c comma b if i check these two elements they will form a transitive pair what pair it will be it will be a comma b right a comma c and c comma b what they will form they will form a comma b so a comma b is this one element so this will be made one so this is one here and this is zero here so i will rule out this option as well but let us check for this also c comma c right how it comes one here now c comma c if you will check how you can check it you will check it by this thing c consider consider c comma a consider this one and consider this one how you can consider it it will be c comma a and a comma c so what it will become it will become c comma c so now here at this place i will add one so this will become my transitive closure of this matrix is this clear this clear now how to find the transitive closure and how you can find it from the given options okay theek hai so this is how you will do a, when you will have a question on transitive closure theek hai now moving on to this question now tell me this is the relation r and they are the uh, these are the sets that have been given to you yes i uh, i don't know whether it is 2020 question i think it was asked in 2019 this transitive closure one ठीक है नाउ दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन दैट इज गिवन दे हैव सेड दैट देयर इज अ सेट ए 1 2 3 4 5 6 एंड दिस इज द रिलेशन आर सो नाउ यू हैव टू टेल व्हाट इज आर द टाइम स्टार्ट्स नाउ ओके शान इज ऑलरेडी गिवन द आंसर ओके व्हाट अबाउट अदर्स ओके correct everyone the correct answer is option number 4 everyone was giving the correct answer so i just escaped the timer theek hai now why why it is not reflexive because 11 one, one is not present so 11 one, one is not present so not reflexive now why it is not symmetric 1 comma 2 is there but 2 comma 1 is not there so not symmetric and not transitive 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 so 1 comma 3 should have been there but 1 comma 3 does not exist so not transitive as well clear this is was very easy question and it's good that everybody gave the correct answer good now this is the question that i was talking about considering the ap series that consider you have a set a and the elements are from 1 to 1000 okay they are asking you how many members of a shall be divisible by 3 Or by five, or by both three and five. Try to solve this question, and then we will discuss it, and then we will end our today's session. okay okay Hmm. <clears throat> 
तो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री नाउ सी वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट ए पी मेथड राइट ए पी सीरीज वाला मेथड वी हैव डिस्कस यू कैन अप्लाई दैट मेथड एज वेल इफ इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड द करेक्ट आंसर बट सपोज फर्स्ट आई टेक डिविजिबल बाय थ्री ठीक है डिविजिबल बाय थ्री नाउ हाउ विल आई फाइंड वट फर्स्ट आई विल राइट द टर्म द सीक्वेंस दैट विल अकर सो सीक्वेंस विल बी थ्री सिक्स नाइन ट्वेल्व अप टू ट्रिपल नाइन right so how many numbers are there so if i have to find the value of n if if my sequence is direct that is from 1 to up to certain number okay from 1 this starting from 1 so what you do you take the last number and divide it by 3 why because it is divisible by 3 so now it will become triple 3 here so the numbers that are divisible by 3 from 1 to 1000 are triple 3 theek okay? hai then divisible by 5 we will consider divisible by 5 now what are the terms that are divisible by 5 starting from 5 then 10 then 15 up to 1000 because 1000 is also divisible by 5 so now what how many terms will be there number of terms will be 1000 divided by 5 that will give you 200 clear now by both 3 and 5 so when you have this case both 3 and 5 what you do do the multiplication of both the numbers the now the result is 15 so now you try to find the numbers that are divisible by 15 the numbers that will be divisible by 15 will be the numbers that will be divisible both by 3 and 5 as well so what are those numbers 15 30 45 45 up to so on up to which number what will be the last term the last term will be 990 theek okay? hai so what will be the value of n value of n will be 990 divided by 15 that will be 66 then 66 right right okay so now i got three terms first i got the number of terms that are divisible by 3 then i got number of terms divisible by 5 and then i got number of terms divisible by 15 that is both 3 and 5 now try to pay attention here everyone see in 3 i have a term 15 included in 3 in 5 i have a term that is 15 and divisible by 15 also contains a term 15 right so now what why we can take ap also you can do by ap also but what happens now ap may maybe it will become a bit complicated so whenever we we'll start with with this term 1 to 1000 whenever we will have this type of question you can use this method as well it is a direct question you can use this as well you will get answer from ap as well if you want we will solve it by ap as well after solving this but you will get the same answer you will get the same number of terms from ap as well theek okay? hai now what happens is ki see there are terms there are certain terms which will be repeating which will be repeating itself again and again because divisible by 3 15 is such example so now what i will do i will add 333 and 200 and from this i will subtract 66 Why I subtract sixty six because there are sixty six terms from one to one thousand that are common between these two. So now my answer will become four sixty seven. Now, if you want to solve with your AP method, we can do it by AP as well. Do you want me to do it by AP method, or you will try it yourself? AP method say be you can solve this question. and when your term start from 1 1 to some certain number you can use this method as well why i didn't use this method over there because that was starting from minus 6 to 34 if it if it would have started from 1 i would have used this method but since it was starting from minus 6 
so ap method was preferred there here the terms are starting from one itself so i will prefer this method that is simply dividing it by calculating the number of terms and just finding out the last number okay so everyone please at home just try this question with the ap method as well and then i will i, I have already done this with ap method also and the answers were same r a is 15 d is 15 in ap if i talk about this right if i talk about both 3 and 5 so a will be 15 and d will be 15 correct okay if you want i can solve it by ap now do you want me to solve it by ap yes ma'am same same i know values will be same your answers your values will be same if you will apply this method this ap method okay so this is this much for today i hope ki uh, the concepts of reflexive please ma'am uh, okay chalo i'll solve it by ap okay just look everyone here we'll solve by ap also first we have divisible by 3 ठीक है नॉट डिविजिबल बाय थ्री टर्म्स वर थ्री सिक्स नाइन अप टू ट्रिपल नाइन सो व्हाट विल बी माय एपी एपी इज ए एन इज इक्वल टू ए प्लस एन माइनस वन डी सो ए एन दैट इज माय लास्ट टर्म इज ए एन एंड ए इज योर थ्री प्लस एन माइनस वन डी डी इज योर कॉमन डिफरेंस एंड दैट इज थ्री सो वेन यू विल सॉल्व इट यू विल गेट नंबर ऑफ टर्म्स एज ट्रिपल थ्री आई एम नॉट सॉल्विंग दिस इक्वेशन आई होप दिस इक्वेशन यू विल सॉल्व योर ठीक है i am not solving this equation so here i get triple 3 or you want to solve this equation as well tell me you will solve that this equation okay now divisible by 5 how do what will be divisible by 5 will be so if i write the sequence of 5 5 will be 5 10 15 15 up to 1000 so now i'll write it in ap 1000 is equal to 5 plus n minus 1 and the difference is 5 so when you will solve this equation you will get 200 as the answer okay and then we will do divisible by both 3 and 5 so 3 and 5 may whenever you will have both 3 and 5 multiply 3 and 5 so we will get 15 so divisible by 15 whenever you have the case of both 3 and 5 so what it will be 15 30 45 up to 990 theek okay? hai so now what it will be 990 is equal to 15 plus n minus 1 into 15 15 is the difference and 15 is the first term so when you will solve it you will get the answer as 66 for this and then you will solve you will apply the procedure that we have already done that is add 333 Three thirty-three plus two hundred minus sixty-six, and result you will get four sixty-seven. Clear? Clear, everyone. So both the methods will give you the same answer. Whether you apply AP method or you apply this uh, the method that I have told you here, but what? what was the problem was that in that question what we have done from minus 6 to 34 the value was not starting from 1 so if you would have applied this method it would have been a bit tricky that's why i told you this ap method now here the value is are starting from 1 itself so i can i can simply start it with this i can start from this method and i can solve using this procedure okay now <coughs> now for tomorrow for tomorrow's class what i have for you is what i want you to prepare basically see we will have the questions on um, group theory and optimization okay along with set theory मतलब सेट थ्योरी वी हैव कवर्ड बट स्टिल इफ आई फाइंड एनी मोर क्वेश्चंस आई विल ऐड दोस क्वेश्चंस एज वेल सो दीस थ्री टॉपिक्स विल बी द मेजर टॉपिक्स दैट विल बी टेकन इनटू कंसीडरेशन टुमारो 
सो सेट थ्योरी आपकी ऑलरेडी आज यू हैव कवर्ड सेट थ्योरी सो ट्राई टू रिवाइज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ ग्रुप थ्योरी एंड ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑल्सो ओके सो वील वील कवर द क्वेश्चन ऑफ ग्रुप थ्योरी एंड ऑप्टिमाइजेशन टूमोरो दैट इज योर एल पी पी बेसिकली ओके सो रोसलिन आर यू प्रेजेंट इन क्लास इज रोसलिन देयर और नॉट ठीक है सो प्लीज टुमारो मैम टाइमिंग यूट्यूब क्लास सिक्स पी एम सिक्स पी एम एवरी वन सिक्स पी एम मंडे टू सैटरडे संडे वी डोंट हैव अ क्लास मंडे टू सैटरडे एट सिक्स पी एम एंड टुमारो फ्रॉम सेट थ्योरी आई विल ट्राई टू ब्रिंग मोर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम हैश डायग्राम ठीक है सो दैट और प्रैक्टिस आपकी हो जाए विद दिस टॉपिक हैश डायग्राम so we'll add i'll add more questions on hash diagram now i hope that reflexive anti symmetric asymmetric everything is clear to you so i'll try not to add more questions from this because i have we have uh, discussed much many questions from these topics okay if i'll find any extra question that needs to be add just do it very tripti i will add i uh, we will do questions of predicate logic as well i will bring questions on predicate logic as well but first we will cover these two topic because these are bit easy theek hai lakshmi toc ke questions we have already covered you will uh, you please go on this channel that on which this class is taking place right now you will see the playlist we have we have done three sessions on toc only you will see the uh, toc sessions there the questions of toc are explained there theek hai okay everyone so meet you all tomorrow at 6 pm join the class at 6 pm everyone okay if you have any doubt i have given you my telegram number as well ask me your doubt there and i have given you the telegram channel meant i have already mentioned telegram channel so you can join that channel so that you will get the notification of classes and pdfs as well theek okay? hai so this is all for today and uh, see you all tomorrow so Take care, everyone, and good night. Hello, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to today's session. So, I hope you all are fine. So, we will start our class today. That is our second class of discrete mathematics. Okay. Uh, good evening, Bala Krishnan. Uh, I hope I am audible. good evening and uh, so yesterday we have discussed few topics of discrete mathematics and uh, those were based on your set theory and question related to hash diagram and lattice theek okay? hai today i have uh, tried to add few concepts of your optimization and few concepts related to your group theory as well theek okay? hai so we'll see to it and just let us wait for a few more minutes for the people and uh, good evening alok good evening uh so this is the telegram channel everyone who is uh, new here can join this channel Uh, with this channel you will get the pdfs that we uh, that uh, we all uh, that i provide here and you can also get the notification about the class that we will be having each and every day okay and this is the contact number you can contact on this number in case you have any doubt or any queries and uh, what else okay so now let's start with our today's session we have already covered these questions like based on reflexive or symmetric part and all that today we will be starting with the question that is your group that is of your group theory uh, hello lakshmi good evening theek okay. hai so today we will be starting the question of group theory important subject to quick revision ma'am give any important subject uh, good evening sonu uh, uh, see um, uh, good evening lipika see for your revision purpose what i can suggest is that uh, So, if you want a quick revision, then always opt for the subject that you find very uh, difficult with questions. Like, suppose I have this computer architecture, okay, 
and you have this computer architecture with you and in computer architecture you find that the uh, some questions are very tough and some questions are bit uh, you can say that easy and but still we do know the approach okay so now what happens is try to practice questions and basically more of numerical part like we have discussed computer architecture questions we have discussed ai we have discussed toc and we have discussed computer network plus dbms so out of these six subjects uh, five subjects sorry you can opt for any subject that you can do as a revision okay once you will complete the pyqs of all the subjects that we have with us after that each day we will be having uh, we i i was thinking to have a you no know, uh, alternate session like one session one day session for paper 1 day 1 pe we will have a session of paper 1 day 2 pe we will have a session of paper 2 like this okay so that and i was thinking that to have a you know every day i'll add one subject one subject suppose if i say dbms so in on day 3 what i will do on day 3 i'll just have a uh, not questions of net no not previous questions of net i will bring the questions of dbms from different different papers that we can have a practice on like different uh, different topics like we can say uh, so if you like this idea please tell me that on day 3 we can have uh, any uh, revision any quick revision of any subject which will include the questions not of previous years but of different you can say papers like we have the questions from different different exams like you have questions from gate exam you have questions from isro exam you have questions from nie lit exam okay we can have questions from these questions, these types as well good evening priyanka good evening jisna hello trip uh, tirupati good evening tripti मैम पेपर वन में समझ ही नहीं आता कैसे क्वेश्चंस आते टीचिंग है आपकी रिसर्च से नो वरीज व्हेन वी विल कवर दिस पेपर वन ईच एंड एवरी डे वी विल कवर वन वन सब्जेक्ट लाइक सपोज कि आफ्टर कवरिंग दिस पी वाई क्यू वील स्टार्ट विद पेपर वन टीचिंग एप्टीट्यूड ओनली ठीक है सो वील डू अ क्विक रिविजन अब दैट क्लास में नॉट बी ऑफ वन आर इट मे एक्सटेंड अप टू टू आवर्स और सो ठीक है बिकॉज वॉट वी विल डू वी विल डू अ क्विक रिविजन ऑफ टीचिंग एप्टीट्यूड विद द हेल्प ऑफ क्वेश्चन आई एल ब्रिंग द क्वेश्चन ऑफ डिफरेंट डिफरेंट Questions that have come in your PYQs of teaching aptitude only, and then we will discuss how the questions come, and then we'll discuss those topics as well. Okay, so this is what I have been planning for now. That after completing your paper two PYQs, we will be uh, doing alternate sessions. Alternate, alternate. Like one day we will be having paper one session, then on second day we'll be covering a topic of paper two. Then on third day we will be having a uh, session on. Uh, practice questions of any one subject that i will choose from my side okay that will be a uh, that i will uh, tell you one day prior only and it will be of my uh, uh, what you can say my choice what subject i want to give okay and then you have to practice that subject and then on third day take it as a test you can take that uh, session as a test on day 3 so that aapki practice bhi ho jayegi and you will be able to you know cover the questions of different concept as well Yes, and now so we can we can do like this, right? Paper two, me up. See what? Uh, now if I look here, uh, Saturday, talk. We will cover your discrete because up to uh, today I have tried to cover your optimization part, but optimization me there are three concepts. That is one is your LPP, another is your assignment problem, another is your transportation problem. Okay, so in one hour I cannot explain all these three. So I was thinking that these two I will add. when we will talk about this session like paper 2 me different concepts me will well, uh, we will act while talk about this session there theek okay? hai then uh, tomorrow we will talk about the logic questions and on or graph theory matlab these two uh, topics are left that are main in your discrete mathematics so friday saturday we will offer that then next we have os 3 days max to max se 2 days max to max 2 to 3 days not more than that ठीक है देन वी हैव सीजी अगेन टू डेज बिकॉज सीजी में द क्वेश्चंस आर नॉट मच सो मच आज दे हैव जस्ट बेसिकली थ्योरी क्वेश्चंस एंड प्रैक्टिकल क्वेश्चन न्यूमेरिकल ड्राइंग वी विल सी टू इट एंड उसके बाद व्हाट विल बी लेफ्ट डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स एल्गोरिथम 3 डेज ठीक है सो आई विल ट्राई टू हैव अ आई विल ट्राई टू फिनिश दिस इदर बाय नेक्स्ट सैटरडे और बाय नेक्स्ट ट्यूसडे और वेडनेसडे मैक्स टू मैक्स ठीक है एंड उसके बाद वी विल स्टार्ट विद दिस सेशन i hope this will help each and every one of you to cover each and every topic uh, so that ek quick revision ek brief introduction ho jaye har topic se related so that any easy question that you have 
if you have any query in any easy part you will be able to solve those questions good evening komal uh, and good evening your schedule okay okay so now let's start with today's session and then we will discuss it more what we can do next okay so now this is the first question that i have brought for you what does this question says it says that the set of positive integers set of positive integers under the operation of ordinary multiplication is so not a monoid not a group a group and a abelian group so try to solve this question and we will discuss then what is all this okay so the time starts now good evening nagesh good evening okay what about the others answer of this question everyone okay okay D D D. Good evening, Rosalind. Good evening. Okay, everybody is saying D, and everybody is wrong. The correct answer is option number two, not a group. Now, before proceeding forward, uh, just look here, everyone. Just keep your attention over here. Okay, C. we whenever we talk about group theory okay we have few things that we need to understand there are few structures that we need to understand first one is your algebraic structure okay second is your semi group please remember this sequence because this sequence is very important so please remember this okay third is monoid fourth is group and fifth is your abelian group ठीक है नाउ ईच एंड एवरी स्ट्रक्चर फॉलोज अ सर्टेन टाइप ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी सो वॉट आर दीज प्रॉपर्टीज इफ आई हैव एनी सेट इफ आई से अ सेट इज देयर सो वेन कैन आई से दैट सेट इज एलजेब्राइट स्ट्रक्चर इट शुड फॉलो द क्लोजर प्रॉपर्टी ठीक है फॉर एनी सेट ए टू बी एन एलजेब्राइट स्ट्रक्चर इट शुड फॉलो द क्लोजर प्रॉपर्टी then what about semi group closure only theek okay? hai closure only only one property needs to be followed that is closure then what about semi group semi group when a set a will be a semi group it will be a semi group when it follows closure plus associativity okay then i can say that this is a semi group then what about monoid monoid will have the property of closure plus associativity plus identity identity is denoted by letter e okay then about group group for any set to be a group it should have a closure property associativity identity and inverse ha komal abhi i'll give you just wait i'll explain each and every term just wait theek okay? hai then abelian group for any group to be abelian it should follow closure property it should follow associativity it should have identity it should have inverse and it should have कम्यूटेटिविटी ठीक है सो रिमेंबर दिस थिंग रिमेंबर दिस चार्ट दिस चार्ट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन ऑर्डर टू रिमेंबर दी बेसिक्स ऑफ ग्रुप थ्योरी टेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट 
I'll add this in PDF as well. But remember this property. These are very important. And remember this sequence as well. Because you see, algebraic structure is the first one and it follows only closure property. Then semi-group is the second one. It follows closure plus associativity. Monoid closure plus associativity plus identity. So remember this sequence. It is very important. Okay. Now this thing is clear. Now we'll discuss what is all this. Okay. Now suppose... Now, suppose closure is what? Suppose I have a set A. Okay? And set A may what you have in set A you have um, what you can say. Hmm. Set A you have 1, 2 and 3. Okay? And now I say that perform addition function on this set A. So, whenever I write like this, that addition function on set A, okay? So, if I, if I denote it like this, this means that this is the set I am talking and this is the operation that needs to be performed. Clear? Okay. Up, now what I want? Up, I perform the operation. Now, remember this thing that we will make a table like this. Okay? We will write the set elements here in this and like this and here I will write the operation that is to be performed. Now I will add the elements. How, I'll, uh, how I will add them? I will add them like this. I will add this that is 1 plus 1. If you remember the matrix basically agar aapke paas ye hai, um, if it is A, B, C and this is also A, B, C so how I represent it? It is A, 1, 1 matlab this is 1, 1 then this is A, 1, 2, that is this is 1, this is 1, 2, 3. So A, 1, 1, A, 1, 2, A, 1, 3, right? This, this and then this. Okay, so now this is 1, 1, 1 plus 1 will give you 2. 1 plus 2 will give you 3. 3 plus 1 is will give you 4. 2 plus 1, 3. 2 plus 2, 4. 2 plus 3, 5. 3 plus 1, 4. 3 plus 2, 5. And 3 plus 3, 6. Now, what does this closure property says? Closure property says that if I see the elements that I get after addition, all the elements, if all the elements that are present that I have received after performing the operation, if all the elements belong to set A, then I say that the set A under addition operation is closed. This is basically what is closure. Okay. Now, if I see here, I have this element 4, I have element 5, I have element 6. I can say that 5, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6 does not belong to set A. Right? Because set A contains only 1, 2 and 3. Since 4, 5, 6 does not belong to set A, I can say that this operation is not closed. This addition operation on set A is not closed. This is clear everyone? The concept of closure is clear to everyone? Okay. Associativity you all know. What is associativity? Hanji. Ye closure nahi hai. It is not closed under this operation. Thik. Associativity we all know. Up, we will move. We'll talk later about this identity and all. Okay, one thing that you have to remember is identity element kya hota? Identity element is an element that if I multiply any element, if I see, if I have this plus, okay. Now you tell me ki agar mere paas, if I have one, if I have one and I should add something in it that I may get one itself. Repeat the closure. Closure is basically ki aapne, you have performed this addition here, addition operation on this uh, set and the result you get was 4, 5, 6. And I know that these elements 4, 5 and 6 does not belong to the given set A because A contains only 1, 2 and 3. Since 4, 5, 6 does not belong to set A, I can say that set A is not closed under addition operation. This is basically closure. Okay, now let's talk about identity. Now what about identity? Identity is basically that element that it is noted by E. Okay, this is your identity. 
Now what happens is what it says is that suppose I have an addition operation. Okay. Now if I say that I have element one and if I add something in it and I get the result as one only. Okay. If I add something in one and I get the result one only, then I can say that that element is the identity. So in case of plus, in case of addition, always remember in case of addition. E is always equal to 0 because if you will add anything to 0, you will get the element itself. And if I talk about multiplication, simple ordinary multiplication. So if I multiply anything with any element and if I want that element itself, so the element identity element will always be 1. So please remember this thing. This is you for always valid always if you have a normal addition and normal multiplication operation okay so if you have a normal addition ordinary addition then the identity element will be always zero if you have an if you have a normal multiplication identity element will always be one clear everyone okay now let's talk about inverse now what is inverse Now, if I talk about the inverse operation, okay. Now, if you if you see that table, um, if I draw any other table, suppose I say zero and one and two, and I perform um, if I see multiplication here, okay, zero, one and two. This is my set A. Set A is having the element zero, one and two. Okay, and now I have to perform what operation? It is saying perform multiplication operation on set A. So now what it will be? It will be 0, 0 and 0. Then it will be 0, it will be 1, it will be 2. Simple multiplication 2 into 0, 0, 2 into 1, 2, 2 into 2, 4. Okay, now is it closed? Tell me is this operation closed? Is this operation closed? Everyone, is this operation closed? No, correct. This operation is not closed because of the presence of this 4. And this 4 does not belong to set A. So that is why it is not closed. Correct. Associative. Yes, it is associative. How can I say that is an associative? Because multiplication operation is always associative. If you say, if you have, what is the associative property? Associative property is 4 into 5 into 3. If I write it like this or I write it like this, it will always be same. Okay, so this is what is your associative property. Then third is, let's talk about the identity element. What is the identity element here everyone? What is the identity element in this question? Identity element in this question. Correct. Correct. Uh, it is 1. Why? Because it is saying multiplication operation. No, not 0. Uh, Varalakshmi, not 0. Because it is multiplication operation. And I have all, I have told you. Poonam and uh, please remember this. 0 will only be the identity operation when you will have addition here. Here I have multiplication and I have told you just now that in multiplication identity element is always 1. Please do not forget this thing. Now let's talk about inverse. Now how do we calculate the inverse of an element? Associativity is nothing. Associativity is this. No, this is the formula of associativity that if I have A plus and here B plus C and if I write it, if I write it like this, and if these two are equal, then we say that this is the associative property. Okay. And I know that if I addition and multiplication are always associative. Because if you write 4 plus 3 like this, 4 plus 3 plus 5. So what it will be? 4 plus 5, 6, 7, 8. That is 12. And if you write 4 plus 3 plus 5, that will be 7 plus 5 again 12. Similarly, in case of multiplication, 4 multiplied by 15, that is 16. And 4 multiplied by 5 is 20, multiplied by 3, again 60. 
so associativity is that if i change the order if i if i perform the operation first like this and then like this then all then also my answer will not change so multiplication and addition are always associative in nature do not forget this theek hai multiplication and i cannot say about subtraction i cannot say anything about subtraction but in case of multiplication and addition the result will always be associative i hope this is clear now moving on to this uh, inverse one theek hai what does this inverse says inverse says that if we always suppose i want to find the inverse of 0 theek hai let's say ki aapka jo inverse hota hai what is inverse basically is ki we represent it in the form of a raised to power minus 1 if i have to find the inverse of a inverse of a if i have to find in any element i am talking about it will be a raised to power minus 1 so if i look at each and every row theek hai each and every row this is the row this is the row of element 0 this is the row of element 1 this is the row of element 2 this is this point is clear okay now if i say what is the inverse of 0 so 0 inverse will be that element that element where the identity element lies where the identity element lies now try to understand this suppose i draw any random table any random table i am drawing it has nothing it has no connection with this question theek hai just try to understand my point it is any random table and uh, it is the multiplication operation 1 2 3 and 1 2 3 theek hai this is a random table and i say that the result is 1 2 3 only this is 3 1 2 and this is 2 3 1 okay try to understand this point this is a random table do not get confused ki ma'am isme multiply kaise ho raha kya ho raha i am just explaining you for the sake of example now this is multiplication operation so what is the identity element here identity element will be e theek hai now how to find the identity element if i have a question like this if my this thing if my this thing is similar to any of the row if this sequence is similar to any of the row if my operation is not multiplication let's try to understand it i'll make you understand with this example suppose this is a random random table with no operation i'm not talking about any operation here theek hai yahan pe they are saying that oh, mm, this is some some operation like this i don't know what this operation is theek hai this neither multiplication nor addition this is clear ठीक है नाउ आई राइट इट लाइक दिस okay this is one example for you now if i have to find the identity element in this example now what will be the identity element so when i don't have a multiplication operation or i don't have addition with me suppose this is set a a says that there is element 1 2 3 4 and the operation that is being performed is this okay they have given you this question now they are asking find the identity element of this table so how to look for entry table look for this column look for the top most heading or the top most uh, header column that you have what is the sequence 1 2 3 and 4 if you find any other row out of these four rows that is similar to this sequence theek hai if you find any other row that is similar to this sequence out of these four sequences then that element will become the identity element here i can see that the row of third element that row of the third element is similar to this row right so my identity element will become 3 here this is clear everyone this point is clear so i will say that identity element of this table is 3 now there ask about the inverse find the inverse of 1 1 inverse now what will be 1 inverse try to understand this point one inverse will be that number where the identity element lie in the row 
that is suppose now i have to find the inverse of 1 i will look for this row i will look here and i will stop when i will find the identity element now my identity element is 3 so 2 is not equal to 3 3 is here so now this is 3 under which column does it belong to it comes under column number 2 so for 1 the inverse of 1 will become 2 this point is clear for inverse what i am saying is that look for each and every row okay if they are asking me that find the inverse of 1 i will look for the row 1 and i will stop as soon as i will find the identity element my identity element for this question is 3 so i can say that since i have 3 here and 3 is under the column of 2 so the inverse of 1 will be 2 now clear now let's talk about the inverse of 2. So what I will do? I will look in the row 2 because I have to find the inverse of 2. So I will go in row 2. Now I will find the uh, now I will find where my identity element belongs in this row. The identity element belongs here. So my uh, uh, what I get the inverse will become what? My inverse will become 1 for 2. Clear Janki? I hope the now it is clear to you. Okay. Now what is the inverse of 3? Inverse of 3 will be 3 itself. So always remember if you have an identity element, the inverse of identity element is the identity element itself. Okay. The inverse of identity element is the identity element itself. Now what about 4? Inverse of 4? Inverse of 4 will be 2. Because this is a random example. Okay? It is not nothing as uh, I have not taken it from somewhere. I have just generated it right now. So I just wanted to explain you the concept of inverse and identity. I hope it is clear to everyone. Okay. Now we will start about the question that we were having. The question is the set of positive integers. Let I write this set as A. Okay, so now what will be my A? A will be set of positive integers. That is 1, 2, 3, 4 and up to infinity. Just think clear. And they are saying under the operation of ordinary multiplication. So now what I will do? I will make a table and I will write 1, 2, 3, 4 up to infinite. Here 1, 2, 3, 4 up to infinite. Okay. Now I will perform ordinary multiplication. Try to do the multiplication. It will be 1, 2. Because 1, when I multiply anything with 1, it will be the same number. So 2, 1 will be 2, 4, uh, 6, 8 and so on. Then 3, 6, 9, 12 and so on. Then 4, 8, 12, 16 and so on. And this will continue till infinity. Okay. Let's check for the first thing that is closure. Is this Group closed. Tell me, is this set closed under multiplication? Is this set closed under multiplication? Yes, correct. This is closed under multiplication because this is an infinite set. Kitty, please try to understand. This is an infinite set. So, each and every value will come under this set because it is a set of positive integers. So, it is closed. Second is your associativity. What I have told, I have already said that multiplication is closed under associativity. So, yes, it follows associativity property as well. Okay? Okay. Then third. Third is your identity. What is the identity element here? Identity element here, everyone. One correct since it is a multiplication operation, so identity element is one. Now try to find the inverse. Inverse of two. What is the inverse of two? Inverse of two. Inverse of two. 
inverse of 2 does not exist because if you see here i will never get 1 if i multiply anything with e and it is integer so 1 by 2 is not allowed here Nagesh, see this is a simple multiplication operation and Abhi I have explained you with the example that positive integers ki multiplication hai. So if you will write 4 into or you can take 2 into 3. Okay? So if I write it like this or I write it like this, the result will be same. So associativity is will always exist in case of multiplication and addition. Okay? So now if I move back to my inverse thing. Now inverse is your, if I multiply 1 by half, 1 by 2 with 2, then I will get the identity element. But in positive integers, half will not exist. Half does not belong to your integers. Right? So that is why 2 will two inverse will not exist. Okay? So that is why it follows, it is algebraic structure, it follows algebraic structure, it follows your semi group it follows monoid as well but when i talk about inverse if any one group if any one element does not follow the inverse property i will say that group does not exist for this equation so that is why not a group nagish i hope now clear to you Mono monoid is for identity element monoid is for identity element i have already explained that chart but since now it is gone, so I'll explain it again. One more time, I'll make your revision, everyone. Please, uh, those who have not taken down, please note it and rest. Just after revision. Ho so, I have algebraic structure. Then I have your semi-group. Remember this sequence as well. And if you already know it, then try to write it yourself in your notebook. Okay, to check whether you remember or not. Nagesh, I'll clear your doubt. Just wait a wait for a few minutes. I'll clear it. Okay. So for any group, any set to be an algebraic structure, it should follow what property? Closure. For semi-group. Closure plus associativity. For monoid, closure plus associativity plus identity. Identity is noted by letter E. For group, closure plus associativity. plus identity plus inverse and for abelian closure plus associativity plus identity plus inverse plus commutativity okay so remember this this is the chart we can say monoid also ma'am. Yes, you can say, uh, say monoid also but the option was not there for monoid. The option was, okay, this, this chart is clear everyone. This chart is clear. Now moving back to the question, the answer was, option was not a monoid, not a group, a group and a bailing group. So this question is monoid, right? This question is a monoid but there is no option for a monoid. So that's why I have to write the answer as not a group. Now moving to this question, let me just clear uh, his doubt. Nagesh, see, I uh, think you are having problem with associativity. See, what is associativity is that if I perform any operator, okay, if I have A and I have any operator here, operator B, operator C, okay, if I write, if I perform this, if I perform like this and if I have A operator, B operator C, and if I perform in this manner, matlab, first I perform this thing and then I perform this thing. Here first I am performing this thing and then I am performing this thing. If the answer is equal, then we will say that it is a associative. It is associative. Now if you want to take any example, suppose if I am taking example here, I am saying multiplication. Okay. Now I want the operator to be multiplication. I am saying here multiplication and multiplication. 
and instead of your uh, this here also multiplication and instead of a b c let us take any value so what value i can have here suppose if i say any value that you want to take i am taking the value as um, 6 2 3 6 2 3 Okay, so now what is 6 to 3? If you multiply, if you perform the multiplication here, 3 to the 6. So your result of this will be 6. Now you have to perform 6 multiply 6. The result will be 36. Okay, then you have 6 to the 12. The answer is 12 for this. And if you multiply it with 3, it will be 36. So it, this, this is associative in nature. So, if you have multiplication operation and you take any value, any value of A, B and C, result will always be associative in nature. Similarly, if you have addition and you take any value of A, B, C, result will always be associative. Okay, this is what I am explaining. And now, I have one more doubt that is commutative. See, now, for what is commutative? Commutative basically says that if you have two numbers, A and B. So, if you perform A operation B, it is equal to B operation A. That is, if I perform A multiply B, it will always be equal to B multiply A. If I perform A addition B, it will always be equal to B addition A. But if I say if I perform A minus B, it will not be equal to B minus A. So, this is your commutativity. I hope now this is clear. What is commutative? This is the commutative property. Clear? So, no? Clear everyone? Okay. Now, moving to the next question. I hope now group theory ke ye wali part aapko bhoat achche se clear ho gaya over. This part that is about your group monoid algebraic structure identity inverse and all okay so do not make this question wrong now now moving on to the this part you all should give the right answer to this question okay the question says which of the following property a group g must hold to be an abelian group distributive property commutative property or symmetric property so your time starts now All those who are saying option B, see the answers are A, B, B and C, A only, B only. Please check the answers and then say your answer. The options are not A, B, C. The options are 1, 2, 3, 4. Correct. Everyone is correct. B only. There is no property like distributive in your group theory, no property like symmetric in your group theory. The only abelian group ko we also say commutative group. Okay, remember this. Abelian group is also named as commutative group. So, the property that needs to be followed out of these three for a group to be abelian is the commutative property. Correct. Now, this is the question from your set theory. The question says that the power set of A union B will have how many elements they are asking you about the number of elements so this is your element sorry this is your set a this is your set b so try to solve it and then we will discuss it the time starts now Okay, many of you have answered already. So, correct. The correct answer is option number B. Now, how to solve this question? See, I have set A with me and I have set B. So, I have to find the power set of A union B. 
So first I will find the elements of A union B. What will be the elements of A union B? 2, 3, 5, 7, 8 and 9. A union B means that I will add, I will have all the proper, I will have all the elements, distinct elements. That is the I, elements will not get repeated. Okay. So now these are the elements of A union B. Now for power set, if I have, if I have a set A and it has N elements. Okay. Just remember this thing. If I have set A and that element if I have set A and that set A has N elements, so what will what I will say is that if I want to find the power set of A, the total number of elements of power set of A will be 2 raised to power N elements. Okay, so this is the formula for calculating the power set of A. So now if I have A union B, how many elements do I have here? The number of elements in set A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the power set will be P of A union B will be 2 raised to power 6. That will give me 64. So the correct answer is 64 here. Uh, Rosalind, see I have already explained associativity and commutativity. Just please uh, look this video once again when we will end the session. And if then also if you are not getting the point then up you message you will uh, this telegram send me on the telegram and explain I will give you a difference there. Okay? I have already explained associativity and commutativity. Just please once go through the video again and you will I, I hope that your doubt will get clear. Okay? So this is your the power set. Okay now moving on to the next question. The next question is your linear programming. So try this question once by your end and then we will see that how we can do questions like this. But first please try it yourself. Okay. So I have started the timer. Try it once and then we will discuss it. A, okay, very fast. Uh, Rosalyn, please, uh, abhi, abhi club, you uh, see here and agar at the last, I will tell, tell you the difference. At the end, I will tell you the difference. B, A, B. Okay, so no saying it. No, no problem. If you have no idea, no problem. We will discuss it. B, 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 B. Okay, let's see the correct answer. The correct answer is option number D. That is 8. The correct answer is option number D. Now, how to solve questions of this type? See. In your objective function, whenever you have your objective function, okay, what love your sorry uh, LPP linear programming problem. First thing we have is your objective function. Okay, now what is objective function? If we have a function like this that says max z and you have any equation here. So this is your objective function. What is the objective? The objective here that I have this equation with me. I have to substitute the values of variables whatever I have. X, Y, X1, X2 whatever we have. Okay. And then I have to find this Z. And my focus, my main focus is that I have to maximize this value. Okay. This is my objective function. Then I have some constraints. Whenever I see the question you will always see that there are subject to some equations. Okay. These equations are your constraints. What does constraints mean? Constraints means that I have put a, what you can say, a restriction that this, uh, this is your first equation, this is your second equation that the value of x1 and x2 will have to follow these equations, will have to satisfy these equations. Okay. So here in this question, if I see here, this max z equal to 2x plus 3y is my objective function. Okay. And these three equations, these three equations are my constraints. Now, how should I solve the question? 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट यू हैव टू डू यू हैव टू फाइंड दी वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स एंड वाई ठीक है ना हाउ टू फाइंड दी वैल्यूज ऑफ यू हैव टू फाइंड पॉइंट दैट आर टू बी प्लॉटेड इन दिस ग्राफिकल मेथड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टेक दिस फर्स्ट इक्वेशन दैट यू हैव दैट इज टू एक्स प्लस वाई equal to 4 i'll remove this inequality and i'll write it as equal to 4 okay now i have to find the points now how can i find the points firstly i'll substitute x as 0 so when i substitute x as 0 what will be the value of y the value of y will become 4 so my first point i'll name it as a the first point will be 0 comma 4 okay Now I have to find my second point. Now second point के लिए what I can do? I can substitute y as zero. ठीक है? Now when I substitute y as zero, what will be my x become? The value of x, the value of x will become two. So my point B will become what? It will become two comma zero. Now I have two equations. This is my equation one and this is my equation two. So since I have two equations. From one equation, I'll get two points because I have two variables x and y. So in total, how many points I'll get? I'll get four points. Clear? Now let's look at the second equation. The second equation is x plus two y is equal to five. Now what I'll do? First, I'll substitute x equal to zero. What will be the value of y? Value of y will be five by two. So my third point, let us name it as C. It will become zero comma two point five. Why two point five? Because five by two can also be written as two point five. Okay. Now for the fourth point, what will be my fourth point? For my fourth point, I'll substitute y as zero. So what will be my x? X will become five. So my fourth point will be five comma zero. Now tell me these five. These uh, four points. How I got those four four points are clear to everyone. This is clear. These four points. How I get these four points? Okay. Now what we will do? We will plot the graph. Now we will plot the graph. How I plot the graph? This is the basic graph you all know. That is here you have your x-axis and here you have your y-axis. Okay. Now start plotting the points. What is the point? The first point they say is zero comma four. So where I'll plot zero comma four? Zero is here, so zero and four. So zero comma four will be plot somewhere here, right? Not exactly, but to be precise, zero comma four will be plot here. Okay. I'm talking about this line, line number one, L one. Okay. Then what is the second point? Second point of this same line is two comma zero. So two will lie somewhere somewhere here, and zero will be this. So this is your plot point B. That is two comma zero. Right now I will draw a line between these two points A and B. So this is my line one. This is my line L one. Now I'll plot the points for line two. What is the point for line two? Zero comma two point five. Where it will lie? It will lie somewhere, somewhat here. Zero comma less than four. It will lie somewhere here. Let us see. Let us write it as here. So zero comma two point five will lie here. Okay. Now what is the last point? The D point is five comma zero. So two comma zero was lying here. So five comma zero will lie somewhere here. Five comma zero. This is my line two. Now now I will draw the The line for this. I'll join these two points and I'll get the line for your line number two. Okay, this is your line two. Now, after drawing these lines, I have to find a feasible region. What I have to find? I have to find a feasible region. Feasible region is your bounded area. The area that is bounded by these two lines. Okay. Now, if I see here. This this area this area is the bounded one. This this area, this area is your bounded one, which is formed by the help of these two lines, which I received by which I have found it by combining the lines these these two L one L two. So the region that is bounded that is bounded will be your feasible region. This is clear now. Now what are the coordinates of these? This feasible region. If I have to find the coordinates for this feasible region, one coordinate is your zero. 
right now this will be 0 comma 0 one coordinate is this let us write it as a dash okay then b this is your area this is the area everyone just please put your focus here this is the feasible region that i have received i'll just write with the black line so that clear okay this is the feasible region that i have received now this because this is the bounded region that is formed by these two lines okay so now this is your a coordinate this is your b coordinate this is your c coordinate and this one will be your d now my d dash write it as d dash now my main priority is to find the coordinate of this d dash so how can i find the coordinates for this d dash now if now just tell me one thing everyone that if i have a point okay if i have a line l1 and if i have a line l2 and there is a point x comma y if x comma y is passing through l1 and if x comma y is passing through l2 this means that x comma y will satisfy both these equations that is if i substitute this x comma y in l1 i will get a zero if i substitute x comma y in l2 i will get a zero this point is clear to everyone what i'm trying to explain <clears throat> right so my this d dash if i look here this d dash is crossing line l1 also and line l2 also right so now i can say that d dash will satisfy line l1 and line l2 both okay what i'm trying to say here is that if i have a point x comma y see this is line l1 and this is line l2 okay this is the intersection point that i have taken into consideration as d dash now d dash will satisfy line l1 also and d dash will satisfy line l2 also why because this d dash is lying on l2 as well and on l1 as well this is what i am trying to explain here okay so now what i have to do i have to find this l1 sorry this d dash now how to find this d dash how can i find d dash i will take l1 what is my equation l1 equation l1 is 2 just wait huh? uh, 2x plus y equal to 4 and what is my l2 my l2 is x plus 2y equal to 5 right so now i hope you all must have remembered how do we solve these equations how do we get the value from these equations we first try to make it nor make it us uh, we try we first try to make any of the variable equal to one another and then we do the subtraction okay so what we will do we will multiply this with 2 why because i want it to be 2x so now what i will get this is basic maths i am not explaining in detail because this we have already studied in our 6th uh, 7th i think i hope you all remember this Agar hai, so then you tell me i'll, I'll explain it okay so 2x plus y is equal to 4 and when i'll perform this multiplication it will be 2x plus 4y equal to 10 now i will what i will do i will write minus 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 because in order to add them or in order to some simplify them in order to find the values of x and y i have to perform this so this will get cancelled this will become minus 3y equal to minus 6 so minus and minus will get cancelled and the value of y will be 2 so now what i got i got the value of y so if i have to find the value of x i can say substitute y substitute y equal to 2 in any of the given equations because it is common for both the equations so i will say substitute it for l1 so when i substitute for l1 it will be 2x plus 2 equal to 4 so 2x will become 2 and x will become 1 so now my point d dash is 1 comma 2 so now i have four points what are those four points one is your a dash one is your a dash a dash is 0 comma 0 b is what b is your 2 comma 0 c is what c is what c is your 0 comma 2.5 and d dash is your 1 comma 2 now what you have to do you have to find you have your objective was to maximize maximize what 
maximize the value of z what is equation z that is given to us z is 2x plus 3y right this is z okay so now substitute this value in x and y so 2 into 0 plus 3 into 0 will give me 0 so 2 into 2 plus 3 into 0 will give me 4 then 2 into 0 plus 3 into 2.5 will give me 7.5 and then 2 into 1 plus 3 into 2 will give me 8 so my maximum out of these four is 8 so my answer will become 8 this is how you do this question of LPP this is very easy but since I was explaining it from different uh, Nagesh Abhi just wait I'll explain it to you Abhi just try to understand the difference that I am telling you feasible is basically the region that we will talk about and optimal is the uh, this that answer that is you get that out of this I want the optimal answer for myself that is the most suitable and most to you know if I want the maximum one so maximum is your optimal answer okay so just wait for this I'll explain you with the help of example feasible and optimal Abhi you just focus on this thing I explain it to you detail Abhi clearly just understand this this point okay whenever we'll talk about transportation and your uh, what you say um, assignment problem okay in those two problems there are more than more terms like feasible and optimal then i'll explain you in detail thank you roslyn but uh i just hope everybody got this point this lpp question everybody clear to everyone okay Yes, I have taken one more question. I have added one more question for all of you to do and we will discuss it. But Abhi, clear, tell me this is clear. And now one more thing, everyone just try to understand this point. See, this was, this was what I got as my uh, final one. Okay, this is your A. If I get a close boundary like this, okay, if I get a close boundary, then my option, this is feasible. Okay, this is a feasible region. Okay, now suppose what happens is if I get a boundary like this, uh, um, this is the uh, this is the boundary that I have got. Okay, this is the suppose this is the uh, region that I have got. This is feasible means a bounded region. That is each each side is bounded by something. Okay, now what happens here is there is no boundary because here there is no line here. There is no boundary. So when our region is unbounded, when our region is unbounded, it becomes, if it, if it is like this, that I cannot have a boundary here at any side. So this becomes your unfeasible option. Okay, unfeasible means your, that is no boundary exists. And if no boundary exists, and if the solution is unfeasible, this means that I cannot proceed further. I won't be able to find the value of Z. Okay. If, if you have a feasible region, if you have a, uh, well, Lakshmi, uh, see for ex explaining me time lagega, but once you will get it with, you know, when you, once you will get it, ki, okay, how to solve the question, it will be very fast because it's nothing, it is just simple mathematics, nothing there it is, there, there is no formula, there is nothing, you just have to plot the values, you have to find the values, plot them on the graph and find the new set of values, nothing else. But remember this thing that when you will get a close boundary, it will be your feasible region or bounded region. And if you get a, 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 a no boundary or, a, or you get a open region, then it will be your unfeasible. Then in that case, your question will not have any boundary or any feasible answer. Okay. So this is basically feasible is what. Now, one more thing that I want you to, to remember is, always remember that your formula na objective function will always be max it is the standard form if you have a question a standard form then you will have this max here and if you talk about subject to constraints okay constraints may when you will talk about if you have this equation that is x1 plus y1 this inequality this inequality will always be less than equal to if you have any number of equations any number of equations here Suppose here you have x2 plus y2, x3 plus y3. 
these all will always be less than equal to if you talk about the standard form okay do not confuse it if you talk about the standard form you have to you should always have this less than equal to and if you talk about the particular values of these variables x1 x2 x3 they will always be greater than equal to any when most of the time it is zero but sometimes they can also write two three four so always keep a check here okay so x1 x2 x3 will always be greater than and the equations will always be less than this is the standard form do not get confused okay now moving on to the next question of the same type i have added one more question for you try to do it and then we will discuss it mm. this is the question everyone this is your equation max z is equal to 4x plus 5y subject to the constraints 2x plus 5y less than equal to 25 6x plus 5y less than equal to 45 and x comma y is greater than equal to 0 so try to solve this and yes one more thing before before starting or before uh, you know uh, before proceeding always check for the standard form if your answer is not standard make it standard see whenever you have min z equal to something for that we we'll have a different procedure but mostly you will always get max only okay because for minimum it will become a bit complicated i will explain it to you when uh, i have uh, that also we have a point but first for now you always see that you have a max only and mostly most of the times max hi hoga question okay we will discuss it later when we will have minimum also because this that is another procedure and that will take a whole lot of time so now right now we are short of time so just we focus here ki this is max and this is less than equal to and we will proceed further okay i will explain that point also but we it will take a lot of time so we'll talk about it later in the session everybody is doing this question you have to tell me the value of z tell me the okay i'll give you the options as well uh, let me just see the options till then you do that i'll see the options okay so 45 35 35 35 okay <clears throat> okay what about others everyone right so the correct answer is 35 nice that many of you got it right very good okay so correct answer is 35 let's have a quick uh, uh, discussion on how we can solve these questions okay so let's talk about the first equation that we have 2x plus 5y i'll just simply write out the points uh, so no no the correct answer is 35 so i'll explain I'll, i'll do the whole procedure how we got it okay so the points for this part the points for this equation that is a point will be your 0 comma 5 everybody just check are your points correct or not and second will be your 12.5 comma 0 same point you are getting everyone okay this is your first equation then let us talk about the second one the second equation that is your uh, 6x plus 5y equal to 45 in that case your point is your first point is 0 comma 9 and your second point is 7.5 comma 0 everyone is getting this point only anyone who is getting any other point no okay 
now we plot the graph now let's plot the graph and we will see what answers we will be getting so this is your x and this is your y okay now let's talk about the first plot first point is your 0 comma 5 so where the 0 comma 5 will lie 0 comma 5 will lie somewhat over here okay this is your a1 that is 0 comma 5 and then you have 12.5 comma 0 so 12.5 let's say it will lie here 12.5 comma 0 and this is your point b so now i will add them so when i'll add them i will get a line like this okay then let's talk about the point c and d point c is 0 comma 9 so 0 comma 9 will lie somewhat over here c is 0 comma 9 and d is 7.5 comma 0 so it will lie somewhat here that is your d point 7.5 comma 0 so i'll join this line as well okay so now what is the feasible region that i have the feasible region will be this part that will be made of these two lines okay so now this is my this is my point a this is my point B dash, this is my point C dash and this is my point D. So now what is the point uh, B dash? If you have calculated everyone, B dash will be 5 comma 3. If I'm not wrong, if anyone is not having this answer, just tell me. I'll explain it to you how I got 5 comma 3. Everyone is getting 5 comma 3? Everyone is getting 5 comma 3 only? This point, this plot 5 comma 3 only now. Okay. Okay. And now I have all the four points with me. So now I'll substitute them in Z. So once I'll substitute them in Z. So, so if you look here. At A plot that is 0 comma 5. My Z will be 25. Okay. At B that is 5 comma 3. My Z will be 35. Okay. At C that is 0 comma 0. My plot will be z will be 0 and at d that is 7.5 comma 0 my value of d will be 30 so the maximum is 35 out of all four clear everyone this is how you will solve the questions in case of your lpp okay so always look for this region and if there is no boundary with that four points are there always look for those four points and if you don't have a boundary with these four, then that means that your region is not feasible. It is unfeasible. And if you have an unfeasible region, that means that you cannot find the value of, um, once again, tell about 3, 5. It is 5, 3. And uh, yeah, okay. So how I got 5, 3 C. Now what I'll do is, I will, I'll do it here. I have two equations with me. The equations are 2x plus 5y equal to 25 and 6x plus 5y equal to 45. Now when I have to solve this equation, I have to make the variables with the same uh, value. The, the value of these variables must be same so that I can perform the uh, what you can say operations on them that is subtraction. Now here I can see that this is already same 5y 5y. So 5y minus 5y will get cancelled. 2x minus 6x will give me minus 4x, right? And here 25 minus 45 will give me minus 20. So this minus and minus cancelled out. So x will be 20 divided by 4, that is 5. Now what can I do? I can substitute this in any of the equations. So suppose I have used this equation 2x plus 5y equal to 25 and I substituted x equal to 5 here. So, 2, 5 is equal to 25. So, it will be 10 plus 5y equal to 25. So, 5y will become what? 15. So, y will come 3. So, now my point will become 5 comma 3. I hope now this is clear. Instead of all this, can we just solve constraint? We get answer easily. Try to solve this if you can. But... Uh, but the point is not that there is not always the reason, there is not always the case that uh, ye constraint, ye extra value, jo ye variable, this will always give you the maximum answer. Okay? This will not always be the case. It may be possible that uh, 
आप जीरो कॉमा जीरो ना अप्लाई करो एंड यू अप्लाई सम अदर मतलब देर इज नो श्योरिटी आई एम नॉट श्योर अबाउट दिस मेथड डेट यू आर सेम बट इफ ट्राई टू अप्लाई दिस मेथड ऑन टू थ्री क्वेश्चन ठीक है इफ यू गेट द सेम आंसर एवरी टाइम then uh, maybe that method is also applicable but if that method would have been applicable why somebody would use this whole procedure no for matlab then we could have easily completed like this only we could have used this method only so try to apply this method for around four five questions and include question where you don't have this value as your maximum value any other values giving the maximum value okay and if you still get the answer then maybe we can consider it this as well but i am not sure of this thing i will not lie i am not sure of this thing okay so now this is what how you solve the question of lpp that is linear programming problem okay so this is what i have already added in your slide and we have done with your uh, what i can say with the uh, group theory ke questions we have already seen but not all we have completed but to some extent we have completed still we have some time i just want one more question for you to solve i have one more question uh yes everyone please try this question this question i hope you all will get right but still just try this is the set that has given that has been given to you 1 2 3 5 7 8 9 okay they are saying that you have to perform this under multiplication modulo 10 and they have already told you that this set under this operation is not a group they have already given you this answer okay they have already told you that this is not a group now they have mentioned four reasons to you and they are asking that which of them is false this is your gate question okay this is a question of gate so i have added this because it is very much easy and similar to the concept that we have already covered so this is not bit much difficult or something extra so try to solve it the procedure is simple the procedure is same try to solve it and then tell me the answer so the time starts now the operation is modulo 10 okay modulo 10 modulo 10 ka operation hai multiplication modulo 10 they're asking which of them is false क्वांटिफायर स्ट्रिप्टी कल करेंगे हम कल आपका प्रेडिकेट लॉजिक और ग्राफ थ्री दोनों को मैं ऐड करूंगी ठीक है सो देन वी विल डिस्कस स्टूडेंट्स आर आस्किंग विच ऑफ देम इज फॉल्स दे आर नॉट आस्किंग विच ऑफ देम इज ट्रू दे आर आस्किंग विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज फॉल्स दे हैव गिवन यू फोर रीजन विच ऑफ दिस इज फॉल्स दे आर आस्किंग आप लोग आंसर दे रहे हो ट्रू क्या है फॉल्स बताना है कि कौन सा ऑप्शन फॉल्स है प्लीज ये चीज यहाँ एग्जाम में हमेशा गलती होती है नॉट की जगह आप सही आंसर बता देते हो सॉल्व की जगह ट्रू आंसर आता है बट टू प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस राइट दिस इज वॉट आई एम सेंग दर आस्किंग विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज फॉल्स ओके चलो लेट सी द करेक्ट आंसर करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री ओके नाउ आई होप यू ऑल नो वॉट इज मॉड टेन आई होप यू ऑल नो दिस इज वॉट इज मॉड वेन यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट मॉड वॉट इज मॉडलो मीन्स ठीक है मॉड्यूलो मींस द रिमाइंडर मॉड्यूलो मींस द रिमाइंडर वैल्यू ठीक है सो इफ आई हैव मॉड 10 सो व्हाट आर द पॉसिबल आंसर्स दैट आई कैन गेट आई कैन गेट द रिमाइंडर वैल्यू फॉर मॉड 10 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट एंड नाइन हाउ कैन आई से दिस इफ यू लुक हेयर इफ आई हैव अ नंबर दैट इज थर्टी थ्री ठीक है एंड आई हैव टू फाइंड थर्टी थ्री मॉड टेन सो वॉट आई डू आई डिवाइड थर्टी थ्री बाई टेन सो टेन टाइम्स थ्री विल गिव मी थर्टी वॉट इज द रिजल्ट द रिजल्ट द रिमाइंडर इज थर्टी सो थ्री सॉरी द रिमाइंडर इज थ्री सो थर्टी थ्री मॉट टेन विल बी थ्री दैट इज योर दिस रिमाइंडर दिस रिमाइंडर इज द मॉट ठीक है and if i have if i divide anything by 10 and if i find the mod the remainders will be from 0 to 9 similarly if i divide by 2 and i have to find the mod remainders will be 0 and 1 i hope this point is what is what you all know theek okay? hai now moving on to the table that we always make in these type of questions there are they have given us 1 2 3 5 7 8 and 9 and they have given us multiplication mod 10 what they are saying see ab in this case what you can do either you can complete make the whole table theek okay? hai make the whole table for 1 2 3 5 7 8 9 theek okay? hai or what you can do just check what are the answers they have given you row 2 3 and 8 make the answers for these these values only that is for 2 3 and 8 that will save your time because now your answer will not go out of these values theek okay? hai because they have already mentioned you three answers that is 2 3 and 8 our major concern is on these questions only 2 3 and 8 we all know that it is not close by because mod 10 hai agar if i have mod 10 i will have 0 also as the answer i will have 4 also as the answer i will have 6 also as the answer but these options are not mentioned in this given set so it is not close it is true it is true they are asking me which is false theek okay? hai so now i have to make the table for 2 3 and 8 so 2 times 1 is 2 here i'll have 4 here i'll have 6 5 times 2 is 10 right and 10 mod 10 is 0 similarly 7 mod 2 is 7 uh, into 2 is 14 theek okay? hai 14 mod 10 is what is 4 here you will get 6 and here you will get 18 that is 8 this is clear now moving to the third one third ki table if you if you multiply it 3 times 1 is 3 3 to the 6 3 to the 9 15 will give you 5 7 3 to the 21 will give you 1 8 to the 24 will give you 4 and here you will get 7 now let's talk about 8 8 to the 8 8 to the 16 will give you 6 8 is 24 4 8 is 40 will give you 0 Eight seven zero fifty six will give you six. Eight eight zero sixty four will give you four, and eight times seventy two will give you two. This table is clear. Okay. Now we will find an inverse. They are saying two does not have an inverse. Now what is the identity element here, everyone? What will be the identity element? I have already told that in case of multiplication, your identity element will always be one. So here the identity element is one. right now i don't have one in this row 2 right so 2 ka inverse does not exist 2 inverse does not exist true this is also true 3 3 ka inverse exists the inverse of 3 is 7 3 inverse is 7 and they are saying that 3 does not have an inverse false this one is false theek hai and then 8 8 ka inverse also does not exist because 1 is not in the entire row so 8 does not have an inverse is also true you got this point everyone uh nagesh uh, see uh, if you have a doubt in network i have told you the uh, telegram number that i have i have given you the telegram number just message me on that number and then i will uh, i'll try to clear your doubt or wait for the session where we'll have a network topic we'll discuss network topics there you can clear your doubt there you can ask your doubt theek okay? hai okay this question clear everyone why the answer is option number 3 they are asking which of them is false and there you have to check you have to keep a check okay ki ab wo aap se what they are asking clear everyone so this much for today 
ठीक है टुमोरो आई एल स्टार्ट विद दी कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ग्राफ थ्योरी एंड क्वांटिफायर बोथ because i'll be reading at least two days to cover the concepts of both these topics because both these topics have a lot of question so two identity element no identity element will be one why because i have told you identity element is that element which have which is similar to this value this this sequence which is similar to this sequence and the row which is similar to this sequence is of is your row one so your identity element will be one okay ठीक है, so come prepared with your concepts of graph theory and quantifiers for tomorrow. We will discuss those two questions and I will try to find the questions from the topics that we have covered. Maybe some questions are left so that we will see to them also. ठीक है, so start practicing and if you have any doubt, just message me and then I will try to clear your doubt. So for now we will just end our session. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Have a nice day and take care. Good night. Hello everyone. Good evening and welcome to today's class. So I hope you all are doing fine. Good evening, Bala Krishnan. Good evening. So we are doing right now the PYQs of discrete mathematics. Uh, please just give me a confirmation that my voice is clear and the audio is visible. The audio is clear, right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, channel where the Telegram channel that you can join for all the notifications about the classes and uh, all the PDFs that we have. Okay. And you can call on this number if you have any doubt. And a brief introduction about myself. My name is Ria Rawal, and I have cleared my NET and JRF both. And I have started this special PYQ session for all of you so that you also can achieve your goal and uh, your uh, you know your doubts are cleared. Okay. Uh, good evening, Tripti. So today we will be uh, discussing the uh, topics that is your uh, mathematical logic, that is your predicate logic and your propositional logic. Uh, good evening, Var Lakshmi. Good evening. So, before starting the concept, I just want to ask that uh, yesterday we have covered few questions of your uh, uh, relations. Then we have covered group theory. I hope that is all clear to you. The concepts are clear to all of you. Right. So today we will be uh, starting with the predicate and proposition logic. But before uh, starting with this, I want to make sure that you are well aware about the few concepts of propositional logic. Okay. So what are those concepts? Good evening, Insha. Good evening. Okay. So now in propositional logic, we have few types of propositions that are your. First, we have an operator that is your AND operator. Okay. Then we have OR operator. Then we have NOT. Then we have implication. And then we have bidirectional. Bidirectional or biconditional. Basically, it is biconditional. You can say it, not bidirection. Biconditional is much preferred. So we have by conditional. Okay. Good evening, Priyanka. Okay. The, these are basic things that we that our whole proposition lies around, revolves around. You can say so. And how do we denote and? And is denoted basically by either by this symbol or you can write it with this dot. Okay. So if I write like this, a. If I have to write a. And B. So how will I write this? 
I can write either in this way a and b or I can write it as a dot b. Okay. Good evening, Tirupati. Okay. And one more thing that if by both a and b, if I draw the table, if I try to draw the table, if both my values are one, then my result of a and b will be one. Okay. This is your and. Then let's talk about or. What is or? Or is denoted by this V symbol or I can say with this plus. So if I have to represent it as A or B, so how will I represent it? I will represent it as A or B, ya fir A plus B. And if I have to represent the values, so if any one of the value is 1, that is if um, we can say it like this, that... Uh, or okay, case made the thing is that when both the values are 0, then only our result is 0. Otherwise, we will get all 1s. Okay, this is your, this is your or. Then we have not. Not can also be represented either by this way or we can represent in the tilt form. Okay, ya fir I can represent in the dash form or I can represent as a, like this form. So, how can I represent it as? Either I can represent it as A complement or I can represent it as A complement or I can represent it as A complement or I can represent it as A complement. So there are four methods in which I can represent it. Okay. So it what it will do? It will change 0 to 1 and it will change 1 to 0. This is your not. Then I have implication. Implication is basically in this form. So if I have this one, a implies B. So this means that A implies B or I can say it represents if A then B. Okay. This is the representation of your implication. And then we have by condition. That is your this one. By condition. So I write it in the form A double implies or by or a double implies b so it says a if and only if b okay so this is how i represent my by condition okay this is clear everyone these are the basics that you should know This I double F represents if and only if. If and only if. Now tell me, this is clear everyone? Yes, I will tell Rosalind. Uh, we wait, uh, just try to understand the meaning that what does it mean and then we will, uh, I'll explain you the truth table and everything, okay? So now if I talk about, now let's talk about your implication and then by condition so first let's talk about implication okay 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 so it is if p then Q. Suppose I have to draw the truth table of P implies Q. So how can I draw it? I will say P, then I will write Q and then this will be P implies Q. Okay. So, okay, wait. Sorry, sorry. My bad. Um, yeah. So now I will draw the truth table. So I hope you all know how to start draw, how to start the, the truth table. We will apply the values of 0, 0 here. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Okay. So, this is the value. Now, just remember one thing in the truth table of implication that rest all are true except this value. This value is false. Otherwise, all else are true. Okay. Just remember this thing that this value is your 
गुड इवनिंग जिसना गुड इवनिंग शिवराज ठीक है सो दिस जस्ट रिमेम्बर दिस इन टू टेबल दैट दिस वैल्यू दिस वैल्यू इज योर फॉल्स रेस्ट और वैल्यूज आर ट्रू नाउ इफ इट कम्स इफ इट आस एन एग्जाम टू सिंप्लीफाई दिस सो हाउ कैन आई सिंप्लीफाई पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू ऑलवेज रिमेंबर पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू इज इक्वल टू निगेशन पी और क्यू ठीक है दैट इज निगेशन पी प्लस क्यू दिस इज हाउ आई कैन डिनोट पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू दिस इज क्लियर एवरी वन ठीक है नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट योर बाय कंडीशनल हाउ कैन आई डिनोट बाय कंडीशनल now moving to the by conditional form theek hai p double implies q now let's draw the truth table of by conditional again we'll be drawing the same way p q and p double implies q so this is your i hope you all know that zero denotes uh, let me write here so that koi confusion na ho kisi ko zero denotes false and one denotes true in case of your propositions theek okay? hai do not forget this this is important zero denotes false and one denotes true theek okay? hai so now it is 0 0 0 1 वन जीरो एंड वन वन सो नाउ वट विल बी पी डबल इम्प्लाइज क्यू इट इज ट्रू वेन एवर द वैल्यूज ऑफ पी एंड क्यू आर सेम रेस्ट इट इज फॉल्स ठीक है रिमेंबर दिस इट इज ट्रू वेन द वैल्यूज ऑफ पी एंड क्यू आर सेम अदरवाइज इट इज फॉल्स सो नाउ इफ आई हैव टू राइट इट लाइक पी इम्प्लाइज डबल इम्प्लाइज क्यू फर्स्ट आई कैन राइट इट इधर लाइक दिस पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू ठीक है एंड लेट मी जस्ट राइट पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू एंड क्यू इम्प्लाइज पी इधर आई कैन राइट इट लाइक दिस और आई कैन से दैट पी डबल इम्प्लाइज क्यू इज इक्वल टू पी डॉट क्यू प्लस पी बार डॉट क्यू बार दिस इज हाउ आई कैन रिप्रेजेंट बाय कंडीशनल ठीक है डू नॉट फॉरगेट दिस this will help you when you will have to simplify the questions we will do it when we will do simplification then aapko acche se clear ho jayega so is this much clear everyone theek hai <clears throat> good evening ruhi okay now the some important results that are very important and you all should know that ki kyunki isme there are chances that certain errors may occur so what are those suppose if i have two a and a bar if i do the and of a dot a complement theek okay? hai if i perform a dot a complement then it will be zero okay but if i add a and a complement it will be one okay so remember this if i add the complement and the number itself it will be one and if i perform multiplication or perform and on a and a complement it will be zero theek okay? hai then what else i can have um uh, chalo i'll add it uh, as soon as uh, jab hum aage questions dekhenge then i will add them into the uh, into the slide theek okay? hai so abhi ke liye clear hai na ye cheeze just remember this that these are your and or not implication by conditional basic hai ye aapke देन उसके बाद आपका आता है ये इम्प्लीकेशन की ट्रुथ टेबल है एंड इफ यू हैव टू सिंप्लीफाई दिस ट्रुथ टेबल देन इफ यू हैव टू सिंप्लीफाई समवेयर इम्प्लीकेशन ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट द फॉर्मुला टू सिंप्लीफाई पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू इज निगेशन ऑफ पी और क्यू दैट इज निगेशन ऑफ पी प्लस क्यू इन बाय कंडीशनल ए इम्प्लाइज या यू कैन राइट लाइक दिस ऑल्सो यस ठीक है बट जनरल रिप्रेजेंटेशन आपका यही होता है मेनी टाइम्स यू कैन सी दैट इट दे राइट इट लाइक दिस ऑल्सो दिस ऑल्सो एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो द सेम वे दीज एंड दिस आर सिमिलर ओके दीज एंड दीज आर सिमिलर ओके नाउ मूविंग टू आर क्वेश्चन आई होप द बेस इज क्लियर नाउ अबाउट योर दिस प्रोपोजिशन लॉजिक नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द क्वेश्चन 
This is basically your combinatorix question. This is not related to your proposition logic and it is very easy. So try to solve this. They are saying the number of positive integers not exceeding 100 that are either odd, either odd or the square of an integer. So you have to tell the total numbers of positive integers not exceeding 100. Okay. So the time starts now. Try to solve this everyone. Okay. No problem, Rosalind. No, no worries. We'll discuss it. Okay, so the correct answer is option number C. That is your 55. Now, how come option number C is the correct answer? C, they are saying not exceeding 100. That means and positive integers. Okay, positive and not exceeding 100 will tell you the range. That the numbers lie from 1 to 100. Okay, positive integers not exceeding 100. Okay, now... You can take 0 as well, but 0 is will not be added in any of these cases. So, I will start from 1, no, number of positive integers, 1 to 100. Okay? Now, first they are saying the first condition that they have substituted is odd, that odd number. Now, tell me, if I have 10 numbers with me, I okay? will take small example. If I have 10 numbers from 1 to 10, okay? so how many are odd and how many are even? 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. These are your odd. Right? And 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. These are your evens. So, I can say that from 10 numbers, half numbers are odd and half numbers are even. That is 5 numbers are odd and 5 numbers are even. I can say that. Right? So, if I have 10 numbers, out of 10 numbers, half are even, half are odd. So, if I have 100 numbers, how many numbers will be even? And how many numbers will be odd? 50 odd numbers and 50 even numbers. Is this point clear? This point clear, how I got 50 here? Okay. Now, the second point they are saying is that square of an integer. Now, what does this mean? That is the, the perfect squares that we have. So, we will write the perfect squares here. Okay? So, what are these squares? If I take the square, first is your 1. Then I have 4. Then I have 9. Then I have 16. Then I have 25. Then I have 36. Then 49. Then 64. Then 91. And then 100. How I write this? This is the square of 1. This is your 1 square, this is your 2 square, this is your 3 square, this is your 4 square, 5 square, 6 square, 7 square, 8 square, this is 81 sorry, uh, 9 square and 10 square. Okay, so this is the square of an integer. So these are your squares. This much clear everyone? Ruhi, kya samaj nahi hai? Tell me then I'll explain it from that part. Okay, this much is clear. Now, now see. There are certain numbers in square of an integer that are odd. Right? And these odd numbers are already covered in this part. That means we are covering the certain, some odd numbers are being covered twice. Some odd numbers are 
covered twice so we just need to cover them only once so what i will do i will subtract or i will remove those numbers from this part from this square of an integer so what are those odd numbers that are coming twice one one is coming twice because one is odd as well nine is coming two times because nine is odd as well 25 is coming two times because 25 is odd as well then 49 and then 81 so how many numbers i have removed i have removed five numbers because these five numbers are odd and they are already covered in this first part so now what are the total numbers the total is your 50 plus the remaining from this second one so 4 16 36 64 81 so 50 plus 5 55 and now i have added this because they have written either or or okay either or hai. Iska matlab that is ya to ye ho sakte hai ya ye ho sakte hai they are not saying and they are not saying odd and square if they have would if they would have written odd and square the answer would have been five because in that case i would have taken intersection so please remember this point agar or de rakha hai so you have to take union and agar and de rakha hai if they have given mentioned it as and then you have to take intersection okay clear my point if they have given you or that is either or or then you have to take the union that is union of these two na parts and if they have mentioned and then you have to take intersection okay what would have happened if they have given you this question that odd and square of integer if they would have mentioned like this odd and square of integer so what you would have done you would have first calculated the square of integer what are the square that of integer we have 1 4 9 16 25 36 uh, 64 right now 36 69 49 49 64 81 and 100 okay these would have been your square of integer and they are saying odd and what they mean is that the number must be odd and it must be a square of integer in that case these values would have been considered because they are odd and they are square of an integer so always remember that when you have or when you have that they have mentioned or then you have to take the union that is you have to add all the two all the parts and when they're talking about and you have to take the common numbers i hope this point is clear to everyone Clear everyone? Yes or no? Okay. Now moving on to the next question. The next question is your propositional logic one. They are saying in propositional logic, given P and P implication Q, we can infer okay now they have mentioned that you are given they have given you true propositions two propositions are given your proposition one is p and your proposition two is p implies q now they are asking what will be the result of these two p and p implies q so try to solve it and then we will discuss what will be the correct answer okay so the time starts now Okay, larger number than 100, larger number than 100, they will, they will tell you the range, Varalakshmi, they will, they will mention the range, they will definitely give you the range in these type of questions. In previous question, they have mentioned not exceeding 100, that is why we took from 1 to 100. And for larger number than 100, similar procedure you have to, uh, you have to find, you have to take. But they will mention the starting number and the ending number. They will definitely mention it. Okay. No. What what happened? Okay. 
सो लेट एस सी दी करेक्ट आंसर एवरीबडी इज गिविंग सम आंसर वन टू थ्री फोर ओके चलो लेट सी द करेक्ट आंसर द करेक्ट इलेवन का भी आएगा क्या बोल रहे हो आप समझ नहीं आ रहा मेरे को इलेवन इलेवन कहाँ पे आएगा इलेवन सो द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस इज योर ऑप्शन नंबर टू ठीक है नाउ सी वी आई हैव दे हैव गिवन टू मी पी एंड पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू देर आर टू मेथड्स हाउ आई कैन सॉल्व दिस फर्स्ट वन इज योर पी एंड P implies Q. That is, I can write it like P and P implies Q. ठीक है? Okay, I can write it like this. P and P implies Q. Now what can I do? I can write, I can let it remain like this, and I'll open this bracket. So it will be negation P or Q, right? So now I will remove this bracket. It will be P and negation P or Q. and i have already discussed this with you that if i have this that is a and a complement it will always give me what it will give me 1 okay so this value will become 1 sorry this will become 0 sorry 0 okay Zero. Zero, it will become or q and i have 0 or q now if you remember the truth table of or the truth table of or says that if i have two values a and b and this is the or table so my value my uh, final value will be 1 if any of the following if any of the two values are 1 it will be 0 only when both the values are 0 right 11 ka square नहीं आएगा बिकॉज इलेवन ओके चलो वेट आई कैन क्लियर योर डाउट डोंट वरी आई क्लियर योर डाउट फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड दिस क्वेश्चन ठीक है नाउ दिस इज जीरो और क्यू नाउ आई हैव टू ऑप्शंस फॉर क्यू इधर क्यू कैन बी जीरो और क्यू कैन बी वन राइट इफ माय क्यू इज जीरो देन माय आंसर विल बी वॉट इफ माई क्यू इज जीरो जीरो और जीरो विल बी जीरो और इफ माई क्यू इज वन देन इट विल बी जीरो और वन विल बी वन राइट नाउ my answer depends on q my answer depends on q whether i have a zero or one as an answer depends on q that is why if i do if i do or if i perform or operation with zero or q the result will always be the number that is there that is q theek hai okay so that is why this is the first method that is will give me answer q now let us talk about the second method now what is the second method second method is your we have rules of inference we have rules of inference theek hai and in that rules of inference rules of inference basically helps us to infer infer means to uh, calculate or to give us some answer theek hai so we have one rule of inference that is modus ponens okay remember this rule name modus ponens so what does it say if i have premise 1 if i have proposition 1 as p implies q and i have proposition 2 as p so the conclusion will be your q this will be your conclusion theek okay? hai so that is how i can uh, i can say that this is my rule of inference modus ponens and i can write my answer q now the trick to remember this is that just remember that p for ponens and p for a positive value this is your positive q if it if it would have been a complement of q then it would have become negative so remember with this trick that p for ponens is will give me a positive value as a result so these are two methods how you can solve this question whichever you find it easy you can solve that method okay uh, good evening virpal and uh, i am sorry if i am pronouncing your name wrong ava i think now the doubt is clear people have already mentioned that 11 ka square 11 ka square will become 121 okay and 121 will exceed 100 and they have clearly mentioned in the question that it should not be greater than 100 so that is why my 11 square will not be included just now which which part you want me to repeat first one or second one first one or second one 
Or both. See, if I talk about the first part, is there any doubt in first part, anyone? Just now, Balakrishnan, doubt in first part or second? Rules of inference. See, there are certain rules of inference. Abhi, uh, I'll not explain them all, but I'll tell you a brief detail about rules of inference. And they are already proven rules. Okay? So you just have to remember them. There are no proofs. They will, they will not ask any proof in your uh, exam so you just have to remember the main there are main two important proofs one is your modus ponens okay and another one is your modus tollens okay okay now what is your modus ponens modus ponens says that yeah Modus ponens says that I have two propositions with me. Proposition 1 is P implies Q. And proposition 2 is only P. Okay? If this is the case, then my conclusion, then my conclusion, then my result will be Q. This is your first modus ponens. Okay? This is your modus ponens. And now what is modus ponens? Modus Tolan says that if I have my first proposition as P implies Q and my proposition 2 is negation P, sorry, negation Q, okay? My second proposition is negation of Q, then my conclusion in case of Modus Tolan's will be negation of P. This is what Modus Tolan says. These are two basic uh, rules of inference that one should know. Okay. Now the trick that I mentioned to remember is that modus ponens means is P is for positive. So remember that your answer will also be a positive. That is a non-negative answer. Okay. And then you will remember it that tolens is the other one. So tolens may we will have the negative value. Just remember it like this. This was a trick that through which you can remember this. Okay. And the second method that I told was key. I'm uh, I'm deleting this. Okay, okay. I hope now this rules of inference clear to everyone. The second method that I mentioned was they have given us P and P implies Q. Okay. Now I have told you earlier, Abhi, when you will see the recording, you will see that I can write P implies Q as negation P or Q. Okay. Like negation P or Q. Or go, I can represent this in this way. Addition. Okay? So now it will be P and will represent it in this way. It will become negation P or Q. I can remove this symbol and I can write it like dot. So negate this will become negation P plus Q. Okay? Now what I can do is I can open this bracket and it will become or I can just remove it like this only. I'll just... Uh, replace it with this. Mm. This is this one. Okay. So now what I can do? P and negation P or Q. So now I know that this P and negation P. These terms P and P complement will give me 0. Always remember this. Okay. P and P complements will give you 0. So now here you will get the answer as 0 of these two parts. Okay? And now always remember that if you have to perform or, if you have to perform or like this, that 0 or here you have A. Okay? Then your result will be A. I'll write it on the slide where I have told you. So here now my result will become Q. Why? Why? Because A, I have two options for A, either 0 or 1, right? So now if I say 0 or 0 or I say 0 or 1, in this case my answer will be 0, in this case my answer will be 1. So I can say that my answer is basically dependent on A itself. If A is 1, the answer will be 1. If A is 0, the answer will be 0. So that is why if I have 0 or A, the result will always be A itself. Okay. Now I'll just add few things to the previous slide that we have studied here. What I am what I am adding here, just try to understand that if I have 
any if i have zero and if i perform or with any number the result will be the number itself okay but if i have one and then if i perform or the result will be one this is your case of or now if i talk about and if i have zero and a the result will be zero but if i have one dot a that is one and a the result will be a okay so remember this thing these are your two another important uh, conclusions that you just you have to remember so that they will help you in solving the questions of your propositions directly clear everyone this thing is clear to everyone okay now moving on to the next question yes they have given you certain compound propositions compound propositions means when two or more propositions are taken together and combined okay these are your compound propositions so they have given you first second and third propositions and they are asking you which of the above propositions are tautologies now see there are two things one is your tautology and one is your contradiction so what is tautology tautology is basically when all values are true when all values are true true or i can say when all values are one because one represent two and zero represent false theek hai try to solve this and then i'll explain you the other terms the timer starts now try to solve this everyone okay what about others what is the answer okay let's see the correct answer the correct answer is option number 3 that is a only now how come third option i'm getting the answer all all of you please look here now first i'll try to solve this part this first part i'll solve and i'll see whether my answer is coming tautology or not okay so how can i solve this they have given a, given me p or then they have given us negation p and q now how to solve this just see uh, just look everyone here i'll tell you how to solve this question i hope you all know a law that is known as de morgan's law right now what does de morgan's law says that if i have a plus b whole complement whole complement then what it will become this complement will get distributed to the entire term that is it will become complement of a then complement of plus complement of plus will become your and then complement of b so if i have a plus b and i have whole complement the result will be a dot a complement dot b complement and if i have a dot b whole complement then what will be the result the result will be a complement plus b complement this thing is clear this is your de morgan's law okay this is your de morgan's law so if i have this thing everyone please look here if i have x plus complement of y whole complement i can write complement like this also okay like dash also so what will be the result for this part for this question what will be the result 
if i have x plus y complement whole complement what will be the result if i'll apply de morgan's law here the result will be x complement dot y right because when i apply complement on this x it will be x complement then i'll apply complement on this plus it will be dot and then i'll apply complement on this complement y so it will become simple y again i hope this thing is clear to everyone clear everyone okay now moving on to this question what they are saying they are saying that you have p i'll write p as it is or so i'll change it into plus because i can i know that or is equal to plus and this sign is equal to add now i have to perform this what this is negation this is your de morgan's type of de morgan's okay so now negation of p now negation of this whole will become this will become p complement this and will become again or and this q will become your q complement this much is clear this step is clear everyone okay then i know that p plus p complement is equal to 1 okay so now this p plus p complement will become what it will become 1 and the remaining will be 1 plus q complement and i have studied that if i add anything to 1 whether it is a a complement or anything the result will always be 1 so that is why my answer here will be 1 and 1 represents what 1 represents a tautology this means that my 1 uh, that is this is your tautology this is clear to everyone if this is clear then i'll move forward tell me this is clear everyone this is clear okay okay now let's look at the second option what does the second option says your second option says that p and q bar so i can write it like this p dot q bar right i can remove this and like this and i can write it like this or that is your add negation p will become p bar right and this and will turn into plus and then i have q bar this is clear this is clear how i open this bracket okay now just look here i have p q bar plus p bar plus q bar now i can take this term and i can take this term and i can take q bar as common right so when i will take q bar common what i will get i will get p plus 1 this thing is clear to everyone ठीक है एंड अभी आई हैव सीन दैट इफ आई ऐड एनीथिंग टू वन द रिजल्ट विल बी वन इटसेल्फ सो दिस विल बिकम नाउ क्यू कॉम्प्लीमेंट डॉट वन प्लस पी कॉम्प्लीमेंट ठीक है एंड इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई एनीथिंग इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई एनीथिंग विद वन सो द रिजल्ट विल बी द नंबर इटसेल्फ दिस इज आल्सो आई नो so here the result will become q complement plus p complement now neither i can add anything nor i can subtract anything nor i have a guarantee that always my answer will be 1 because it can be a possibility that if my p is true and my q is true this operation will give me a false value right so that is why this will not be a tautology that is i will i can get a true value but it is a possibility that i may get a false value as well this thing clear
everyone this thing clear and now the third option third option is simple they are saying that p and q or r that is p and q plus r ab now the answer totally depends on p q and r values now p if p is if p is false my entire answer will become false because when i will multiply something with zero the result will be zero itself so that is why this is also not a tautology so my option is only a because a is only the one that is giving me the answer as one that is your tautology clear this thing okay now there are few terms that i want to discuss with you first is your tautology tautology we have already discussed that tautology is when all the values when all the results when all values or results are true true or one theek hai so this is your tautology then i have contradiction now what is contradiction contradiction is when all the values are when all values or results are false false or zero then i say that contradiction has occurred then i have contingency what is contingency contingency is basically combination of true and false values combination of true that is 1 and false that is 0 values so these are your three terms so whenever they say that find whether the answer is a tautology or not so you have to find whether the correct whether the last answer whether the answer is one or not as in this case as we have seen just now that in this case we were having the final result as one when the final result is one then it means that it will always be a tautology i hope this is clear to you now okay i will i give you this pdf and i have included all these uh, slides that i am writing no all the notes that i am writing i have included this in the pdf i will give you the pdf once the uh, uh, this your uh, questions of discrete will get over then i'll give you the pdf okay now moving on to the next question this question is basically on your predicate matlab there is your quantifiers this question includes quantifiers okay so now try to do this they are saying let p comma pm comma n b the statement m divides n that means that if i have p 5 comma 15 so it means that 5 divides 15 theek hai this is what they mean okay so whenever you have question like this and you have a doubt ki what m and n means so simply take an example and then with that example you will be able to understand what they are trying to say m divides n means that m is dividing n theek hai this is what they mean where the universe of discourse for both the variable matlab they are saying that m and n are your set of positive integers this is what they mean m and n are your positive integers so now they are asking determine the truth values for each of the following propositions they have given you three propositions a b and c and they are asking which of the following is true and which of the following is false so your time starts now try to do this and then we will discuss वन ओके
try to practice more and more questions then only you will be able to uh, know remember all the formulas practice is the key for all the formulas because formulas uh, kabhi bhi you cannot remember the formulas like this only you need to practice question each and every time each and every time try to apply those formulas which you have already learned okay then you will be able to uh, uh, set those formulas in your mind so the correct answer is option number 1 now let us uh, see uh, you all know that there are two types of quantifiers one is your this that is your universal quantifier okay universal quantifier and it says for all it means for all okay and this is your existential quantifier existential quantifier and this says सम सम इट इट रिप्रेजेंट सम ठीक है नाउ लेट इज लुक एट दी फर्स्ट ऑप्शन ए ऑप्शन दे आर सेंग हाउ डू वी रीड इट इट विल बी देर एग्जिस्ट सम एम ओके जस्ट लिसन ट्राई टू लिसन दिस विल बी देयर एग्जिस्ट आई एल राइट इट सो दैट देयर एग्जिस्ट सम एम एंड दिस विल बी फॉर ऑल एन such that m divides n theek hai this is how i will read this statement this statement number 8 that is there exist some m for all n such that m divides n so yes this is true why this is true because we all know that if i have a positive integer theek hai if i have positive integer any positive integer i take any positive integer i take suppose i take 11 theek hai this is a prime number i know but this number is also divided by sum of the your positive integers that is your 1 1 divides 1 divides 11 so i can say that there exist some m some m will exist for all n that is for all n means for all the positive integers there will exist some m some positive integers that will divide them theek hai now let us look at option number b they are saying for all n one divides n right we have just proved it right now that one will divide each and every positive integer that is one is the multiple of each and every positive integer one is the factor of each and every positive integer so this statement is also correct now looking at the third one they are saying for all m this represents for all m there there are for all m there are for all n for all m and for all n m divides n what they are saying what they are trying to say that each and every positive integer try to understand this each and every positive integer will divide each and every positive integer what they are trying to say that each and every m each and every m divides each and every n this is what they mean in your statement number 3 now you tell me is this valid because if i have 2 so 2 divides each and every n that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to infinity if i take 2 here so 2 will divide 1 also 2 also 3 also 4 also 5 also 6 also no each and every m will not divide each and every n so this is my false statement that is why a is true b is true but c is false now tell me is this clear to you everyone this is clear how do we read the statements in case of this there exist and for all okay <clears throat> repeat which which part you want me to repeat uh, sonu bo all the three parts or only for uh, third part see third part is saying that for all m for all n p divides 
speed says that m divides n so this means that each and every positive integer will divide each and positive each and every positive integer and i know that this is not the case right each and every m you you say it like this each m each m divides each n okay this is what third option is trying to say that is all the positive integers positive set of integers are from 1 to infinity okay m also belongs to from 1 to infinity and n also belongs from 1 to infinity what they are saying that one if i take one one will divide each and every number correct one will divide each and every number this is right now if i take two now tell me will two divide each and every positive integer will two will your two divide each and every positive number two will not divide one two will divide two correct two will not divide three two will divide four correct two will not divide five right but they are saying that according to this this statement two will divide each and every value of n they are saying this part they are saying that if i take any value from this set that is 1 to infinity if i take any value any value that is suppose i have taken 5 so they are saying that 5 will divide 5 will divide all the values from 1 to infinity and this is not correct because 5 will not divide 1 5 will not divide 2 right so each n means that for each and every value m will divide the number this is what they are trying to say in third okay so that is why third is the wrong uh, represent representation of the sentence clear everyone okay now moving on to the next question they have given you the resolvent of the set of clauses now what does resolvent means that your result when you will uh, when you will solve these clauses what will be the result of your clauses they are asking you basically the result okay so try to solve this and then i'll tell you how to solve these uh, cases okay and the time starts now okay so the correct answer is option number 2 now everybody just look here how to solve these type of questions see whenever they give you a set of clauses this, that means that they have given you certain set of propositions and they are asking you the result okay now in rules of inference in rule of inference there is one resolution rule okay resolution rule we have what it says that if i write this if i write this is the form like this a or b negation a or d and c or negation b and then if i have to solve it okay how will i solve it i can see that here a and complement of a exists so these two will cancel out each other b and complement of b exists so these two will cancel out each other so my result will be c or d this is your resolution rule ठीक है दिस इज बेसिकली रेजोल्यूशन रूल सो यू दिस इज हाउ यू सॉल्व इट ठीक है द मोस्ट इजिएस्ट वे टू सॉल्व इट इज दिस ओनली दैट यू राइट दीज थ्री क्लॉजेस इन दीज थ्री फॉर्म्स एंड देन अप्लाई द रेजोल्यूशन रूल सो व्हाट डज रेजोल्यूशन रूल सेज दैट व्हेन यू राइट दीज वैल्यूज लाइक दिस एंड यू सी दैट देयर आर कॉम्प्लीमेंट्स ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी नंबर ए इज हैविंग अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ इटसेल्फ बी इज हैविंग अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ इटसेल्फ 
so what i will do i will simply cancel out the number with their complements and the remaining results remaining results will be my answer ठीक है दिस इज बेसिकली रूल रेजोल्यूशन रूल एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट मोर डिटेल ऑन दिस फॉर दिस ऑपरेशन मस्ट बी सेम लाइक हेयर और ऑपरेशन येस येस दिस विल ऑलवेज बी योर सेम हेयर ठीक है दिस विल ऑलवेज बी द सेम वैल्यू दैट इज योर और एंड दैट इज वाई योर रिजल्ट विल ऑल्सो कंटेन और ठीक है and if you want more discussion on resolution or your rules of inference then tomorrow i will add that chart of rules of inference and from there you can see what are the different rules and how we can apply them okay do not worry we'll just see to it and then we will see how we can do it okay thank you shivraj okay now this is another question just try to do it true for and operation no and operation may you have to apply some other way we will see to it how we'll do for and operation but generally these type of clause these type of resolution is generally applied only in your for your or operation okay this resolution is made mostly applied for or operation only okay now try to solve this question they have given you a logical expression that is for all x there is f of x okay and they have written a negative sign here so they are asking what will be this equal to when you will solve this what will be its equivalent so try to solve it and then we will see okay so everybody is giving option number 3 okay so let us see the correct answer the correct answer is okay wait sorry the correct answer is option number 3 okay now how i did this just uh, simply de morgan's law only but de morgan's law in a different way what does it mean that first i will apply the negation here then i will apply the negation on this term theek hai this is my one term this is my one term okay so do not please uh, many of you what what many people do is that they imply negation here also and then they imply negation here also do not do this because this is one term theek hai so now this will become if i apply negation to for all it will become there exists if i apply negation to there exist it will become for all so now this will become there exist x and then i have f of x so it will be negation of f of x theek hai this is your one term that is why i have only added negation in the front of this i will not add negation here so please do not get confused and do not make this mistake in the exam okay clear everyone now moving on to the next question this is the question just try to read it clearly and then try to solve it okay i hope this uh, question is visible to you they are saying if they have given a statement to you okay they have given a statement just i am reading the statement they are saying if my computations are correct and i pay the electric bill then i will run out of money if i don't pay the electric bill the power will be turned off therefore if i don't run out of money and the power is still on then my computations are incorrect this is what they have given you as a statement now they are saying convert this argument or statement into logical notations okay they have mentioned you the variables that 
for computations one if you have computation you have to use c okay if you have electric bill one you have to use b if you have run out of money if you are running out of money you have to use small r and if you if you have for power for power you have to use small p this is what they have mentioned okay now try to convert this uh, com this statements into this notation and see which of the following are correct okay just give it a try and then we will discuss and the time starts now Okay, I have got one answer. Okay. Okay, so let's see the correct answer. The correct answer is option number one. Good, everyone gave the correct answer. Uh, no worries those who gave the wrong just look at here everyone they are saying if my computations are correct okay computations are correct means if c okay c is the one and i pay the electric bill and they are writing and so and how do we represent and we represent and like this so this means that and the second operator is they are saying second one is they are saying that i pay the electric bill that is b so first we have to see that the relation should be C and B. C and B, okay. This is C or B, so this will not be the answer. C and B, okay. So now I have two options, that is 1 and 3. Now I have to check out of the two. They will. They are saying if my computations are correct and I pay the electric bill, then I will run out of money. So if C and B, then are correct and this is also correct. Okay, then they are saying if I don't pay the electric bill, don't pay the electric bill means negation B because B is paying the electric bill and if I don't pay means negation B, the power will be turned off. So what does it mean that negation B, Agar if negation B then your P will happen, negation P will happen, you are getting the point? If your bill is not paid, that is negation B, then the result will be that your power will be turned off. The result will be negation P. So this is the correct representation. If you look here in the third option, they are saying negation P, then negation B. This means that the statement means if my power is turned off, then it means that my bill is not paid. This means, okay, this is statement means this thing. That first my power is turned off and as a result of it, I concluded that my bill is not paid. But the statement they are saying that uh, if I am not paying the bill, then my power is turned off. Okay, so remember this. These occurrences also matter. Keep what is coming before what. Okay, that what is the implication and what is the condition. So that is why option 3 will be discarded because of this. This is not the correct way to write it. I hope this is clear everyone. Okay. Clear everyone? Now, see, I have explained you the basics of proposition. 
I have explained you the basics of proposition and I have made you aware of how to turn statements into your predicates okay how to turn statements into predicates and how to read the predicates okay we have covered these two things i just want all of you to please practice the pyqs of your logic part okay because there are so many pyqs i won't be able to cover all of them so please practice the pyqs of logic okay that is your proposition logic and your predicate logic if you understand the basic concepts okay you will be able to cover them all you will be able to cover the all the questions remaining one or two which are somewhat out of syllabus or because they are not they are not much uh, very well understood by the students so they are just given for the purpose that nobody achieve the full marks okay but still i am guarantee uh, this is my guarantee that if there are 10 questions with these concepts you will definitely be able to do eight correct okay a this this means a double implies b only this is the same implication okay there are different different um, implications how i can write it there are different different methods how can i write it this is the same ma'am which all subjects you are going to cover till exam uh, shivraj we have already covered the pyqs of few subjects you can already see the uh, classes we have covered computer architecture we have covered ai we have covered toc we have covered cn we have covered dbms okay now we are covering this uh, the uh, discrete mathematics and then we will cover rest of the questions rest of the syllabus as well regular student means in your in uh, on the uh, digimento platform you are seeing i also watched all the videos okay see uh uh ritu uh, about the pyq see i have not made the uh, what you say i also just find the pyqs on la on your this uh, google only so i'll give you the website's name where you can find the pyqs okay i'll give you the name of the website where you can find these pyqs there you can Uh, there you can uh, watch all the pyqs and do the questions okay okay so uh, otherwise we can discard option 3 we can op discard option 3 by looking the last or operation negation r or p implies negation c how matlab uh, how can you uh, discard this i am not able to get it negation r on negation ne or p will become r implies p r implies p in you guys mm. i am not sure uh, the two the two is only asking the same na tripti tripti i am not sure about this because uh, otherwise we can discard the option 3 by looking the last or operation last or operation this operation you are talking about this one uh shivraj see abhi right now i am uh, covering toc there theek hai toc is about to get over toc will get over within 3 to 4 days theek hai uske baad i am thinking i am not sure about now for now but i am thinking to start with computer architecture maybe theek hai i'll discuss it with sir and then i'll i'll be sure of what uh, subject i'll be able to cover after toc but toc will get over most precisely by your um, wednesday or thursday ठीक है बिकॉज टुमोरो वील बी डूइंग पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटर देयर ठीक है सो आफ्टर पुश डाउन ऑटोमेटर व्हाट ऑल व्हाट एल्स रिमेन्स योर अनडिसाइडेबिलिटी पार्ट रिमेन्स देन योर क्लोजर पार्ट रिमेन्स ओके सो दीस टू थ्री टॉपिक्स विल रिमेन एंड दैट वी विल कवर इन टू और थ्री सेशंस सो आई थिंक दैट बाय वेडनेसडे और बाय थर्सडे आई विल बी एबल टू कंप्लीट दैट टीओसी एंड आफ्टर दैट आई डोंट नो मे बी सी आई एम नॉट श्योर मे बी आई एम नॉट श्योर ओके सो एम्बली सेइंग कैन यू टेक ओएस and uh, somebody is saying can you take software engineering please share the link for where i am getting um, i am getting telegram not getting telegram group okay let me just clear your queries one by one okay just wait everyone theek hai let's first start by discussing the next subject that we have to do theek hai now the remaining subjects are operating system software engineering data structures and algo theek hai then we have computer graphics and then we have what 
then we have few co co compiler concepts also and we have digital logic concepts also one two three four these only are remaining no or anything else is also remaining okay so now how many of you want os and how many of you want se the main dif uh, discussions between these two only os 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 okay so what we will do is we will start with os okay then after three or four classes we start with se okay because these two are mostly preferred by you so we start with os and then we'll do se okay we will cover se as well don't worry we will cover se but first we will complete os and then we will cover se okay then what was the other doubt the other doubt was that uh, where lakshmi is not able to find the telegram group the link of telegram group is t.me/digimento and the name of the channel is digimento education okay so now i hope you will be able to find the channel okay now the third thing time of my live class my time of live class is 6 pm every day monday to saturday sunday is off so monday to saturday 6 pm okay graph theory priyanka tomorrow we will do graph theory graph theory will cover tomorrow okay don't worry tomorrow is saturday no tomorrow we will have a class we'll do graph theory over there and now after all these doubts let us discuss one more thing i just want to know from you all that uh, what are the topics that you want to study theek hai what you want to study after completing the pyqs we have decided now that after completing the pyqs first one day we will have paper one session then we will have paper two session and then on day three we will have a surprise session right i'll inform you one day prior what subject i am thinking but i will not tell you before that okay so now i want to know you i want to know from you that in paper 2 what are the topics that you want to study and please do not say the whole subject just topics only topics i'm talking about that you want clarity of the topics that can be covered in one and a half hour or so not more than that because usse zyada fir bahut hi boring class ho jati hai c o a k important portions kya hai see uh, tripti uh, first of all see the uh, pyqs classes of coa theek hai then that you in coa you have addressing mode theek hai try to complete that addressing mode pipeline is important in addressing in your uh, coa theek hai then what else we have then we have uh, that uh, address one uh, address one questions we have no where they have this jump instruction and all these instructions are given to us theek hai and uh, there are questions from instruction micro instruction made the the instructions divided into these three types that one is your branch field one is your condition field these questions are basically important and asked and repeatedly they are asked so put your main focus on these three to four topics and if you will when you will see the previous year questions no from there you will be able to understand what are the most important type of questions that we have from coa what how, how many questions are repeated every time ओके सो यस एवरीवन द नेम ऑफ द टॉपिक्स कुछ नहीं पढ़ना है क्या वन वॉज एसक्यूएल वन वॉज एसक्यूएल वी हैव वी नो दैट वन इज एसक्यूएल ओके सो पाइप लाइनिंग ओके we'll be discussing the concepts on the basis of your questions okay i'll see whether i should have a question concept or should i have a theory concept we'll see to it buffering yes paper 1 will be covered simultaneously paper 1 paper 2 paper 1 paper 2 we'll cover it like this don't worry we'll cover paper 1 as well mohan uh, please uh, टीओसी में सब टॉपिक 
topic of what you want to study in TOC because TOC is a subject in itself. I cannot explain data structure and algorithm. Topics, topic in data structure and algorithm, SE key problems. SE problems will be solved in your SE numericals. Don't worry. SE PYQs will solve all your SE problems. Don't worry. because uh, SE CO is also very important. Try to uh, do the your uh, PYQ questions no from COA. I hope that will definitely help you. Yeah, optimization was there, transportation problem and your assignment problem. Optimization, okay. Yes, in higher education, I will cover your most important topics. Okay? Most important topics from your paper one are your teaching aptitude, research aptitude, logical reasoning, ICT, I have already covered. Please see the videos of ICT. ICT has already been covered. Then we have communication. Okay? And in logical reasoning, we will be having Indian logic as well. So don't worry. We will discuss these topics. Do not worry. Yes, yes, do not worry. Complexity. Okay. Okay, now in this surprise session, what I am planning is he, I will have paper 1 also and paper 2 both. That will help you to practice more and more of paper 1. Otherwise, only focus will be on paper 2 only. So, I will try to add the paper 1 and paper 2 both the questions, okay? One unit at a time. One unit of paper 1, one unit of paper 2. I hope this will work for you, okay? So this is what I am planning for now to proceed, how to proceed further after covering your S, uh, paper 2 PYQs and then we have a session of paper 1 and paper 2, okay? Mm. I'm here only on YouTube. Otherwise, so I teach on Digimento the separate session when you take subscription and all. But we'll do certain questions like this so that I can help you all also, okay? Yeah, data mining and the big data, basically they are very small concepts, but okay. We will have a brief discussion over those sessions as well. We will see to it. Websites and all, they are very basic. That's your website, then you have this XML and all. These are very, only one or two questions are asked from there. So, I uh, will tell you the website where you can study this, okay? And yes, now one more thing. Now, the uh, site where you can study the PYQs, okay, the PYQs that you can study. You have this gate overflow, okay, this is one uh, website, this gate overflow. You can find UGC previous year questions from there, okay, and you have this solutions, okay, this is one another website. Okay. From here also you can cover the uh, questions, previous year questions of UGC. And we have this Geeks for Geeks as well. So you will find many sites. But these three are the most reliable one. Because they provide a detailed solution as well. Uh, genetic algorithm say theory only will be asked. Theory only. Okay. So for theory I think if you will see the PYQs of genetic algorithm. Then that much will be enough for you. Computer architecture may what computer architecture may pipelining. We have already said that okay, we will discuss pipelining. What else? Okay, so tomorrow, see, uh, Abhi, I cannot say that all the questions of uh, logic are completed because logic will have are is having so much of concepts. Okay, but I have try to explain you the basic concepts of logic, okay? So try to solve the PYQs of logic. Tomorrow I'll include graph theory as well in your questions, okay? Then we will discuss the questions of graph theory. So come prepared with the concepts of graph theory, what all you have prepared with, uh, come prepared with it. And then from Monday, we will start with operating system. What all questions of graph theory will be remained, I'll try to cover it in your that uh, session where we have paper 2 plus surprise, no? In that session, I'll try to cover the remaining concepts of uh, all the subjects. Yes, yes, today's class is over because now uh, I just want you all to just practice the concepts of logics, okay? Whatever I have teach, I have added these slides as well. 
uh if you want i can give you the pdf now or if you want i can give you the pdf tomorrow after adding your uh, the, the graph theory as well so now you tell me how do you want the pdf now or tomorrow i think uh, it would be better that if you will take it tomorrow because tomorrow na i will uh, combine all the concepts of discrete whatever we have studied including graph theory and then i can give you the one pdf containing all these uh, now tomorrow theek hai so i will be giving you this pdf i think that it would be good that if you will take this pdf after graph theory is completed because graph theory ke kuch concepts there are still there that we need to study and that i will add like this in this pdf and then i'll send you that okay okay everyone chalo so that's it for today just take care everyone and keep practicing the questions and i have told you the websites as well so keep practicing from there and then tomorrow we'll start with the concepts of graph theory so please uh, yes so please prepare the concepts of graph theory as well and this have a brief overview of the concepts of graph theory agar detail me or not getting a uh, discrete will be completed tomorrow when i cover the concept of graph theory as well see this is such a big subject i cannot complete the whole subject in 4 days you all know that this is just not possible to cover the entire subject or entire questions in 4 days that is your 4 hours theek hai so i have tried to explain you the basics of discrete that is your group theory graph theory okay now it is your time to practice the questions using this concepts and what all concepts i feel that are important and remaining i'll try to add them whenever we will have our next session of paper 2 ठीक है, I'll try to I'll try to add those concepts somewhere here and there so that you will get get the knowledge of those concepts. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice time and good night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's class. I hope you all are fine. Hope you all are doing fine, and you all have started with your revision. Uh, those who have those, uh, all those who have joined the class, please just give me a confirmation that my voice is clear to everyone. Good evening, Alok. Good evening. my voice is clear right okay good evening navdeep good evening swapnil good evening rohi Okay thank you everyone for the confirmation uh Okay Okay uh, there is one uh, thing that I want to clear uh, everyone uh, today we will be starting with the discrete mathematics PYQ's fourth part okay and this is this will be the last class of uh, last class of PYQ's of discrete but still there are few concepts of graph theory that are still not covered with this lecture so after completing all the pyqs all the pyqs of the previous uh, of all the subjects that are remaining i'll have one session on the pyqs of graph theory separate okay because graph theory is such a big concept i tried to cover each and every con possible concept but i was not able to uh, cover all the concepts so that is why uh, we will have one more session after covering the pyqs of all the remaining subjects of graph theory okay and this is the telegram channel which you can join uh, digimento and the name of the channel is digimento education okay and this is the phone number where you can call so that if you have any doubt your doubts will be cleared okay now uh, one thing that i want to tell uh, yesterday 
uh, in our class no i told you about this thing uh, this table implication table so i just want to tell that uh, there was a mistake in the implication table uh, it is that our table is if the form is of 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 so the value will be false only when p is true and q is false okay the value will be false only when p is true and q is false theek hai i uh, just wrote it reverse in the reverse order so please remember this theek hai this was the uh, this was the mistake that we uh, that i made in the last class and uh, i just forgot to recheck it but uh, in the comment section someone mentioned it so टाइप लाइक दिस ठीक है सो व्हाट इट इज सेइंग इट इज सेइंग दैट लेट पी क्यू आर डिनोट द स्टेटमेंट्स इट इज रेनिंग दिस इज योर स्टेटमेंट पी ओके इट इज कोल्ड इट इज योर स्टेटमेंट क्यू एंड इट इज प्लेजेंट इट इज योर स्टेटमेंट आर ओके आफ्टर एवरी क्लास यू वांट द पीडीएफ्स आफ्टर एवरी क्लास देन द क्लास देन द पीडीएफ्स विल गेट रिपीटेड दैट इज व्हाई आई डोंट शेयर इट एट द एंड आई जस्ट शेयर इट व्हेन द होल सब्जेक्ट इज ओवर because what happens no i just make a complete pdf for the entire subject theek okay? hai i make a complete presentation for the entire subject so if i do like paper day 1 ke pyqs if i send you theek okay? hai then what happen that up day 2 pe you will get these also and these also then it will become a bit uh, no repetitive for you so that's why i just don't send it on the same day today you will get the uh, this pdf of your discrete mathematics today i will send it in the telegram channel so today as uh, our discrete is getting over so today i'll send you the pdf okay uh, good evening priyanka good evening balakrishnan theek hai so this is the question everyone let p q r denote the statements it is raining it is cold and it is pleasant then the statement it is not raining and it is pleasant and it is not pleasant only if it is raining and it is cold so you have to tell how do we denote this statement <clears throat> good evening hina ठीक है सो ट्राई टू डू दिस क्वेश्चन एवरीवन एंड देन वी विल डिस्कस द आंसर गुड इवनिंग जिसना गुड इवनिंग ओके सो ईशान इज सेइंग ऑप्शन ए नवदीप इज सेइंग ऑप्शन ए ओके and what about others okay 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 let's see the correct answer the correct answer is option number a see they are saying it if i look at the statement they are saying it is not raining so it is not raining means it is denoted by negation p right okay and it is pleasant so and will be noted by this it is pleasant so r so negation p and r has to be my first part in all the four parts i can see it is negation p and r okay and now again this is saying and so this thing so now and and so now my c and d will get cancelled out because they are writing it as or okay it is not pleasant it is not pleasant means negation r only if only if is noted by implication it is raining it is raining is noted by p and it is cold so this will be my correct statement that is option number a clear everyone those who are saying option number b or option number any other option clear why option a is the correct answer
just wait for few minutes uh, okay clear everyone now moving on to the next question the next question is again your uh, predicate one only but here they have given you a statement and they are asking you what is the correct english meaning okay now they are saying consider the following uh, following english sentence they are saying agra and gwalior are both in india okay this is your statement the statement is agra and gwalior are both in india a student has written a logical sentence for the above english sentence in first order logic using predicate now what predicate it is using it is using in x comma y in x comma y is being used and it means that x is in y okay this is the meaning of the logic now what it what they have written in agra comma india and or in gwalior comma india now you have to tell which one of the following is correct with respect to the above logical sentence theek hai so now they have given you four options now try to answer the option and the time starts now okay ritu is saying option 1 ishan is also saying okay and what about others Okay. 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 Good evening, Tripti. Good evening. Okay. well let's look the correct answer the correct answer is option number 1 now all of you please try to understand here the statement the first order logic that was written was in agra comma india or in gwalior comma india now what what does this mean that agra is in india or gwalior is in india right if i look here this sentence will mean that agra is in india and this is your or so they are saying agra is in india or gwalior is in india theek okay? hai but the statement was agra and gwalior are both in india so here instead of or they should have mentioned it as and then it would have been a correct answer okay since here it is saying and both agra and gwalior are in india and the statement is representing agra is in india or gwalior is in india that is why this is syntactically valid but it does not express the meaning of the english sentence correct ishan your explanation is correct syntactically valid means that the syntax the in which the syntax that they have written is valid obviously they have written that in x comma y denote that x is in y so now they writing in agra comma india so this means that agra is in india that x is in y theek okay? hai so that is why the syntax the syntax is valid means that the syntax is correct but it is not expressing the meaning of the english sentence that has been mentioned here if i can write it like this also no problem but i have mentioned my english sentence i have mentioned the sentence that agra and gwalior are both in india so my statement should so my logic or uh, the my fourth order logic should you know go with this statement if i write like this in agra comma india or in gwalior comma india correct there is no uh, there is no wrong in this sentence there is no wrong in the syntax of the sentence what is wrong here is the meaning of the sentence i have said here that both agra and gwalior are in india but what it is indicating what it is representing it is it means that agra is in india or gwalior is in india so the syntax is valid the syntax the method the uh, what you can say the uh, syntax for or how do i write how to explain syntax now 
सिंटेक्स का अदर मीनिंग क्या हो सकता है आई नॉट गेटिंग अदर मीनिंग ऑफ सिंटेक्स मतलब द वे दे हैव रिटन इज करेक्ट बट द मीनिंग दैट दिस सेंटेंस दिस सेंटेंस इज ट्राइंग टू इंडिकेट और द मीनिंग दैट दिस सेंटेंस इज ट्राइंग टू टेल इज डिफरेंट क्लियर मोहम्मद आसिफ आई होप नाउ यू डाउट इज क्लियर हाउ इट इज वैलिड नाउ ओके सो मूविंग फर्दर नाउ दिस इज द क्वेश्चन Yeah, the format. Correct, the format. Thank you, Priyanka. The format is clear. The format is okay, but the meaning is not okay. Okay. Now this is the question from your graph theory. They have given you this graph. I hope the graph is clear to everyone. Now they are asking this graph is complete graph, bipartite graph, Hamiltonian graph, or all of the above. So the time starts now. I am trying to answer this, everyone. third okay c okay a okay 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 and what about others okay ओके सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री ठीक है नाउ आई होप यू ऑल नो द मीनिंग ऑफ दीज ग्राफ्स बट स्टिल आई एल एक्सप्लेन यू व्हाट आर दीज ग्राफ्स ठीक है सो व्हाट इज अ कंप्लीट ग्राफ लेट अस लुक एट फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज योर कंप्लीट ग्राफ सो एज द नेम इज सजेस्टिंग कंप्लीट ग्राफ कंप्लीट ग्राफ मीन्स दैट ईच वर्टेक्स ईच वर्टेक्स इज कनेक्टेड टू एनी एवरी अदर वर्टेक्स each vertex is connected to every other vertex okay this is your complete graph if i say all what is directly connected yes yes ishan theek hai so if i look at the complete graph suppose this is my graph of complete graph that is of five vertices theek hai so these a b c d e these will be connected to each and every other vertex that a is now connected to b and c it will be connected to d also it will be connected to e also if i look at b it is connected to a and d it will be connected to c as well and e as well similarly d will be connected to a b c and d and similarly e will be connected to each another vertex and similarly c so now in case of complete graph degree of each vertex is equal to n minus 1 remember this thing okay in case of complete graph degree of each vertex is equal to n minus 1 okay now let us look for your bipartite graph now what is a bipartite graph bipartite graph mein what happens that we we divide our edges or our vertices into set of vertices theek hai and such that the set of if i divide my v vertex into v1 and v2 theek hai v1 v2 are two set now what it says is that the set that the vertices of v1 theek hai the vertices of v1 should not be connected to each other should not be connected to each other theek hai similarly for v2 matlab if i say that if i have it is noted by k okay k is note karte hain hum k it is also this is a graph complete graph k5 and here we represent it as km comma n so if i write it as if i draw a graph of k2 comma 3 so two vertices in set 1 and three vertices in set 2 so now i can connect these vertices i can connect these vertices but i cannot connect these vertices this this means that if this is my set v1 and this is my set v2 so i cannot connect these two together i can connect the vertices of v1 and v2 but i cannot connect the vertices of v1 with each other 
ठीक है दिस इज योर बायोपटाइट ग्राफ नाउ वॉट इज योर हेमिल्टोनियन ग्राफ नाउ रिमेंबर द डिफरेंस बिटवीन योर हेमिल्टोनियन एंड यूलर देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ ग्राफ बेसिकली ठीक है वन इज योर हेमिल्टोनियन and one is your euler or you can say euler euler jo whatever the pronunciation is i pronounce it as euler theek okay? hai so now hamiltonian is linked is for vertices and euler is for edges and how to remember this remember this with this trick that e stands for euler and e stands for ed edges theek okay? hai so in hamiltonian each vertex is visited only once each vertex is visited only once that is no repetition of vertex is allowed and in case of euler each edge is what visited only once i'm just giving you an overview i'm not explaining in detail theek okay? hai good evening deepa okay now what was the question our question was what is this graph now if you just know about the basic definition of these graphs you can see here that a is your complete for a graph to be complete how many vertices are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 n is equal to 6 so degree of each vertex should be what should be 5 now i can see that degree of a is 1 2 3 4 degree of a is 4 since i can see that degree of what a vertex a is 4 this means this is not a complete graph okay now let's look for the bipartite graph now what should be for bipartite graph Now in bipartite graph, it is saying the one thing that you can see either is that you make a set of vertices and check whether these vertices are connected to each other or not. Or Ishan is saying not a bipartite graph since odd length cycle is there. Now what is this odd length cycle? What I can say, this is A, B, C, okay, and then I can I can have a cycle like this A to B. Then I can have a cycle of Mm, B to E, right? And then I can have a cycle of A to E. This is my odd length cycle, right? This is a cycle of odd length. The length of cycle is three. So if my graph contains an odd length cycle, I will say that this is a bipartite graph. Okay, three ki bhi ho rahi hai. One, two, three ki bhi cycle aap le sakte ho. Or agar baaki vertices ko bhi dekho, so one, two, three, four, or one, two, three. Four, five. मतलब आपकी odd length की अगर cycle आपको मिल जाए, this means that it will not be a bipartite graph. Or otherwise you can check the basic method that you try to divide your vertices in the set and try to see whether you will get a vertex that is not connected. C A is connected to B. अब आप okay. अगर आपको ये चीज समझ में नहीं आ रही, just forget this odd length one. ठीक है, just forget it. Just simply look at this vertex F. Now, if you look at this vertex F, you will see that F is connected to A, F is connected to B, F is connected to E, F is connected to D, and F is connected to C. F is connected to each and every vertex. But what happens in bipartite graph? If I am making a set, the vertices should not vertex of set V one should not be connected to each other. in whichever set i will try to put f it will get connected to the other vertex as well so that is why my this graph is not a bipartite graph okay now what is the hamiltonian now how to find the hamiltonian roslin just understand this fact that in bipartite what happens is suppose i have a graph i have any graph theek okay? hai i have a graph of v vertices theek okay? hai if there are v vertices so what will happen is i will divide my vertices in two set v1 and v2 and what how will i divide it i will divide it in such a way that vertices of v1 are not connected to each other theek hai matlab ki the vertices in each set must not be connected to each other this is what is your bipartite graph says that is suppose if i have this graph theek hai if i draw this graph this is your Three vertices here and four vertices here. Okay, this is a graph G and there are seven vertices. Now what I did, I divided these seven vertices into two parts, V1 and V2. My V1 is having three vertices and my V2 is having four vertices. Okay, so now if I join them, if I try to see here, 
my main point is the main point of consideration here is for a bipartite graph that v1 vertices should not matlab ye this this should not be a condition this is not allowed in bipartite graph okay only how can you connect the vertices if i write them by name if i name them it is a this is b this is c this is d e f and g so a to b vertex is not allowed edge b to c edge is not allowed a to c edge is not allowed d to e edge is not allowed e to f matlab the vertices that are present in a set if this is my set v1 and this is my set v2 so these should not be see in given example you can simply say it like this that if you first was your odd length cycle theek hai if you get any cycle of odd length from this graph you can say that this is and this is a bipartite this is not a bipartite graph theek hai second method i told you is if you look at vertex f theek hai if you look at vertex f f is connected to a b c d e each and every vertex f is connected to now if i try to divide my set my vertices in two set one is containing f and if i suppose say uh, v1 is f and uh, any vertex e and v2 is a b c d so now f will get connected to e but this should not happen f should not be connected to any of its neighboring vertex if it is a part of vertex v1 so this is how you can see whether your graph is a bipartite graph or not okay now moving on to your hamiltonian part uh, what is hamiltonian one ishan i uh, two colorability property i will explain when i will talk about your color uh, color theorem theek hai abhi i'll explain it to him later because abhi color theorem i have not introduced so maybe uh, there is no knowledge or some people might not might not know about the colorability property that's why i didn't introduce it for now theek hai now what see hamiltonian graph may there are there is a property that is there is a theorem that is known as dirac's theorem okay i hope you have heard this name dirac's theorem now what does this theorem says that if you have n vertices okay if you have n vertices degree of each vertex degree of each vertex should be greater than n by 2 this is what your dirac's theorem says that degree of each vertex should be greater than n by 2 now what i'll do i will check for the degree of each of the vertices degree of a is 4 now what is n by 2 here n is 6 so n by 2 will become what n by 2 will become 3 so degree of each vertex should be greater than 3 this degree of a is 4 i hope you all know how to find the degree of a node okay i am just think i am hoping that you all know how to calculate the degree i am not explaining it if you don't know if you have a doubt please tell me now and this is also 5 so i can see that each and every vertex is having a degree that is greater than 3 that is why my graph is a hamiltonian graph clear everyone everyone this point is clear okay so now moving on to the next question now this is the question regarding the planar graphs okay the question regarding planar graphs so now they have given you two graphs and they are asking you that which of the following is true so this is your a this is your b so they are saying both a and b are planar neither of them are planar one is planar one is not planar so the time starts now everybody answer this three okay Ritu is saying option four. Uh, Amli is saying option three. Ishan is saying both are planar. Rose is saying B is planar. Okay, okay, good. Okay. 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 
सो लेट एस सी द करेक्ट आंसर द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर वन बोथ ए एंड बी आर प्लेनर सो वॉट आर प्लेनर ग्राफ्स प्लेनर ग्राफ्स आर दो ग्राफ्स विच आई कैन ड्रॉ ऑन अ प्लेन ठीक है आई राइट हेयर प्लेनर ग्राफ्स graphs that can be drawn on a plane where edges do not intersect each other okay to ye aapko visible nahi hoga na hmm. edges do not intersect each other now what basically i mean from this is suppose i have a graph that is okay uh mm -hmm. of this type this is your a b c d and e ठीक है, दीज आर योर दीज आर योर एज दिस इज योर ग्राफ नाउ इफ आई हैव टू सी दिस दैट वेदर आई कैन ड्रॉ दिस ग्राफ इन सच अ वे दैट नो टू एजेस क्रॉस इच अदर ठीक है अब आई हैव टू सी वेदर आई कैन ड्रॉ ग्राफ लाइक दिस और नॉट सो वट आई डू फर्स्ट आई विल ट्राई टू ड्रॉ आई विल से ए एंड डी नो क्रॉसिंग ओके डी एंड बी नो क्रॉसिंग ठीक है then a and e no crossing and e and c no crossing abhi tak it is correct now b and c also no crossing now it is i have to draw this these two edges b to e and d to c now i can draw b to e like this no edges crossing each other right now correct now i have to draw this d to c now if i draw this d to c like this it will intersect at this point theek okay? hai but i have to check whether i can draw an alternate method of whether there is an alternate method to draw this graph such that the edges do not cross each other so i have to look for alternate method so how can i draw it i will take this edge outside and from outside i will link it to c what i did instead of drawing it like this i try to draw it from the outside and when i draw this from the outside i can see that i am getting still this graph only this these two graphs are equal but only thing is that instead of drawing this edge like this i draw it in such a way that it does not cross any other edge so this is why this is a planar graph clear how to check whether graph is planar or not this is one of the way of checking whether graph is planar or not ठीक है, नेक्स्ट अदर वे आई टेल यू बट फर्स्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस मेथड क्लियर एवरी वन ओके नाउ मूविंग बैक टू आर क्वेश्चन लेट्स लुक एट ग्राफ ए ग्राफ ए में व्हाट हैपेंस इज सपोज आई नेम इट एज ए बी सी एंड डी ओके सो नाउ आई विल ड्रॉ इट लाइक दिस बिकॉज दीज एजेस आर नॉट इंटरसेक्टिंग ईच अदर सो आई सिंपली ड्रॉ दी आउटर एजेस लाइक दिस ओनली ए बी सी एंड डी now i want an edge from a to d and b to c so i can draw it simply like this a to d right and then b to c for b to c i can draw an edge like this this is the same edge but what i am doing instead of performing this intersection i am what i am doing i am drawing it from the outside so i can say that this is a planar graph so a is my planar now look for your b now this is your b graph and see there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 always remember this whenever you have a see ad and cb are intersecting in this graph right but if i can draw this graph in such a way such that it do not intersect each other if there is any method possible to draw this graph in such a way that this intersection could be avoided like this one that i have drawn so then i can say that this is a non plane this is a planar graph okay since the since i what i have done simply i have removed this edge from here and i have sorry not this one the other one 
I have removed this edge from here and I have drawn it in such a way that it do not intersect AD. Okay, and if, if any such method is possible to draw the graph, I will say that this is a planar graph. Now, please look at this example B. Whenever you have a cube like this structure, always remember it is always planar. And I can draw this cube like structure in such a way. There are eight edges, eight vertices, sorry, right? One, two, three, and four. These are eight, and I can simply connect them like this. Now, if you see this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Degree of this is 3, 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 degree 3, degree 3, 3 and 3. Each vertex is having a degree 3 and here also you can see that each vertex is having a degree 3. So, I can say that both A and B are planar. Clear? Now, moving on to the next question. Now, this is the question. They are saying that consider a tree. This is your tree. This is a type of tree. Okay? They are saying using the property of eccentricity of a vertex, Find every vertex that is the center of the tree. So, these are your options. Try to do this and then we will discuss it. Okay. And the time starts now. Okay, what is meant by intensity? 4, C and H are centered. 3, 4, 3, 3 is G, B, C, H, I, M. Okay, so the correct answer is option number 4. That is C and H. Okay, now what is the eccentricity of a vertex? Now just look, this, uh, look at this slide. Okay, the maximum distance. The maximum distance between a vertex. So in this graph, if I find the distance of A from each and every vertex that is present in this tree, that is B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, N. Okay. So, the distance of A from all these vertices and after that distance, if I take the maximum distance. Okay. If I take the maximum distance, which is not clear. See, this is your vertex A. I am writing it. This is your vertex B. This is your vertex C, this is your vertex D, this is your vertex E, this is your vertex F, this is your vertex G. Then this is your vertex H, this is your vertex I and this is your vertex J. This is your vertex K, this is your vertex L, this is your vertex M and this is your vertex N. I hope now it is clear. Okay? So, so now what is eccentricity? We have to find the first, find the distance of a vertex from all the vertices. Okay? Find the distance and then eccentricity is your maximum distance. E of V is your maximum of all the distances that you will calculate. Okay, So this is your eccentricity. This is what is written here. The maximum distance between a vertex to all other vertices is considered as the eccentricity of the vertex denoted by E of V. Okay, distance from a particular vertex to all other vertex in the graph is taken and among those distances, the highest of the distance is taken as the eccentricity. Now, let us talk about this example. If I see this graph, if I see this given tree, what can you tell me the eccentricity of A? Anyone can tell me the eccentricity of A? What will be the eccentricity of A? The maximum distance of A with the any other vertex that is possible. Can anyone tell me the eccentricity of A? 5. Correct. 
eccentricity of a is 5 now how can i say the eccentricity is 5 see distance of a to b is 1 now if i look here a to b b to c c this path a to b b to c c to h h to k k to l this will give you the longest path and this will give you the highest distance. So, what it is? A to B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So, this is your 5. Like A to L also, A to N also, A to J also, you will get 5 only. Okay? Now, if I talk about A to E of B, eccentricity of B. Eccentricity of B is? What is the maximum distance of B to any other vertex? 4. Okay. Similarly, eccentricity of C is 3. Right? Eccentricity of D is again 4. Now, understand this. This, this, this one, this one, this one and this one. These all are your exterior vertices. And the degree of these vertices will be 5. If you will check, you will find it. It will be 5. Okay. Then this B, D, G, I, K and M. The degree of these vertices will be 4. Okay. And if you check about this C and this H. So, degree of these vertices will be 3. Okay, so this is your minimum distance, minimum vertex. Now, then we have a radius. Now, what is radius? The minimum eccentricity from all the vertices is considered the radius of graph G. Now, if I look at this graph, the radius will be, radius will be C and H because they are having the minimum eccentricity. And since these are having your minimum eccentricity and they are the radius, they will become your center of the graph. I hope this is clear now. This is what I have written here. This vertex whose eccentricity is equal to the radius. What is the radius? Radius is your 3. That is radius of graph is 3. And the vertex that is having the eccentricity 3 will be your center. So this is your C and H are your centers. I hope this point is clear everyone. Okay, this is how you calculate the eccentricity and thank you Rosalind. Okay, now moving on to the next question. The number of colors required to properly color the vertices of every planar graph is. This is A. Okay, now try to solve this and then we will discuss. Correct everyone. I'll just stop the timer because everyone is giving the right answer. Okay. So the number of colors to properly color the vertices of planar graph is 4. Now this is the 4 color theorem. You must have heard about it. The 4 color theorem. Uh, not 5. It is 4. The answer is 4. See there is a 4 color theorem. It states that the vertices of every planar graph can be colored with at most four colors so that no two adjacent vertices receive the same color. Now, if I talk about, if uh, I draw, if we look at the graph, um, which graph I can say, if I look at this graph, suppose this was the graph. Now, what does color say is that no two adjacent vertices receive the same color. This is the main uh, idea behind your colorable thing. That your chromatic number or your uh, the main idea behind coloring any vertex is that two adjacent vertices should not have the same color. Okay. Now suppose I am giving 
this color this blue color to this vertex blue color i cannot give blue to this one right i cannot give blue color to this one okay let me just write again uh okay so if i give blue color to this one i cannot give blue color to this i can give blue color to this because these two are not adjacent similarly i can give blue color to this right and i can give blue color to this right now let's talk about the next color i can give red color to this one i can give red color to this one right i can give i can give what i can give red color to this one I can give red color to this one. Okay. So now they are saying at most four colors. At most four colors means that max to max four colors up they sabte ho to every graph. Okay. Now it is not necessary that every graph will have two colors only. If I change this graph and if I draw a graph like this, if this is my graph, this and this is the graph. Okay. Now this is the graph. Now what what colors I can give? I can give blue color to this one. Okay, blue color I can give to this one. I cannot give blue to this. I cannot give blue to this. I cannot give blue to this. So I'll change my color. I'll give red to this one. Okay, I will give red to this one. Think, mm. right? Red I can give to this. Now red I cannot give to this. Nor I can give red to this. Then I can take green and I'll give green to this vertex. Now I cannot give green to this, this or this. Then what? Then I need a purple color, and I give the purple color to this. So for this graph, I'll be needing four colors, right? So at most four colors are required for every planar graph. So that is why the answer is four here. What triangle? What happened, Ishan? See, okay. Now, important point to remember, everyone. Just uh, keep uh, look here. If you have a complete graph, be careful for complete graph, and you have a complete graph of n vertices. If I write it as k n. So the minimum number of colors required for a complete graph is n. That is your number of vertices. ठीक है? The number of जितनी आप दो, however number of vertices you will have, that many colors will be required to color your graph, complete graph. ठीक है? Then if I talk about bipartite graph, for bipartite graph. Two colors are required. Two colors are required to color your graph because one for this set and one for this set. So two colors. Then for triangle, how many colors? If I draw a triangle like this, black color for this triangle is a complete graph K three, right? Triangle is a complete graph K three. So three colors are required for triangle. Clear? Three colors are required for triangle because triangle is a complete graph. Okay, everyone, clear? Okay, so this is your graph coloring concept. Okay, now this is the question. Now they are saying, consider the graph given below. Which of the following is isomorphic to the graph? Image is clear, right? Image is visible to everyone. This is your A. This is your B. This is your C, and this is your D. ठीक है नॉट दे आर सेइंग व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज आइसोमॉर्फिक ट्राई टू डू दिस एंड देन आई विल टेल यू हाउ टू फाइंड वेदर द ग्राफ इज आइसोमॉर्फिक और नॉट Okay.
Yes, yes, Tripti. I'll provide the PDF today itself. I'll give you the PDF today itself. Do not, don't worry. Okay. Okay, so the correct answer is right option number C. Now, how to check for isomorphic? Okay, first check the number of vertices. Okay, number of vertices, whether number of vertices are same or not in the given graphs. Okay, so how many vertices are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 vertices here also, here also, here also, and here also. Okay, so number of vertices check karne ke baad, what you will see? You will see for the degree of each vertex degree of each vertex okay now what is the degree of vertex u1 3 u2 3 u3 3 u4 3 u5 3 u6 3 u7 3 and u8 3 that is i can see that each and every degree each and every vertex is having degree what degree 3 so, in my isomorphic graph, each and every vertex should have the same number of degrees. Each and every vertex should have same number of degrees. That is, each and every vertex should have degree 3. Now, if I look at V1, degree of V1 is 3. Correct. V2, 3. V6, 3. Now, V7 is having degree 4. So, I will rule out option A. Okay. Now, if I look for V for option B, V1 is having 3, V6 is having 4, I'll rule out this option. Again, here V6 is having degree 4, rule out this option. In this, op in this example, only C is the one that is having degree 3 of all the vertices. So, you have to check first the number of vertices, then you have to check the degree of vertex. Okay. And suppose if degree of vertex is also same, then you have to check third thing that you can check is that if in your graph suppose if this would have been a vertex or i can say if i draw like this that this is your any okay this is your a b c d e and f okay now i have i have a similar graph to this one This is your A, this is the vertex degrees 3, this is 3, this is 2, this is 3, this is 3 and this is 2. So now what can I do? I have this 2 here, I draw it 2. Okay, it is my E, this is 2 I have drawn. Then again I can draw a 2 like this, 2, this all should have 3. So 1, 2, 3 is here, 3 yoga is okay. Then 1, 2, 3 hoga iske. 1, 2, 3, 4 hoga in iske. So, I have to reduce 1. Mm. Okay. So, what can I do? I can erase this one. And I can... What I am trying to explain is... Just wait a minute. Okay. So, this is your A. This is your B. This is your C. This is your D. This is your E. And this is your F. So, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3... 1, 2, 3. I do not have 4 here. But look, what I am trying to explain is ki, if the degree of vertices is also same. Okay? Agar degree bhi each uh, degree of each vertex is same. Okay? So, what you should look that if I have a vertex A in my graph G that is having, that is connected to vertices uh, V1 and V2. Okay? Let's suppose vertex V1 is having degree 3 and vertex V2 is having degree 2. So, in my graph that is isomorphic GI, I should have a vertex, any vertex, it can be not necessarily A, it should be connected to a vertex V1 or V2 with the same number of degrees, with the same degrees. 
ठीक है सो दिस इज वॉट यू कैन चेक बट मोस्ट प्रॉब्लली दिस थर्ड ऑप्शन विल नॉट बी नीडेड बिकॉज टिल सेकेंड ओनली यू विल गेट योर आंसर सो फर्स्ट यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड दैट नंबर ऑफ वर्टेस शुड बी सेम एंड देन डिग्री ऑफ ईच वर्टेक्स शुड ऑल्सो बी सेम येस द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप इज टी डॉट एम ई स्लैश डिजी मेंटो एंड द नेम ऑफ द चैनल इज डिजी मेंटो एजुकेशन ठीक है देर यू विल गेट दिस पी डी एफ बाई टूडे नाइट आई थिंक बाई आई ट्राई टू सेंड द पी डी एफ एज सुन एज पॉसिबल बट यू विल डेफिनेटली गेट इट बाई इलेवन पी एम सॉरी ठीक है आई ट्राई टू सेंड इट नाउ ओनली बट If there are certain changes, there are certain slides that I have to add. Slides of the things that I explained to you. Okay, so that I will add and then I will send you the PDF. Okay, everyone. Now this is your next question. This is related to your Euler circuit. Now try to solve this question and then we will discuss how we can do this question. The time starts now. Yes, everyone. Okay, two. Okay. Acha. Okay. C. Three. Then what about others? C. Okay. P. Okay. 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 Two. See, for any circuit or for any graph to be Euler graph or Euler circuit, there is one important point that you have to check, and that is odd degree vertex should not be present in the graph. Odd degree vertex should not be present in the graph. Okay. Now, if I look at this degree uh, vertex A, the degree of vertex is three. Now I know that if I have a odd degree vertex, it will not be a Euler graph. So it is not a Euler graph. Okay, I'll just cancel out then and there. Then, if I look at this one, this is also A is having degree three. Again, I got a degree odd degree. So again, this will not be a Euler graph. So the correct answer will be both G one and G two do not contain Euler circuit. Okay, correct. Then moving on to the next question, the number of different spanning trees in a complete graph that is your K four. Okay, this is K four and bipartite graph K two two have how many different spanning trees? You have to tell the number of spanning trees that are possible in a complete graph with four vertices and a bipartite graph with two and two set of vertices. And the time starts now. Okay, third option. Okay. 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 Correct, everyone. The correct answer is option number C. That is sixteen by four. Now, this is the formula that you have to remember. There are many formula, but try to remember. Okay. Whenever you have a complete graph that is K n, so the number of spanning trees that are possible is n raised to power n minus two. So here I have n is equal to four. So four raised to power four minus two that is four to the power two that is sixteen. So for complete graph, how many spanning trees I'll have? I'll have sixteen. Okay. 
then for bipartite the formula is km comma n is the thing and m in m raised to power n minus 1 and n raised to power m minus 1 so m and n are both are 2 here so 2 raised to power 2 minus 1 into 2 raised to power 2 minus 1 that is 2 into 2 that is your 4 so here your answer will be 4 so the correct option is 16 and 4 that is option number c okay everyone got it clear this one is clear everyone now the next question they are saying they are asking you they have given this graph to you okay i hope the what is are clear to everyone what is their what uh, they have written here okay they are asking the two distinct set of vertices which make this graph bipartite. You have to tell the set of vertices that will make this graph bipartite. And your time starts now. Very fast, good. Speed has increased, good, good for everyone, good. Okay. Correct everyone. The correct answer is option number C. Now, Vese to all of you gave the right answer, but still some people might have any confusion. So for this, how can you do it? See, first you see for V1. Take for this vertex V1. Now V1 is connected to V2, V5 and V3. So my set will not have these three things. Okay. Now they are having V4 and V6. So V4 and V6. Okay. Abhi tak this is correct. This is correct. Now let us look for V2, V3, V5, V7, V8. Now you can see that V3 and V7 are linked to each other. So I cannot have V3 and V7 in a single same group. Okay? That is why A will cancel. Similarly, B will also cancel if you check here uh, what we can see, what we can have. V2 and V6. V2 and V6 are connected. So I cannot have them both in the same set. In this, in D, you can see that what I have... Um, B में क्या connect हो रहा है? V2, V3, V5. B में भी V2, V3, V5 है. And V1, V4, V6. Okay, V6 and V8. V6 and V8 should not connect to each other and they are connecting. So that is why D is also invalid. Though my correct answer is option number C. Okay. So this is how you can do, we can check for these bipartite graph question that the vertices present in the same set should not be there. Yeah, yes, uh, different, different vertices are there which are connected to each other. And if we see in VC, that is we see in example C, no two vertices are there in the same set that are connected with each other. That is why option C is the answer. Okay. Okay, so this much for today. Okay, I have not extended the session for today. But after completing your PYQs, after completing the PYQs of all the subjects, that is your OS, SE, uh, data structure and your, uh, what we have, CG. Okay, after the PYQs of these subjects, I will have one session on your simple graph theory MCQs. Only graph theory MCQs. Because there are certain MCQs that types, types of MCQs that are remaining in graph theory that I will include in that session. I will keep a simple, uh, single session for that graph theory MCQs only. Okay? There are few topics in each and every subject from which I particularly feel that there are certain questions that are left. So we have to add those topics. We have to cover those topics as well. So graph theory is one of them. We have not covered certain topics like your hand shaking lemma. There is question related to it. Then there are certain questions related to graph and trees. Okay? We have to cover those questions. 
सो आई विल ट्राई टू हैव ग्राफ थ्योरी प्लस योर लॉजिक ठीक है आई विल ट्राई टू हैव मोर एंड मोर क्वेश्चन ऑन दीज टू कंसेप्ट एंड देन वी विल सी फ्रॉम मन टुमोरो इज ऑफ ठीक है टुमोरो देर इज नो क्लास नो क्लास टुमोरो टुमोरो संडे फ्रॉम मंडे वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद योर ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम ओके सो प्लीज डू कम प्रिपेयर विद दी कंसेप्ट ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम वी विल डिस्कस दी पी वाई क्यूज ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम ठीक है एंड देन वी विल स्टार्ट विद योर एस सी एंड देन वी विल डिस्क्रीट एन सी जी एंड देन वी विल हैवर सेशन ऑफ ग्राफ थ्योरी एंड प्लस योर पेपर वन विल गो हैंड इन हैंड आफ्टर दी कंप्लीशन ऑफ दिस पी वाई क्यूज आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू एवरी वन I have already told you my Telegram number where you can contact me, where you can send me your doubt. So if you have any doubt related to any question, but please before asking the question, please do check the previous videos as well because there are many questions that we have already covered in the previous videos. Okay, so please do check those PYQs video as well. We have I have tried to cover. Uh, yes, we supply like tell you. I have tried to cover all the possible PYQs that are important in my previous sessions. So please go and go through them and have a look. Now the link for the PYQs. There are three websites that I told you yesterday where you can check for your PYQs. One is your Solutions Adda. Okay. One is your Solutions Adda. Then second is your Gate Overflow. And third is your Geeks for Geeks. But in Geeks for Geeks, they only have a uh, PYQ paper. They are only have paper up to I think two thousand eighteen only. Okay, so these two are preferable as uh, compared to the this one. So here you can find the paper of two thousand twenty one as well with solution. Okay, so you can look go through uh, to these websites for the PYQs, and then we will now we will have a class on Monday. Tomorrow is our off, and I will send this PDF today by eleven pm. positively on the telegram channel that i have mentioned okay so everyone please be on time on monday that is 6 pm daily 6 pm we have a class okay session will be of operating system and this is the telegram channel where i will send you the pdf okay so do not forget to subscribe to it join it so that you may get you will get all the notifications related to this channel and if you like this video so do like it and uh, share it if you want okay there is no compulsion but please do attend the session live so that all your doubts get clear at the same point of time otherwise if it get linger on then it will be difficult for you only to clear it at the time when the exam will be near very near okay so this is for today and see you all tomorrow see you all on monday yes yes i'll definitely share the pdf don't worry priyanka i'll share the pdf by today only i'll try to share it positively i'll share it okay so everyone take care stay safe stay at home and uh, just states at home and practice your questions okay practice your pyqs and take care everyone good night good night everyone hello everyone good evening welcome to the session please uh, ek bar ek confirmation de dijiye ki aapko audio video clear aa, clear aa rahi hai Okay, so let's just wait for a few more minutes so that more people can join, and then we'll start our today's session. That is basically your PYQ session. And uh, what I personally feel is that PYQs are really very important whenever we start practicing questions for our exam because there are many concepts that get missed when we uh, do PYQs. We are able to cover those concepts. Okay. so in my personal opinion pyqs are really very important let's just wait for few more minutes so that more people can join and then we'll start our class good evening everyone so a brief introduction about myself my name is riya rawal and uh, i have cleared my net and jrf both and i am here on this channel to present uh, to present you my experience and help you so that you can to achieve net and jrf okay so if we talk about november 2020 exam it was a mix 
ठीक है इट वॉज बेसिकली देर वर इजी क्वेश्चन एज वेल देर वर टफ क्वेश्चन एज वेल एंड देर वर मॉडरेट क्वेश्चन एज वेल बट इफ यू हैव नोन दी कंसेप्ट एंड यू नो अगर आपको बहुत अच्छे से ये होता मतलब कंसेप्ट मतलब बेसिकली यू नो वेन वेन एवर वी डू क्वेश्चन इन आर यू जी सी नेट एग्जाम्स ट्राई टू लुक फॉर सम ट्रिक्स इन दी क्वेश्चन इट सेल्फ अभी जब यू विल डू दी क्वेश्चन देर आई विल टेल यू कि वॉट टाइप ऑफ ट्रिक्स आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट टाइप ऑफ थिंग्स यू हैव टू सी बिफोर प्रोसीडिंग ओके एंड ऑलवेज ऑलवेज गो फॉर दी शॉर्टेस्ट अप्रोच डू नॉट गो फॉर दी लॉन्ग अप्रोच वाई सॉल्विंग द क्वेश्चन बिकॉज टाइम बहुत लिमिटेड होता है एंड इट इज जस्ट कि आपको जल्दी जल्दी क्वेश्चन करने होते हैं सो दैट आप सारे के सारे क्वेश्चन अटेम्प्ट कर सको बिकॉज देर इज नो नेगेटिव मार्किंग इन नेट दैट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड मोस्ट यूजफुल थिंग फॉर अर्स कि इसमें कोई नेगेटिव मार्किंग नहीं है सो ट्राई टू डू मोर एंड मोर क्वेश्चन एंड अटेम्प्ट ईच एंड एवरी क्वेश्चन इफ पॉसिबल डू नॉट लीव एनी क्वेश्चन ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट जस्ट प्लीज कुछ कमेंट्स अगर कुछ आप कर दो सो दैट आई आई मे नो दैट स्टूडेंट्स हैव ज्वाइन देन वी विल स्टार्ट अर क्लास ओके and uh, for this pyq consider it as your mock test only theek hai i have uh, i give you a certain amount of time to solve the questions and then agar aapke questions aapko ho jate hain well and good agar nahi ho pate to we will discuss it okay chalo let's start our class uh if it is bit blur sorry for this because iski image hi mili hai mujhe is question ki i was not able to you know type and write it so just cope up with this these type of questions Uh, good evening deepak good evening so the first question for you is from your discrete mathematics and it is of proposition okay so you have to tell which of the following pairs of propositions are not logically equivalent please always whenever you solve the questions whenever you attempt the ugc questions always see whether they are asking not और वेदर दे आर आस्किंग लॉजिकली इक्विवेलेंट बिकॉज इस चीज़ में बहुत स्टूडेंट्स गलती कर जाते हैं दे जस्ट डोंट सी दिस कि यहाँ पे नॉट लिखा हुआ है दे मार्क सम अदर ऑप्शन और आंसर सही होते होते हुए भी गलत हो जाता है सो प्लीज प्लीज डू लुक एट दिस कि वो आपसे क्वेश्चन में वॉट आर दे आस्किंग सो हेयर दे आर आस्किंग विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग पेयर्स ऑफ प्रपोजिशन आर नॉट लॉजिकली इक्विवेलेंट सो दीज आर योर फोर ऑप्शन एंड योर टाइम स्टार्ट नाउ try to solve it with a short approach and uh, do not go for truth table please truth table se question bahut zyada complicate ho jayega bahut zyada lamba ho jayega and you will waste a lot of time in that theek hai so any answers तो एनीवन किसी का आंसर आया प्लीज आंसर इन कमेंट सेक्शन अगर आपका आंसर आ गया है तो अदरवाइज वील डिस्कस इट ओके सो लेट्स सी द करेक्ट आंसर ओके सो द आंसर दैट हैज कम हेयर इज फोर ओके लेट्स सी व्हाट इज द करेक्ट आंसर करेक्ट द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी वेरी गुड वेरी गुड करेक्ट करेक्ट एवरीवन सो 
I think what uh, I don't know what approach you have used, but I think you have all solved each and every question. But see, if you give a look here, uh, you will notice that this part in option one and this part in option four are same, right? This part, this is your first part. If I tell about, if I say this, this part and this part in option one and four are same. So what you have to do basically is just solve this part and then check this one. क्योंकि देर इज स्लाइट पॉसिबिलिटी कि मे बी आपके यही दो पार्ट में गलत हो यहाँ पे आपका एंड दे रखा है और यहाँ पे आपका और दे रखा है सो बेसिकली दिस दिस मस्ट बी द थिंग जो आपकी अलग हो सकती हो ओके सो डू डू आई नीड टू सॉल्व दिस और एवरी वन ऑफ यू हैज डन ओके लेट सॉल्व इट ज्यादा कुछ टाइम ही जा रहा है सो फर्स्ट वी सॉल्व दिस पार्ट पी इम्प्लाइज आर एंड क्यू इम्प्लाइज आर ओके सो एवरी वन ऑफ यू आई होप नोज दिस कि देर इज अ प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ पी इम्प्लाइज क्यू दैट इट इज इक्वल टू पी निगेशन और क्यू करेक्ट सो वेन आई सॉल्व दिस आई गेट निगेशन पी और आर एंड निगेशन क्यू और आर करेक्ट नाउ आई ओपन दिस ब्रैकेट एंड वॉट इट विल बिकम निगेशन पी एंड निगेशन क्यू ठीक है देन इट विल बी और Negation P and R, then it will be or. Negation Q and R, then it will be or R. R and R will give me R only. Okay. So when I'll solve it, just uh, wait a minute, please. Okay. So when I will solve this part, it will become negation. The result that I'll obtain is negation P negation Q plus R. You, uh, I hope you all know कि अगर आपका ऐसे साइन है और है तो it will be uh, called as plus and अगर ऐसे है and है तो it will turn into multiplication. Okay? So what I have done here is I have basically removed this and sign and I have just put a dot here to just tell to just uh, make it easy for me. ठीक है? Now I have to check whether this part and this part. अब देखो यहाँ पे and है आपका, right? यहाँ पे or है, ठीक है? But if you will notice something तो यहाँ पे आपकी स्वीट ओके सो पी इम्प्लाइज आर एंड क्यू इम्प्लाइज आर सो वेन आई विल ओपन आई विल सॉल्व इट आई गेट पी बार पी निगेशन एंड और आर सो आई विल राइट इट इन प्लस एंड क्यू निगेशन और दैट इज योर प्लस आर ठीक है सो पी बार क्यू बार दैट देन इट विल बी प्लस पी बार आर प्लस क्यू बार आर प्लस आर सो इफ यू विल सी दिस पार्ट इसमें आप अगर आर कॉमन ले लोगे राइट सो वॉट इट विल बिकम इट विल बिकम इट विल बिकम योर सिंपल आर राइट सो ये आपका आया पी बार क्यू बार प्लस आर अब आप अगर इस वाले पार्ट को देखो यहाँ पे दिख लिया हुआ है P और Q implies R ठीक है सो वेन यू विल रिमूव दिस इम्प्लीकेशन ये आपका हो जाएगा P और Q होल बार प्लस और और R ठीक है सो जब आप डी मॉर्गन स्लॉ यू मस्ट है डी मॉर्गन स्लॉ जब आप डी मॉर्गन स्लॉ यहाँ पे अप्लाई करोगे तो ये जाएगा P बार Q बार ये आपका और जो है एंड में कन्वर्ट हो जाएगा प्लस आर सो ये और ये आपस में इक्वल हो गए ओके मतलब ये इक्विलेंट है नाउ वी सॉल्व फॉर दिस पार्ट पी एंड क्यू इम्प्लाइज आर सिमिलरली आप यहाँ पे भी इसको डी यहाँ पे आपका जब फॉर्मूला लगाओगे यहाँ पे सो ये ऐसे हो जाएगा फिर आप डी मॉर्गन स्लॉ लगाओगे तो इट विल बी पी बार प्लस क्यू बार प्लस आर सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन फोर दैट इज दे बोथ आर नॉट इक्वीवेलेंट सो हाउ डिड आई मिनिमाइज इट आई जस्ट सो कि ओके ये वाला पार्ट एंड ये वाला पार्ट दोनों ऑप्शंस में दिया सिमिलर सो वॉट आई डेट वॉज आई जस्ट सिंपली सॉल्व दिस वन एंड दीज टू पार्ट एंड आई गॉट माई आंसर सो ऑलवेज ट्राई टू सॉल्व लाइक दिस बिकॉज अगर आप ऐसे चारों पार्ट को सॉल्व करोगे फिर टेक अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम ठीक है नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर टू कंसीडर अ मशीन विद बाइट एड्रेसेबल मेन मेमोरी ऑफ टू रेस टू पार्ट सिक्सटीन बाइट दिस इज योर मेन मेमोरी एंड ब्लॉक साइज ऑफ एट बाइट्स 
assume that a direct map cache consisting of 32 lines used with this machine how many bits will be there in tag line and word field of format of main memory address okay so solve this part and your time starts now Okay, so Deepak is saying option A. Okay, so let's check what is the correct answer. Correct. Option A is the correct answer 8, 5 and 3. Now, how to solve these type of questions? See, here you have to ask direct map. You must have studied in computer architecture. You know, caching techniques are your direct mapping. Then there is set associative mapping. Then you have associative mapping. So, what you have to do here is, यहाँ पे आपको पता होता है कि there is the main memory the main memory is basically divided into three blocks one is your tag then other is your line and then other is your word so basically you have to calculate all this there are various formulas but in this question if you will see to it they have given you directly everything what they are saying is consider a machine with a byte addressable main memory आपको ये दे रखा है that main memory is of how many bytes? 2 raised to power 16 bytes. So if I have 2 raised to power 16, it will become, it is, it means it is equal to 16 bits, right? So I can say that my main memory is basically divided into 16 bits and these tag, line and word will combine together to form 16 bits. Ek, pehli cheez aapko ye pata lag hai. So when you will add all these options, jo bhi 16 nahi hai, wo aapka cancel out ho jayega. But in this question, every every option I think adds up to 16. So this is no part. Okay. Now block size, block size, or you can say word size. They both means the same thing. Block size, ya fir word size, ya fir block offset. They all means the same thing. Yahan pe aapko kitna de rakha hai block size? They have mentioned that block size is of eight bytes. Now tell me if something is of eight bytes, what it may, what it is in bits? It will become 2 raised to power 3, right? So it means how many bits are required for word offset? 3 bits are required for word offset. Now I know from my option I can say ki jo third, op third part hai na, wo 3 hona chahiye because I have calculated it. So I will rule out this B and I will rule out this C. Ab I have left options like A and D. Now ab line. See they have clearly mentioned here 32 lines. They have clearly given everything and it was the easiest questions you can have for this part, from this portion. But the thing was that twist kar gaya. They have given you exactly what they are asking from you. 32 lines. What is in the line? Mein? They, ask, they, tell, they ask from us about the number of lines. So, lines are given to us. Lines are given to us. 32. Now, if you talk about in bits, bits are 32 lines. Hun, kaise likhte ho? 32 को अगर मुझे 2 raised to power में लिखना है तो it will be 2 raised to power 5. So it will become how many bits? 5 bits. So line offset आपका कितना हो गया? 5 bits का. ठीक है? ये हो गया आपका. Now 5. Here it is 5 and here it is 6. तो वैसे तो अब directly मेरा answer हो जाएगा A. But still चलो ये वाला tag भी निकाल लेते हैं. अब मुझे पता है कि ये 16 है total. So 16 और मैंने इसको मान लिया x. x plus 5 plus 3. Okay, so 16 is equal to x plus 8 and it will give me x equal to 8. This means tag key value kitti ho gai, tag key value ho gai 8. So the correct option is 8, 5 and 3. I hope this is clear to all of you. Okay, so now moving on to the next question. 
this was a question that came in exam sorry for uh, if it is like a bit blurred okay so the question is a company has a choice of two languages l1 and l2 to develop a software for their client number of loc loc is basically lines of code so number of loc required to develop an application in l2 is thrice the loc in language l1 okay also software has to be maintained for next 10 years various parameters for two languages are given below to decide which language should be preferred for development so these are the parameters man year needed for development this is for language 1 and this is for language 2 they have given you three different parameters and they are telling you total cost of project include cost of development and maintenance okay so what is the loc for l1 for which cost of developing the software for both languages must be same theek hai so basically wo aapse kya puch rahe hain wo aapse puch rahe hain ki l1 language 1 ki loc kitni hai this is what they are asking try to solve this question and then we'll discuss it प्लीज डू लाइक एंड शेयर दी वीडियो एज वेल सो दैट मोर एंड मोर पीपल कैन ज्वाइन दी वीडियो ठीक है so done everyone kisi ka answer aaya is question ka anyone okay chalo let's see kya answer kya hai the correct answer is answer option 3 That is थ्री थाउजेंड नाउ कैसे आया थ्री थाउजेंड सी बेसिकली अब इस क्वेश्चन में वॉट यू हैव टू वॉट अप्रोच यू हैव टू यूज इज बेसिकली इसमें क्या बोल रहे हैं ना देर इज नो पर्टिकुलर फॉर्मुला फॉर दीज टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दिस इज द बेसिक मैथ्स इफ यू टॉक अबाउट बेसिक मैथ्स है सब कुछ उन्होंने मैंशन कर रखा है लेट सी हाउ यू डू इट ठीक है यहाँ पे वॉट देर सेंग इज की दो लैंग्वेज है आपके पास एल वन एंड एल टू ठीक है सो लेट मुझे कैलकुलेट क्या करना है वॉट आई हैव टू कैलकुलेट इज आई हैव टू कैलकुलेट दी एल ओ सी फॉर एल वन ठीक है सो वॉट आई डू लेट एल ओ सी फॉर एल वन बी एक्स ठीक है अब इफ एल ओ सी फॉर एल वन इज एक्स देन एल ओ सी फॉर एल टू कितनी हो जाएगी एल ओ सी फॉर एल टू इट इज गिवेन एस कि इट इज थ्राइज दी एल ओ सी इन लैंग्वेज एल वन सो इट विल बिकम थ्री टाइम्स ऑफ एक्स करेक्ट ठीक है ये चीज आपकी हो गई अब उन्होंने बोला है टोटल कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट इंक्लूड कॉस्ट ऑफ डेवलपमेंट मतलब आपकी डेवलपमेंट कॉस्ट एंड द मेंटेनेंस मतलब आपकी कॉस्ट ऑफ मेंटेनेंस पर ईयर पर ईयर ठीक है एंड देर आस्किंग यू व्हाट इज द एलओसी फॉर एल वन फॉर विच द बोथ लैंग्वेजेस मस्ट बी सेम मस्ट बी सेम मतलब इक्वल है ठीक है सो वॉट विल यू डू इज देखो यहाँ पे आपको दे रखा है मैन ईयर नीडेड फॉर डेवलपमेंट अब आपको कितना कितने लोग की जरूरत है डेवलपमेंट के लिए एल ओ सी बाई वन थाउजेंड इफ आई टॉक अबाउट एल वन सो वॉट इज सेम सेम है मतलब एल वन इक्वल टू एल टू की हमें निकालनी है कि जो कॉस्ट ऑफ डेवलपिंग है सॉफ्टवेयर की वो सेम हो जाए ठीक है सो इट मीन्स एल वन डेवलपिंग कॉस्ट ऑफ एल वन इज इक्वल टू एल टू ठीक है क्या एल ओ सी क्या एल वन की एल ओ सी की वैल्यू होगी दोनों सेम हो जाए अब L1 वन एल ओ सी अपॉन वन थाउजेंड सो एल ओ सी हमने क्या लिया एल वन का एक्स सो एक्स अपॉन वन थाउजेंड 
और ये क्या है आपका मैन ईयर नीडेड फॉर डेवलपमेंट सो नीडेड फॉर डेवलपमेंट मीन्स आपको इसमें डेवलपमेंट कॉस्ट की मल्टीप्लीकेशन करनी पड़ेगी तभी आपको ओवरऑल पूरा डेवलपमेंट कॉस्ट मिल पाएगा कि कितनी एल है कितनी आपने एल पे कितने मैन ईयर लगे हैं और टोटल डेवलपमेंट कॉस्ट क्या है आपकी ठीक है प्लस ये अभी L1 के लिए सॉल्व हो रहा है ठीक है प्लस कॉस्ट ऑफ मेंटेनेंस पर ईयर पर ईयर मतलब एक साल की आपकी कॉस्ट ऑफ मेंटेनेंस है वन लाख रुपीज और आपका सॉफ्टवेयर कब तक मेंटेन होना है फॉर द नेक्स्ट टेन ईयर्स तो टोटल मेंटेनेंस कॉस्ट कितनी हो जाएगी टेन इंटू वन लाख दिस इज वॉट आई एम टॉकिंग दिस इज आई एम टॉकिंग फॉर एल और ये किसके इक्वल हो जाएगा ये इक्वल हो जाएगा आपका एल के L2 में भी सेम अप्रोच लगेगी L2 में क्या है LOC by 1000. LOC बाई वन थाउजेंड एल ओ सी आपकी कितनी है एल ओ सी है थ्री एक्स यहाँ पे हमने मैंशन किया है यहाँ पे सो एल ओ सी हो गई थ्री एक्स अपॉन वन थाउजेंड इन टू डेवलपमेंट कॉस्ट कितनी है आपकी नाइनटी थाउजेंड इन केस ऑफ एल टू प्लस सेम जो सॉफ्टवेयर है वो टेन ईयर्स के लिए मेनटेन होना है और मेंटेनेंस कॉस्ट कितनी है आपकी एल टू के केस में फोर्टी थाउजेंड आई होप ये आपको विजिबल नहीं होगा ना इधर बट मतलब समझ में आ गया ना ये सो अब आपको क्या करना है यू हैव टू सॉल्व फॉर एक्स बस आपको एक्स ही तो पूछ रहे हैं वो दे आर आस्किंग यू व्हाट इज दी एल ओ सी फॉर एल वन एल वन हमने क्या लेट किया है लेट एल ओ सी फॉर एल वन बी एक्स तो दे आर आस्किंग यू एक्स अब आपके पास इक्वेशन है दिस कैलकुलेट फॉर एक्स एंड आपकी एक्स जो आएगी वो आएगी थ्री आई होप ये आपको एक्सप्लेनेशन क्लियर हो गई है इसमें कुछ भी फॉर्मूला नहीं था बेसिकली इट वॉज जस्ट कि आपको उन्होंने पूरा एज इट इज मैंशन कर रखा था कि क्या चाहिए क्या करना है एंड दे वो जस्ट होपिंग फ्रॉम यू कि आप इसको आप इस क्वेश्चन में ऐसे अप्लाई कर दो ठीक है सो दिस इज योर क्वेश्चन दैट वॉज फ्रॉम सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन ऐसे क्वेश्चन बहुत आपसे पूछे जाने लगे हैं 2019 में भी ऐसा क्वेश्चन आया था एंड 2020 में भी ये क्वेश्चन आया है सो इट इज बेटर कि आप इसको अच्छे से आपको सारे इंस्ट्रक्शंस पता हो कि व्हाट आर दे ट्राइंग टू से ठीक है सो द फॉलोइंग प्रोग्राम इज स्टोर्ड इन मेमोरी यूनिट ऑफ द बेसिक कंप्यूटर व्हाट इज द कंटेंट ऑफ एक्यूमुलेटर एक्यूमुलेटर का कंटेंट पूछ रहे हैं आपसे जब पूरा प्रोग्राम एग्जीक्यूट हो जाएगा एंड ऑल दी लोकेशन नंबर लिस्टेड बिलो आर इन हेक्सा डेसिमल ठीक है टू ट्राई टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन So anybody किसी का हुआ Please answer in comment. Anyone? Okay. So what will be the correct answer? The correct answer is option number D. जीरो टू वन फाइव इन हेक्सा डेसिमल नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस इट की क्या है ये चीज सी वॉट इज दिस ऑपरेट दिस इज इंस्ट्रक्शन इट से इज सी एल ए मीन्स क्लियर एक्यूमुलेटर ओके नो प्रॉब्लम दीपक आई होप आपको समझ में आ रहे होंगे क्वेश्चन uh, जो भी मैं अभी करा रही हूं अगर नहीं भी किया तो नो प्रॉब्लम ठीक है आप इन इन चीजों को समझ लो सो so दैट आगे आप जब क्वेश्चन प्रैक्टिस करो या जब आप पढ़ो तो आपको अच्छे से क्वेश्चंस आ जाएं ठीक है सो सी एल ए सी एल ए बेसिकली मीन्स क्लियर दी एक्यूमुलेटर वाई इट इज सेट सो बिकॉज आप हो सकता है कि पुराना आपने जो भी ऑपरेशन परफॉर्म किया है मे बी 
एक्यूमुलेटर में कुछ वैल्यू स्टोर हो सो यू नीड टू रिमूव इट सो दैट आप इस uh, इस ऑपरेशन को परफॉर्म कर सको इन वैल्यूज के साथ सो क्लियर एक्यूमुलेटर फिर आप आए लोकेशन 211 पे उस पर क्या इंस्ट्रक्शन है आपका एड टू वन सेवन नाउ वेन एवर दे आर सेंग एड टू वन सेवन इसका मतलब ये होता है कि एड टू वन सेवन टू वन सेवन लोकेशन पे जो वैल्यू है ठीक है बिकॉज आप देखो टू वन सेवन पे जाओ अब आप टू वन सेवन पे आप देखो एक वैल्यू स्टोर्ड है जो हेक्सा डेसिमल में है ठीक है सो इट मीन्स एड द वैल्यू स्टोर्ड एट टू वन सेवन टू ए ए मीन्स एक्यूमुलेटर अब सपोज अगर ये है मेरा ए ठीक है और टू वन सेवन जो एड्रेस है उस पर जो मेरी वैल्यू स्टोर है वो है वन टू थ्री एंड फोर सो वॉट इट मीन्स इज एड टू वन सेवन टू ए अब आपका जो एक्यूमुलेटर है उसमें तो कुछ भी नहीं था इट वॉज क्लियर सो नाउ वॉट इट इट मीन्स इज कि आप वन टू थ्री फोर जो है जो टू वन सेवन पे था उसको आप एड कर दो ए पे ठीक है ओके डन नाउ अब आप आए आ गए टू हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व लोकेशन पे टू हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व इज सेम इंक्रीमेंट आई एन सी मीन्स इंक्रीमेंट इंक्रीमेंट का मतलब होता है प्लस वन अगर कुछ नहीं दे रखा है तो इट मीन्स इंक्रीमेंट बाय एडिंग वन तो ये अगर आपको कोई एड्रेस मेंशन नहीं किया हुआ है तो इट मीन्स प्लस वन टू एक्यूमुलेटर अगर कोई पर्टिकुलर एड्रेस नहीं मैंशन किया तो इट ऑलवेज मीन्स कि जो भी ऑपरेशन हो रहा है जो भी इंस्ट्रक्शन जो भी परफॉर्म कर रहा है वो एक्यूमुलेटर पे कर रहा है ठीक है सो नाउ वॉट इट विल डू इज इट विल एड वन टू योर एक्यूमुलेटर अब आपके एक्यूमुलेटर की वैल्यू क्या हो गई वन टू थ्री एंड फाइव ओके नाउ वॉट दू हंड्रेड आपका टू हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व का ऑपरेशन हो गया नाउ कम टू द नेक्स्ट लोकेशन दैट इज टू हंड्रेड थर्टीन इट इज सेम एस टी ए एस टी ए का मतलब होता है स्टोर स्टोर एक्यूमुलेटर टू टू वन सेवन सो बेसिकली वॉट इट इज सेंग इज कि ए पे जो वैल्यू है ए में जो वैल्यू है उसको टू वन सेवन में स्टोर कर दो सो बेसिकली वॉट इट मीन्स पहले हम यहाँ से यहाँ लेके आए थे वैल्यू फिर हमने उसमें एक इंक्रीमेंट परफॉर्म किया एंड देन नाउ वी आर सेंडिंग दिस वैल्यू बैक है सो टू वन सेवन की फाइनल वैल्यू हो गई वन टू थ्री एंड फाइव और अब आपके एक्यूमुलेटर जो है वो जीरो हो गया ठीक है नाउ वी कम टू द नेक्स्ट लोके नेक्स्ट ऑपरेशन नेक्स्ट एड्रेस वॉट इट इज सेंग इट इज सेंग लोड ए एल डी का मतलब होता है लोड और ए मतलब एक्यूमुलेटर सो लोड इन टू ए द कंटेंट्स ऑफ टू हंड्रेड एटीन आप देखो टू हंड्रेड एटीन पे यहाँ पे भी एक एड्रेस आपको एक वैल्यू दे रखी है दैट इज नाइन सी ई टू सो अब आप यहाँ पे आओ बेसिकली ये आपका टू हंड्रेड एटीन है यहाँ पे मेमोरी लोकेशन यहाँ पे वॉट दे हैव स्टोर दे हैव स्टोर हेयर नाइन सी ई टू So now what you have to do? You have to store this 9CE2 in your accumulator. So अब आपके accumulator की value क्या हो जाएगी? Now the value of accumulator becomes 9CE2. Okay, clear? Now the next operation says CMA. CMA मतलब होता है complement. Complement accumulator. ठीक है? Complement accumulator. Now, just tell me, ये जो आपकी लोकेशन है ये आपकी हेक्सा डेसिमल में है ठीक है सो अगर यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट दी कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑब्वियसली वो आपके हेक्सा डेसिमल से कॉम्प्लीमेंट आएगा द हाउ टू कैलकुलेट दी कॉम्प्लीमेंट जो भी आपकी हेक्सा डेसिमल अगर हेक्सा डेसिमल है सो सब्ट्रैक्ट दी गिवन नंबर फ्रॉम एफ 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 मीन्स दैट इज योर फाइनल अगर आप हेक्सा डेसिमल की बात करते हो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट हेक्सा डेसिमल तो उसमें जो डिजिट्स होती है वो होती है जीरो टू एफ राइट एफ बीइंग द फाइनल वैल्यू सो यू विल सब्ट्रैक्ट दिस नंबर दैट इज एन एक्यूमुलेटर सी एम ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट दी एक्यूमुलेटर मतलब कॉम्प्लीमेंट दी कंटेंट ऑफ एक्यूमुलेटर सो एक्यूमुलेटर में है आपका नाइन सी ई एंड टू सो वेन यू विल सब्ट्रैक्ट इट वॉट यू विल गेट एफ आपका क्या होता है एफ होता है फिफ्टीन सो वेन यू सब्ट्रैक्ट फिफ्टीन वेन यू सब्ट्रैक्ट टू फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन यू विल गेट डी दैट इज थर्टीन Here you will get वन here you will get थ्री and here you will get सिक्स So अब आपका जो accumulator की जो value हुई complement करने के बाद वो हो जाएगी सिक्स थ्री वन डी ओके अब आपका आया टू हंड्रेड सिक्सटीन आपका ये ऑपरेशन परफॉर्म हो गया अब आप आए टू हंड्रेड सिक्सटीन पे टू हंड्रेड सिक्सटीन लोकेशन क्या कह रही है एंड एंड टू वन सेवन मतलब जो भी आपके एक्यूमुलेटर की वैल्यू है 
उसके सम जो आपने 217 पे स्टोर किया है 217 की फाइनल वैल्यू क्या है वन टू थ्री फाइव इसका और इसका एंड परफॉर्म करो ठीक है सो सिक्स थ्री वन डी नाउ वट इज सिक्स सिक्स आप अगर वैसे करो आप अपने उसमें तो आपका आएगा सिक्स विल बी एट फोर टू एंड वन ठीक है ये आपका हुआ सिक्स इफ आई टॉक अबाउट सिक्स थ्री वन डी सो फिर थ्री हुआ एट फोर टू वन देन वन हुआ एट फोर टू वन एंड डी हुआ आपका डी होता है आपका टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन थर्टीन होता है ना डी सो इट विल बी एट फोर टू वन करेक्ट सो ये आपका हो गया सिक्स थ्री वन डी और अब आपको एंड किस किसम परफॉर्म करना है एंड यू हैव टू परफॉर्म विद दू हंड्रेड एंड सेवनटीन इट इज रिटर्न हेयर एंड टू हंड्रेड सेवनटीन सो अगर आपको मतलब बेसिकली जो ऑपरेशन परफॉर्म करना है वो आपको करना है एक्यूमुलेटर के साथ ही ठीक है सो अब आपका वन टू थ्री फाइव है सो वन विल बिकम दिस देन टू विल बिकम दिस देन थ्री विल बिकम दिस एंड फाइव विल बिकम दिस सो अब आप इसका एंड परफॉर्म करो सो एंड में हमने क्या पढ़ा था एंड में हमने पढ़ा था कि अगर हम वन और वन के बीच में एंड परफॉर्म करते हैं तभी हमें रिजल्ट वन मिलता है अदरवाइज हमें जीरो मिलेगा आंसर ठीक है सो नाउ हेयर ये चारों जीरो हो गए देन इट विल बी जीरो जीरो वन जीरो देन इट विल बी जीरो 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 वन एंड इट विल बी जीरो वन जीरो वन सो वेन यू विल राइट इट इन डेसिमल इट विल बी जीरो वन जीरो टू सॉरी जीरो टू वन एंड फाइव सो जीरो टू वन फाइव इन हेक्सा डेसिमल दैट इज रियल आंसर डी ओके ये वाली चीज क्लियर हो गई कि वॉट ऑल दीज ऑपरेशन मीन की वॉट वॉट ऑल डू ए मीन एंड हाउ यू हैव टू सॉल्व दी क्वेश्चन वेन इसका एक क्वेश्चन येस ओके गुड वेरी गुड अब इसका एक क्वेश्चन ना आपको 2019 में ही सेम क्वेश्चन मिलेगा सो आफ्टर दिस क्लास यू ट्राई टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन ओके सो वेन वी विल डिस्कस टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन पेपर सो आपको तब आता होगा ये क्वेश्चन ओके नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज योर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम डी बी एम एस ट्राई टू सॉल्व दिस इज अ वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन इट इज बेसिकली सेम की कंसिडर अ रिलेशनल स्कीमा एस यू वी डब्ल्यू एक्स वाई जेड ऑन विच दी फॉलोइंग फंक्शन डिपेंडेंसीज होल्ड दीज आर दी फंक्शन डिपेंडेंसीज गिवेन टू यू एंड देर आस्किंग यू वट आर दी कैंडिडेट कीज अमंग दी फॉलोइंग ऑप्शन ओके दिस इज अ वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट and give your answer in the comment section जो भी आपका आंसर है फिर वील सी वेदर इट इज राइट और नॉट ओके डी दीपक इज सेंग डी ओके सो लेट सी द करेक्ट आंसर द करेक्ट आंसर इज डी करेक्ट सो बेसिकली वॉट इज इट यू हैव दी सर्टेन डिपेंडेंसीज यू टू वी देन वी हैव वी डब्ल्यू दैट विल डिटरमाइन एक्स देन वी हैव वाई दैट विल डिटरमाइन डब्ल्यू एंड देन वी हैव एक्स दैट विल डिटरमाइन यू okay now what is the what the main thing that you have to see is see in your s they have given you u v w x y and z so before starting before starting and finding the closure and your functional dependency the candidate key what you have to do is see this right hand side okay just see for this right hand side and jo bhi aapke alphabet ya jo bhi aapke jo aapke आपके एट्रीब्यूट हैं वट एवर एट्रीब्यूट इज नॉट फ्रॉम फ्रॉम दिस गिवेन सेट जो भी एट्रीब्यूट मिसिंग है इस गिवेन सेट से वो आपका डेफिनेट पार्ट होगा कैंडिडेट की का ठीक है वट एवर एट्रीब्यूट दैट आर मिसिंग फ्रॉम दिस 
given set in these given functional dependencies those attributes will definitely become a part of your candidate key so now if i see i have v okay i have x okay i have w okay i have u correct i don't have y and z theek hai so since i don't have y and z iska matlab kya hua whenever we find the closure see if i talk about u closure theek hai u ka closure if i calculate it will be u and then from u i am able to determine v theek hai but since agar aapka yahan pe y or z mention hi nahi hai iska matlab you will never be able to determine y and z from these given dependencies that's why you have to add y and z in your candidate key so itna mujhe pata lag gaya ki y and z will definitely be a part of my candidate key now i will rule out all those options jisme y and z nahi hai so isme nahi hai isme y hai but z nahi hai i need both so y and z isme nahi hai y and z isme nahi hai isme dekho y z hai y z hai but isme yahan pe w z aa gaya so it will also be ruled out theek hai so simply mera answer ho gaya d but obviously we should follow we should solve it so we should we will try for yz only so if i solve yz what i get pehle to yz hi aa jayega theek hai fir uske baad y jo hai can determine kar raha hai w okay correct aur aur kuch option bach raha hai no so iska matlab yz alone will not be your uh, candidate key then you will check for u y z jab aap u y z ko calculate karoge so u y and z u se aap can determine kar pa rahe ho v ठीक है और फिर y से आप डिटरमाइन कर पा रहे हो w अब v और w से आप डिटरमाइन कर पा रहे हो x सो so, u y z इज योर वन ऑफ द कैंडिडेट की फिर आपका आया v y z ठीक है फिर ये हुआ v y z ये आपके तीन तो होंगे आपके कैंडिडेट की का पार्ट नाउ आपके v आपके y से हो गया w देन v एंड w विल गिव यू x एंड x आपको दे देगा u ठीक है फिर वी वाई जेड भी हो गया एंड देन वी विल कैलकुलेट फॉर एक्स वाई एंड जेड सो वेन आई कैलकुलेट फॉर एक्स वाई जेड इट विल गिव मी यू देन इट विल गिव मी वी एंड इट विल देन गिव मी डब्ल्यू वाई से डब्ल्यू सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज ऑप्शन नंबर डी ओके क्लियर एवरी वन नाउ दिस इज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द नंबर ऑफ पॉजिटिव इंटीजर्स not exceeding 100 that are either odd or square of an integer is okay try and solve this question Done. Anybody is having the answer? Fifty-five. Okay, so let's see whether it is right or not. Correct. The correct answer is fifty-five. Now, how you have solved this question is basically, if you remember that in discrete mathematics we have studied this property. that if i have to calculate a union b that is a or b so what it will be number of a plus number of b minus a intersection b so in the given case if i talk about the given question a is my odd numbers right b is the square of an integer theek hai so now the limit that is given to me is 100 that is i have 100 integers now we all know ki in 100 integers 
half numbers are even 50 are even and half are odd 50 are odd so n of a n of a will become what n of a will become 50 correct now what i have to do square now i see what are these squares in 1 to 100 so first is your 1 then you have 4 then you have 9 then you have 16 then you have 25 then you have 36 then you have 49 then you have 64 then you have 81 and then you have 100 itself so kitne hoye aapke paas agar main n of b ki baat karu that is the square they are 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 correct to ye ho gaya aapke 10 theek hai ab what is a intersection b a intersection b means कि वो स्क्वायर के नंबर्स जो ऑड भी हैं, ठीक है? दोस नंबर्स डेट आर स्क्वायर एंड ऑड। ये जो आपका इंटरसेक्शन होता है, ये क्या डिनोट करता है? ये डिनोट करता है एंड और यूनियन आपका करता है और, ठीक है? सो एंड क्या हुआ? ए एंड बी में वन आपका ऑड है, नाइन आपका ऑड है, ट्वेंटी फाइव आपका � तो जब आप इसको यहाँ इंप्लीमेंट करोगे, so n a union b आपको क्या देगा? n of a, n of a कितना है? n of a है आपका 50, 50 plus b that is number of squares integer. Square कितने हैं आपके? 10 minus 5, so it will give you 55. Okay, so the correct answer is 55. Okay, clear? Now the next question. This is your question from pipeline. So it is very easy question. इसको ज़्यादा complicated तरीके से मत करना. जो इसपे पूछा गया है, just simply implement that. Okay? So they are they have given you a non pipeline system, जो आपको एक process को करने में ले रहा है 50 nanoseconds. ठीक है? अगर मैं same process, the same task can be processed in six segment pipeline. Six segment की pipeline है. Six segment pipeline with a clock cycle of 10 nanoseconds. So determine approximately the speed up ratio of the pipeline for 500 task. Okay, so your time starts now. Please try and solve it. So anyone scans raya? So the correct answer for this question is 4.95. Now for this question solve करने के लिए इस question को solve करने के लिए आपको तीन चीजें पता होनी चाहिए, ठीक है? First of all speed up का formula. Speed up का formula होता है time taken by non pipeline divided by time taken to execute the instructions by pipeline okay always remember non pipeline upon pipeline okay up what you have to do now up you have to know what you have to know this is the thing time taken by non pipeline Time taken by non-pipeline होता है number of instructions या number of tasks into the time taken by one task और time taken to process one task ठीक है that is T N P से note कर देते हैं हम इसको divided by time taken by pipeline का formula क्या होता है it is K plus N minus one into T P now what is K K हो गया आपका number of stages ओके 
एन हो गया आपका नंबर ऑफ टास्क और नंबर ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन ठीक है और टी एन पी हो गया टाइम टेकन टू प्रोसेस वन टास्क एंड नॉन पाइप लाइन एंड टी पी हो गया टाइम टेकन टू प्रोसेस दास्क इन पाइप लाइन ठीक है नाउ वॉट यू हैव टू डू जस्ट सिंपली पुट दी वैल्यूज एंड इन केस ऑफ नॉन पाइप लाइन आपका सेम है दोनों के केस में आपको फाइव हंड्रेड टास्क ही है ठीक है एन आपका दोनों केसेस में फाइव हंड्रेड ही है सो इट विल बी फाइव हंड्रेड इन टू टी एन पी दैट इज योर फिफ्टी नैनो सेकेंड्स एंड यहाँ पे और यहाँ पे आपकी जो यूनिट है वो सेम है सो देर इज नो नीड टू चेंज इट और डू एनी थिंग रिलेटेड टू इट ठीक है अब यहाँ पे बताओ के कितना है आपका के है यहाँ पे सिक्स के क्योंकि यहाँ पे दे रखा है सिक्स सेगमेंट पाइप लाइन सो के हो गया आपका सिक्स प्लस एन आपका कितना था एन है आपका फाइव हंड्रेड माइनस वन इन टू टी पी टी पी मतलब टाइम टेकन बाय पाइप लाइन सो पाइप लाइन कितना टाइम ले रही है टेन नैनो सेकेंड का ठीक है सो वेन यू विल सॉल्व दिस वॉट यू विल गेट इज यू विल गेट फोर पॉइंट नाइन फाइव एज योर आंसर ओके सो द आंसर फॉर स्पीड अप इज फोर पॉइंट नाइन नाइन फाइव सिंपल फॉर्मूला जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस दिस फॉर्मूला दैट इज योर स्पीड अप वन एंड दिस वन की टाइम टेकन बाई नॉन पाइप लाइन है तो क्या फॉर्मूला लेके सॉल्व करना है और टाइम टेकन बाई पाइप लाइन है तो क्या फॉर्मूला लेके सॉल्व करना है आपका हो जाएगा ठीक है क्लियर ओके सो नाउ लेट्स मूव टू दी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन जो आपका है ये एच टी एम एल से क्वेश्चन था बेसिकली ठीक है ये आपका एच टी एम एल आपका मैंशन है सिलेबस में बट इतना कुछ वो नहीं ये बहुत बेसिक क्वेश्चन है कि इन एच टी एम एल मैप टैग एक टैग होता है मैप का डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टैग होते हैं ना एच टी एम एल में लाइक योर बॉडी टैग इज देयर देन योर हेडिंग टैग इज देयर राइट ये डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टैग होते हैं ऐसे टैग होता है मैप सो एच टी एम एल में जो मैप टैग होता है वो किस लिए यूज होता है ठीक है सो योर टाइम स्टार्ट नाउ प्लीज इसका जल्दी आंसर आ जाना चाहिए सबका प्लीज डू आंसर इन कॉमेंट सेक्शन एवरी वन दोज हुआ प्रेजेंट प्लीज आंसर इन कॉमेंट सेक्शन any guesses what should be the correct answer according to you what what do you think is the correct answer please do answer students but otherwise class bahut boring ho jayegi fir Just try to be try to make it an interactive session okay Anyone? Any answers? Well, the correct answer for this question is defining clickable region in an image. ठीक है, there is a tag that is known as area, and उस tag में we have this map. ठीक है, so map what it does is it define कि आपका जो image है, उसमें clickable region कौन सा होगा, okay? So map defines the clickable region in an image. ठीक है देन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इट इज फ्रॉम योर ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इट इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड ये बहुत इजी भी है इसमें आपको पेज फॉल्ट बताने होते हैं ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ थ्री थ्री एलगोरिथम्स वी हैव वन इज फीफो देन वी हैव एल आर यू एंड अदर वन इज ऑप्टिमल ठीक है सो लाओ लेट्स सो द टाइम स्टार्ट नाउ फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन एंड प्लीज ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट एंड ट्राई टू गिव द आंसर इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन ओके So this is a hypothetical machine with three pages and five pages of virtual memory, and this is the sequence that has been given to you. That in sequence, me pages are entering the system, and if P and Q are the number of page faults, so P is for your FIFO, and Q is for your LRU. Okay, so you have to P and Q. You have to tell me that how many FIFO page faults are there, and एल आर यू से कितने पेज फॉल्ट आ रहे हैं और तीन पेज फ्रेम्स हैं थ्री पेज फ्रेम्स नथिंग एल्स विल मैटर हेयर जस्ट रिमेंबर 
कि ये जो इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको दे रखी है थ्री पेजेस ऑफ फिजिकल मेमोरी फाइव पेजेस ऑफ वर्चुअल मेमोरी दिस इज नॉट यूजफुल एट ऑल द ओनली थिंग दैट इज यूजफुल इज ये आपका गिवन सीक्वेंस क्या है कौन सी एल्गोरथम यूज करनी है और कितने पेज फ्रेम्स हैं इसके बेस पे प्लीज क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करके आंसर बताओ किसका क्या आ रहा है डू आंसर स्टूडेंट प्लीज गिव आंसर एनी वन हुआ किसी का सॉल्व किसका आया आंसर प्लीज प्लीज आंसर इन कॉमेंट सेक्शन Shall we discuss it? हो गया आप लोगों का Is it D? Not sure. Okay, okay, okay. Poonam is saying A. सो लेट सी की करेक्ट आंसर क्या है दीपक इज सेंग बी ओके चलो लेट सी की करेक्ट आंसर क्या है करेक्ट आंसर है डी ओके सो नाउ लेट सी की आपने क्या किया एंड हाउ केम दी हाउ कम दी आंसर वॉज रॉन्ग सो आपके जो सीक्वेंस है लेट्स राइट इट हेयर ए बी सी डी ए बी ई ए बी C, D, E, B, A and B. Okay. So first let's solve for your P. That is your FIFO. FIFO में you know what is FIFO? FIFO is basically first in, first out. मतलब जो पहले आया है वो पहले जाएगा. ठीक है? And we have three page frames. So means मेरे पास three options, three page frames हैं. One, two and ये आपका third page frame. Okay. Now A is my first Page to enter. तो मैंने A को I'll write it here. Correct? Then B. Okay, B here. Then C. You can write either A B C. ऐसे लिख लो A B C और A B C. I prefer writing from downwards because it means कि A पहले आया, B बाद में है, C C उसके बाद में है. ठीक है? So ये आपके page faults होंगे क्योंकि इन तीनों ये तीनों हमारे पास memory में नहीं थे and we have to add them. So ये तीन आपके page faults हो गए. Now come D. अब आप मुझे बताओ, if I if I am talking about FIFO, so obviously I will replace D by A, because A आपका सबसे पहले आया था. First in first out में जो सबसे पहले आया वो सबसे पहले जाएगा. So D is your another page fault. Then we have A. अब A के बाद क्या आया था? B आया था. So I'll cancel it out and I'll replace it with A. So this is another page fault. अब आपका आया B. B आपके इन पेज फ्रेम्स में नहीं है आपके पेज फ्रेम्स में क्या है C A एंड D सो B नहीं है सो अगेन C से आपका रिप्लेस हो जाएगा B अनदर पेज फॉल्ट E अब आप बताओ आपके पास जो प्रेजेंट में आपके पास D A और B हैं ठीक है सबसे पहले इन तीनों में सबसे पहले आया था D सो E जो है आपका वो रिप्लेस कर देगा D को अनदर पेज फॉल्ट ठीक है A A आपका ऑलरेडी इस पे प्रेजेंट है नो पेज फॉल्ट B आपका already present है no page fault अब C अब मुझे बताओ E A B में से सबसे पहले कौन जाएगा anyone A जाएगा आपका ठीक है सो यहाँ पे आपका चला गया A, सो ये आपका हो गया एक पेज फॉल्ट करेक्ट 
से आपका आया डी अब आपका जाएगा बी सो so, यहाँ पे आ गया आपका डी ये अगेन आपका एक पेज फॉल्ट अब ई e जो है आपका उसके केस में पेज फॉल्ट नहीं होगा बिकॉज ई e आपका ऑलरेडी प्रेजेंट है बी है आपका तो बी में बी किस वर्ट आएगा बी हटाएगा ई e को बिकॉज ई e आपका यूज हुआ है बट आया तो सबसे पहले इन तीनों में था सो so बी फिर आपका हुआ ए ए आपका किसको हटाएगा सी को अगेन दिस पेज फॉल्ट एंड ओके ओके अभी ओके फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट आई आई ट्राई टू टीच इट क्लियरली इन इंग्लिश ओके एंड देन बी इज ऑलरेडी प्रेजेंट टू मी सो द नंबर ऑफ पेज फॉल्ट दैट डिफाइन्स पी हेयर इज वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन सो द वैल्यू ऑफ पी इज इलेवन I have P here and Q here, so P is eleven here and eleven here. So B and C options are cancelled now. Okay, now let's try for your LRU. This is this was your FIFO. Now we'll try for LRU. What is LRU basically? LRU is your least recently used. Okay, so now let's check for LRU. That is least recently used. Okay, same. Three page frames we have in LRU. Three page frames will come here. A, B, and मतलब uh, sorry. Three page frames. Okay. Now we start with A. So again A, B, and C. No change. I have I am denoting this uh, LRU with the blue color. Okay. So this is another page fault, page fault, page fault. Okay. Now let's talk about D. D will replace which of the following elements among A, B, C? Which is the least recently used? it is a okay a is the least recently used element so it will be replaced by d so this is another page fault again a which is the least recently used b so it will replace b okay then b it this will b will replace c correct now we have e which one of the following is the least recently used among all these three among all these three the least recently used is your d so it will replace e now a and b are already present now c now tell me c will replace which element among these three e a and b c will replace which element when we were doing fifo c replaced a but in least recently used if we have these three with us we can see here that e is the one that is being used least recently theek okay? hai so c will replace e so it is another page fault okay just remember this this is a difference between fifo and your lru tick so c will replace it then we have d now d will replace which element d will replace your a so d is another page fault e e will replace which element e will replace b another page fault here now b will replace which element b will replace c another page fault A will replace D. Another page fault, and B is already present. So now, if I calculate the number of page faults that is denoted by Q here, it will be equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So the correct answer is D. That is eleven comma twelve. Now a trick that you have, you should know for this is, ठीक है कि अगर आपका FIFO है, so FIFO is simple. That is first in. And first out, clear? No problem here. But if you have L R U, that is least recently used. Okay. So what you have to do is suppose if you have three frames. Okay. If you have three frames and the given sequence is this, 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 this and this. Okay. So what you do is that if you are standing at this page. Okay. If you are looking at this page, so you have three frames with you. Just look back the previous three frames. जो आपकी previous three frames हैं, just look at those and cancel out the one that is present here. In LRU, it will become the least recently used page. Okay, so cancel out this one in LRU. And what another thing that is your optimal. So what is optimal? Optimal में you look for the future ones. ठीक है, least में you look you look for the past pages and in optimal you look for the future pages. This is an important point that this is a trick basically. Ki just to avoid confusion, and I hope ki it will help you to solve questions like this. So for today we will keep it till here only. 
and uh, try to solve the questions that we have uh, discussed till now and from other previous year papers and if you have any problem we will discuss the papers when we when uh, we will solve them so i hope that at that time your problem will be re uh, relieved okay so i'll keep it till here only for today and hope to see you all in your in our next session that will take place tomorrow so please be on time that is at 6 pm and try to uh, you know uh, share the video so that more and more people can join and try to be uh, try to give answers so that it becomes interactive for you as well otherwise the session will become very very boring so please try to be interactive and try to solve the questions and always sit with pen and paper with you so that you can solve the questions okay so that's it for today hope to see you all tomorrow in the class okay thank you everyone thank you hello everyone and good evening and welcome to the class i just hope ki aapko meri audio video sab clear ho clear hogi please ek bar uh, confirmation de dijiye let me just check सो आई होप आपको कल का सेशन अच्छा लगा होगा एंड यू ऑल मस्ट हैव नो सॉल्व दी क्वेश्चन योर सेल्फ लेट्स जस्ट वेट फॉर फ्यू मोर मिनट्स सो दैट और भी लोग ज्वाइन कर लें देन वी स्टार्ट आर टू देशन Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Please uh, just give your confirmation. Uh, just send a hi, hello, so that we know that the students have come, and so that we may start our class. Before starting our class today, I just need a uh, you know a suggestion from all of you. So let's just have few more people so that I can ask. and take your suggestion uh so uh, one thing i just want to ask uh good evening poonam so one thing that i want to ask is that uh, i was thinking to switch this uh, uh, paper uh, p uh, pyqs subject wise instead of uh, going year wise i just wanted to switch it to subject wise so please uh, give me a suggestion if you are okay with this or uh, should i continue uh, year wise only because i think agar prior me if you will uh, prior uh, you know prior you have information ki what next subject we will be starting and what next we will be covering so that it will be uh, good for you so that aap practice kar loge side by side right so please everyone just give me a suggestion what do you prefer subject wise okay and what about others Uh, please give your suggestion so that i may continue in that uh, in that way uh, do you want it to be a subject wise or you want it to be year wise the pyq discussion and if you want it to be you know uh, subject wise then which subject do you prefer uh, if you are live just mention in a chat uh, in chat session and if you if you will see this and those who will see this video later please mention in comment section uh, which subject do you prefer to start with so from tomorrow i'll start subject wise only if everyone prefers subject wise and which subject according to you uh, should i take first should i consider first so that i look up to it and see what what i can uh, consider which subject i can consider any suggestions related uh, subjects 
Okay, everybody suggesting subject wise only. Okay, no problem. We'll go with subject wise from tomorrow. Any subject wise suggestion? Subject? Any subject suggestion? Like we have different different subjects in UGC Net Paper Two. Any suggestion related to it? That which subject you want first to cover up? I was computer architecture. Okay, okay. Anyone uh, is everyone okay with computer architecture or any other subject wise question you want? All topics in CS paper two, TOC. Okay, some people are saying TOC. Some people, okay. All topics in CS paper two. Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. So, I think I'll start with the computer architecture then from tomorrow. Okay. I hope it is okay for all of you that we'll start with computer architecture PYQs, and then we will cover other subjects like uh, I was thinking to start with artificial intelligence, but okay, no problem. I'll start with computer architecture, and then we'll see which next subject we have to cover. So basically, for the PYQs, I'll start. I'll take the five year five years PYQ. Okay, five years PYQ because usse. Uh, Yes, AI. Okay, AI. I'll take next after computer architecture. I'll cover AI. Okay. First, we'll do computer architecture, and hardly two to three days will be uh, will uh, take for this architecture, and then we will start with AI after computer architecture, and then we'll see whether it will be TOC, and then next we'll cover. Okay. Chalo. Okay, done. So from tomorrow we'll have subject wise PYQs, and the first subject that I'll be taking is your computer architecture. ha huh, okay okay networking also matlab all the basic subjects that we have in our ugc net we cover those so computer architecture ai toc then we have networking and then aap uh, batate rehna jo bhi aap log you prefer subjects whatever you want okay so for from tomorrow we we'll start with computer architecture so all uh, okay now yesterday abhi to i have the pdf for that only uh, 2020 so we we'll cover few questions from November twenty twenty only. Okay, so yesterday we have completed all these questions, and I hope कि आपको कोई problem नहीं आई होगी. You must have uh, understood each and every concept, but I was trying to make you understand. Okay, so we have covered all this, uh, and I hope कि आपने खुद भी practice की होगी. Uh, Ma'am, data structure भी. Okay, okay, we. Uh, so i uh, we will cover each and every subject what all is there in our ugc net paper 2 first we'll start with computer architecture and then one by one we'll cover each and every subject that is there in uh, ugc net so that all topics are covered that we have in our paper 2 okay no problem okay so the next question that we have to do is this this is your operating system question Okay, and this is from your disk uh, scheduling. You must have heard this topic. And everyone, please uh, try to do the question and give the answers and make this uh, session a bit interactive. Otherwise, it will become very boring for every one of us. Okay, so try to solve and try to give the answers, and uh, then we'll discuss as uh, as we always discuss. Okay, so the question is: Consider a disk system having sixty cylinders. Disk requests are received by a disk drive for cylinders. These are the cylinders uh, requests that have been made, and in this order they are asking the uh, request. Okay. Now, assuming the disk head is currently at cylinder twenty, the disk head is currently at cylinder twenty. What is the time taken to satisfy all the requests if it takes two milliseconds to move from one cylinder to adjacent one? And shortest seek time first SSTF algorithm is used. You must have heard that uh, in this scheduling we have different different algorithms like we have uh, one is your FC uh, first uh, no uh, first come first serve. Then we have SSTF. Then we have look around. Then we have we have different different types of no uh, scan we have. Then we have C scan. Okay, so we have different types of disk scheduling algorithms. Okay, I have already got the answer. One twenty. Okay, what about others? So you have to apply the shortest seek time first. 
गुड मयंक वेरी गुड बहुत जल्दी आपने आंसर कर दिया वेरी नाइस Try to have this speed only, okay? While doing the questions, because uh, we have to do very, uh, we have to do almost every question because there is no negative marking and time is only limited. It is of three hours, so try to be very fast with your questions, okay? See, okay. Let's see the correct answer. Correct. The correct answer is C. Uh, those who have given the right answers, very good. And those who have not given the right answers, just look here, and we will uh, discuss how we have to do this. See, first of all, just make a timeline like this. Okay. This may uh, start from zero. Start it from zero, and end it will be there. Ki it is a system is having 60 cylinders okay so 60 will come here so now you will see that all the request will lie from 0 to 60 in between 0 to 60 only okay so now the first what you have to do is you have to put these request on this timeline in what in what manner in your increasing manner okay so now first we have two so i will plot two here then i have six so i will plot six here Then I have ten. Then I have twenty. Okay, twenty is here. Then I have twenty-two. Then I have thirty-eight, and then I have forty. Okay, these are the requests that are being mentioned to me. Okay, now it is saying that the disk head is currently at cylinder twenty. Where is your disk head? The disk head is at cylinder twenty. Means here. Okay, now the algorithm that we have to use is. Shortest seek time first. S S T F. Shortest seek time means that if I move from this place to the next to the other request, it should take minimum time. मतलब if अगर मुझे if I have to go from point A to I have two options. I can either go at point B or I can go at point C. So I have to choose that option where it will be the minimum time, where the distance between the two is minimum. So what I'll do is I will check twenty minus ten and twenty two minus twenty. Here I'll get ten and here I'll get two. So which is the minimum distance going from twenty to twenty two? Okay. Similarly, now I'll check should I go to thirty eight or should I go to ten? So thirty eight minus twenty two will give me sixteen, and twenty two minus ten will give me twelve. So which is less? Twenty-two to ten is less, so I will go from twenty-two to ten. Now, obviously, ten to six is less as compared to ten to thirty-eight, so I'll move this side. Okay. Now, after two, where I'll go? I will go to thirty-eight directly because two k uh, at the left side of two there is no more request. Zero is not a request. Zero we have mentioned for our benefit. You can start from two as well, but. If zero would have been mentioned there, then you would have reached zero. Okay, so after thirty-eight, I will go to forty. Correct. Now just see what are the difference coming between all these two. Is me are I have cut two difference between twenty-two and twenty. Then it is coming twelve. Then it is coming four. Then four, and then thirty-six, and then two. Correct. Now what you will do? You will just add all these. So two plus twelve. Plus four, plus four, plus thirty-six, plus two. What it will give you after addition? Screen is not visible. Everybody is having the same problem. Everybody is having this problem that screen is not visible. No, okay. So I think, uh, uh, Selvam, I think the problem is at your side. Please uh, just refresh it once. Maybe then. Uh, It will be okay, okay. So the total is sixty. Now they are saying that the time taken to satisfy all the requests. They are asking is how much total time will be taken if 
it takes 2 milliseconds if it takes 2 milliseconds so for 2 milliseconds what you will do is you will multiply this 60 by 2 millisecond so your answer will become 120 millisecond okay uh, it is blur uh, maybe because of I think a bit you know problem of this screen I think maybe uh, network issue maybe I don't know uh, why it is blur at your side that's why I have typed it all so that you know images to blur ho jati hai because uh, images become blur so that's why I have typed it all just uh, clear you blur na lage. okay okay chike? so this uh, clear this question this was your question from operating system topic this scheduling okay this is also another important topic now the next question this is from your computer networking it is a very easy question if you have not studied this topic then also you will be able to do this question it was such an easy question okay so the question that they asked is protocols in which the sender sends one frame and then waits for an acknowledgement before proceeding for the next frame are called as they are asking you what are the names of the protocol in which sender sends one frame and then waits for an acknowledgement so your time starts now answer what will be the answer according to you all Poonam is saying C uh, I saying C okay and uh, student please uh, just don't feel bad if I, if I mispronounce your name because I may have okay Mahesh is saying option D okay Nandini is saying C can we see the recorded Hanji Hanji Bilkul uh, you can see the recorded video as well there is no problem if you have no time here uh, okay so the correct answer is stop and wait protocols see it was so clearly written here ki once the sender this is your sender and this is your receiver right so what it is saying ki sender will send one frame sender will send one frame and then it will wait it will wait till the receiver sends the acknowledgement until and unless the receiver will not send the acknowledgement sender will not send the next frame if if suppose sender is having three frames and it sends one frame to the receiver now what it what will happen is the sender will wait until and unless the receiver will send the acknowledgement so it was very clear from this question itself that it was it is stop and wait protocol okay now this uh, this question is again very easy question it's me they have given you the period of a signal is 100 milliseconds then the frequency of this signal in kilohertz they have mentioned you the unit as well what say students ka jo question jo galat hua tha, it was because of this also because they didn't see this unit this unit was already mentioned in this question they are asking you the frequency in kilohertz so just for your uh, you know to make it question easy i'll give you the formula frequency is equal to one upon time period you can now apply this formula and solve it and then give me the answer okay uh, people have started giving the answer somebody is saying c some mayank is saying b okay c okay 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 so majority of you are saying c let's see what is the correct answer the correct answer is c correct everyone now see we have one up over 100 right we have one over 100 and this is in millisecond what is millisecond millisecond is 10 to the power minus 3 correct so it is 10 to the power minus 3 seconds right now what i can do is i can take this 10 to the power minus 3 upwards it will become 10 to the power 3 upon 100 right again seconds okay now what will happen is ki ab aap kya karo aap aapko pata hai 10 to the power 3 refers to kilo right now one upon time period is there sorry it will become hertz uh, very uh, sorry not second it will become hertz now yeah hz hertz okay now it will be one upon hundred kilohertz i have what i have done is i have 
change this 10 to the power 3 into k. So this 10 to the power 3 becomes k. So it will become kilohertz. Okay. Now here this change. So 10, 1 upon 100 will be 1 upon 100 will be 10 to the power minus 2 kilohertz. So the answer becomes option C. Okay. Correct everyone. Moving on to the next question. This is the question from discrete and it is of set and relation. Another important topic and very easy. Agar aapne achche se cover kar rakha hai, wala topic, very easy topic. So they, are, they have mentioned you the following properties. One is your reflexive, then it is anti-symmetric, then it is symmetric. Okay? They have given you a set A. A set A has been given to you. It contains what elements? A, B, C, D, E, F and G. And then they have given you a relation R on set A. If they are saying on A, it means it is on A cross A. Okay? So they are asking which of the following properties are satisfied by the relation R. You just have to check which of the following properties are, sorry, are satisfied or not. So reflexive, anti-symmetric and symmetric. I hope you all know what are these properties are, what all these properties mean. So, okay. So Kirti has sent the answer D, okay. <coughs> Poonam has also sent the answer good D okay Abhay is saying C okay Mahesh is also saying D, okay. So let's see the correct answer. The correct answer is option D. Good, everyone who has uh, answered option D correct. The answer is B, not A. Now let us see why option D. Okay, reflexive you all know. Suppose if I have A is equal to 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, what does the relation A on A means? A cross A will contain what? A cross A will contain your elements like 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, when I have three, relay, three uh, elements on set A. Now here I have how many elements? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 elements. Okay? So when you will do A cross A, it will contain A comma A, B comma B, C comma C and all like this. Okay? Now what is the reflexive property? Reflexive property says ki if there is an element A, then it should have A plus A for all A belongs to the set or any uh, set that has that is known as A. Now what does it mean is key C. Here I have A, B, C, D, E, F and G. I have these seven elements. So for any relation to be reflexive, every element must be mapped to its own. Matlab ki if I have A comma A, B comma B, I should have C comma C as well, D comma D as well. E comma E I have, F comma F I have, G comma G I have. So this is what reflexive means. Key for every element in your set, every element must have a mapping for, uh, towards itself or must have a relation with itself. Then it will be a reflexive relation. Now here I have A is linked to itself, B is having a relation to itself, E is having a relation to itself, F is having a relation to itself, G is having a relation. But C and D are not having the relation with itself. So it is not reflexive. Okay. Now it is not reflexive. So I can cancel out option A and option C. Correct. Because in option C, what are they saying? Both A and B are satisfied. And right now I have proved that A is not satisfied by this relation, by this given relation. 
so this cancels out our option a and c now what is anti symmetric what is anti symmetric is anti symmetric mein ye hai ki if you have a comma b if i talk about anti symmetric so it says if you have a comma b then b comma a should not exist okay this what anti symmetric means and anti symmetric says that reflexive relations are optional theek hai reflexive relations are optional it means that a comma a can be present or may not be present both these uh, both the reflexive uh, elements are optional you can have them you cannot have them okay so if we uh, chalo i'll i'll tell you it at, at the end theek hai so now see a comma b comma b e comma e f comma f g comma g are optional so i'll just remove them for now c comma d do i have d comma c no i don't have d comma c so okay c comma d valid ho gaya c comma g i don't have g comma c okay valid d comma g ओके नो प्रॉब्लम डी कॉम जी भी आपका आपका पास जी कॉम डी नहीं है सो इट इज आल्सो वैलिड सो मतलब कि एंटी सिमेट्रिक की प्रॉपर्टी तो आपकी फॉलो हो रही है ठीक है नाउ व्हाट इज सिमेट्रिक सिमेट्रिक में क्या कह रहे हैं आपके अब यहां पे जो आपके ऑप्शन सिमेट्रिक में है सी कॉम डी सी व्हाट डज सिमेट्रिक मीन सिमेट्रिक से इफ यू हैव C comma D, you should have D comma C as well. Okay, so this is your symmetric property. So that's why अब यहाँ पे अभी हमने देखा कि C comma D तो है पर D comma C नहीं है. तो symmetric वाला option भी rule out हो जाएगा. So if I have to make a comparison between symmetric, asymmetric. and anti symmetric there are these three relations that uh, confuse us a lot ki what is all what does all these relations mean so if i have to talk about symmetric so what the symmetric says ki if i have a comma b theek hai if i have a comma b then b comma a must be there must must hai theek hai and reflexive relations are optional theek hai this is what does symmetric relation means now second we have asymmetric asymmetric says that if i have a comma b then b comma a should not exist and reflexive also should not exist ठीक है, दिस इज योर ए सिमेट्रिक नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट एंटी सिमेट्रिक इट से कॉमा बी इज देयर देन बी कॉमा ए मस्ट नॉट बी देयर एंड रिफ्लेक्सिव इज ऑप्शनल दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज थ्री रिलेशन दैट इज योर सिमेट्रिक रिलेशन ए सिमेट्रिक रिलेशन एंड एंटी सिमेट्रिक रिलेशन these three are very confusing so uh, i think i prefer that you please take a screenshot of this so that when you do a revision or whenever you see it aapko yaad rahe or you may make this table in your register okay so what does symmetric means what does asymmetric means and what does anti symmetric means i hope this point is clear to all of you so we we'll move on to the next part next question okay so next question is your boolean function this is basically from your digital digital in digital we have a topic that is known as k map it is from there so they have given you some uh, values and they have asking you what does this signify or what does it what is the correct option so uh, your time starts now and just tell me what will be the correct answer according to you
and uh, students if you have if you like the session just please uh, like the video also so that uh, you know and share it as well so that many more students who are preparing like you may get a notification of this video is it a it is bit blurred right i think because of network there is there is network issue that's why it is becoming blur okay i have received an answer abhay is saying option b okay option b means b only okay okay and what about others what about others what is the answer according to you all alok is saying option a means a only you are seeing the, these are the options okay do not get confused with the upper ones these are the options a only b only a and b b and d okay so i hope you are answering according to them so let's see the correct answer the correct answer is option d that is b and d now see in k map we have two things we have sop and we have pos correct deepak is uh, saying option d correct theek hai so one is this and other is this pi so agar aapko aise ye mentioned hai so it means that we have to fill the blocks with one and if this is mentioned so it means we have to fill the blocks with zero and if this is given it means the answer will be in sop and if this is given it means the answer will be POS that is SOP is your sum of products and POS is your product of sums. Okay, now let's make this K map and see why uh, most of you gave the wrong answers. So, if I make this K map, I hope you all know how to uh, number the uh, blocks in K map and how to mention all these numbers. I just hope that you all know. ठीक है, so it is of four variables, so it will be a four cross four k map, right? Like this. Now I have here a b and here I write c d. So it will be if I say a bar b bar, a bar b, a b and a b bar. ठीक है, similarly c bar d bar, c bar d. C D and C D bar. Okay, then what will be the numbering? It will be num block number zero, block number one, block number two, block number three, block number four, block number five, block number six, block number seven, block number eight is the lo lowest one, lowest row. Okay, nine, then ten, then eleven, then twelve, then thirteen, then fourteen, and then fifteen. Okay. Since we are numbering from zero, so it will be zero to fifteen. Now let's fill in the values. We have to fill one at zero. Okay, zero, one, two, sorry, two here, and then three. Then we have six, six. Then we have twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Right? These are the columns. These are the uh, columns. Sorry. Uh, these will be the uh, what do I say cells. That will have the value one. Now form. First we'll try to uh, make a pair of eight. Then we'll try to make a pair of four. Then we'll try to make a pair of two. And then we'll try to make pair of one. अगर अगर किसी का pair नहीं हो पा रहा, then we'll go for one. Okay. So pair of eight is not possible here. So we'll rule out this. This is a pair of four. This is a pair of four. This is a pair of four. Correct. So now what does does this pair indicate? It means a bar b bar, right? And what does this means? It means a b. So a bar b bar a b, a bar b bar a b, a bar b bar a b, a bar b bar a b. So a bar b bar and a b is in all the four options. I cannot rule out any option. Now what I'll do is I will look for this one. Now I can make uh, I can uh, link this one either to this one, right? Or I can link it either to this one. I can link it in two ways. I have two options for it. So if I link it with this one, what will be the value? It will be 
B C D bar, which is the B C D bar option, option number D. ठीक है एक ये मिल गया मुझे and if I link it with the upper one, what will be the answer? It will be B bar, नहीं no, sorry A bar C D bar. What is A bar C D bar? It is this option. So the correct answer is option D, B and D only. I hope this is clear to all of you. This K map. And now, if any question you will get, you will be able to solve the K maps question. Okay. Now the next question. This is a question from operating system only. And the operating system may there is a topic called Unix, and in that we have a topic that is I Node. This question basically belongs uh, to that topic. They are saying suppose you have a Linux file system where the block size is two K bytes. You have been given the block size. A disk address is thirty-two bits. Okay, then an I node contains the disk addresses of twelve direct blocks, single indirect block, and a double indirect block. Okay. Now, approximately, what is the largest file that can be represented by an I node? And they have given you four options. So try to solve this. and for that you will be having one minute to try to solve this question and then we'll discuss it Okay, so I have got one answer D. Okay, what about others? Anyone else? So let's see what is the correct answer. The correct answer is B, five hundred and thirteen megabytes MB. Okay, so let's see now. In this, uh, generally, what they ask is the largest file only. They ask. So, how to solve this? What you have to do is the basic formula that we have when we have to calculate the maximum file size system is that we add uh, the direct blocks. We have direct blocks. Okay, direct blocks plus then we what we do is we divide block size by disk addresses theek hai raised raised to the power raised to the power of indirect block ki aapki power kitni hai yahan pe if it is 1 then here it is 1 then again we solve we write block size then we divided by disk address and if we have double indirect block then we raise it to the power 2 for double and then we multiply it means aapko continue rakhna hai kab tak you have to continue it till the time aapko agar maan lo yahan pe triple indirect block bhi they have mentioned they have mentioned a quadruple indirect block so if for single direct block it is raised to the power 1 for double it is raised to the power 2 and for triple it will be raised to the power 3 and so on and last me what you have to do you have to multiply it with the block size but it becomes a very tedious job when it comes to your uh, no entrance exams or like competitive exams so for competitive exams always prefer this method whenever they ask you the maximum or largest file okay size jab aap agar they ask you maximum file size or largest file size always go for this uh, formula that is block size upon disk address raised to the power the highest power the highest indirect block highest indirect block into block size 
okay always go for this formula whenever you have this type of question and they ask you what is the largest file size or what is the maximum file size so now we'll try to put the values in this question so what uh, what we will do is see block size block size is given is 2 kilobytes 2 kb block size is given as 2 kb and the disk address that we need is given in 32 bits so 32 bits means how many bytes 32 bits means 4 bytes right 32 bits means 4 bytes because 8 into 4 will give me 32 so 32 bits means 4 bytes so what i can do is i can write 2 kb upon 4b raised to the power what is the highest indirect block here highest indirect block here is your double indirect block so it will be raised to the power 2 into block size block size is again 2k theek so now when you will solve this it will become 2 raised to power 11 because it is 2 into 2k so it is 2 is your here and k is your 2 raised to power 10 so when you will add it it will become 2 raised to power 11 4 will become 2 raised to power 2 into power of 2 into 2k theek hai so i will solve it here so it becomes 2 raised to power 11 upon 2 raised to power 2 whole to the power 2 uh into 2 raised to power 11 this is what i got now when i'll solve it i can do 2 raised to power 11 minus 2 right because if i have 2 raised to power a and 2 raised to power b then i can use this formula 2 raised to power a minus b i hope every one of you is aware with this uh, formula okay so it will be 2 11 2 raised to power 11 minus 2 whole to the power 2 into 2 raised to power 11 so it will be 2 raised to power 9 into 2 into 2 raised to power 11 that will give me 2 raised to power 18 into 2 raised to power 11 and i know that if i have 2 raised to power a into 2 raised to power b i can do addition of powers because the base is same please explain 2 kb see it is 2 kilobytes right so 2 i can write like this and k i know it is 2 raised to power 10 when we have studied no the uh, i hope you all know this ki agar k diya hua hai so it denotes 2 raised to power 10 agar m diya hai to it denotes 2 raised to power 20 okay so what it will become it will be 2 into 2 2 raised to power 1 into 2 raised to power 10 so i will add the powers it will become 2 raised to power 11 whole question chalo i'll explain the whole question again see uh, i hope this formula is clear to you this formula is clear to you right agar if you have a question like this and you have to solve it so this question is clear to you theek hai now what i have done is whenever they will theek hai now whenever they will ask me ki find the maximum or largest file theek hai if they will ask me whenever like maximum or largest file size so instead of going for a long way what you do is always go for the shortcut method shortcut formula and it is valid okay it will always give the correct answer it is that block size upon disk address disk address ya disk block address or uh, both means the same thing raised to the power highest order highest order of indirect pointer into block size this is what you have to use in your formula for calculating the maximum file size now what is this highest order highest order indirect pointer kya hota hai aapko they have mentioned you a single indirect pointer a double indirect pointer a triple indirect pointer these are basically indirect pointers and this single double triple denotes it no ki uh, what is the degree so here highest order in the given question is given to us as double so double means two times right so what i'll do is what is the block size that is given to me block size is 2 kb and what is the disk address disk address that was mentioned is 32 bits and i know 32 bits is equal to 4 bytes so i will divide it by 4 bytes raised to the power 
Why two? Because in the question they have mentioned double indirect pointer. Into two k b. Now two k b is I have told already told you that it is two raised to power eleven. Now this b and b gets cancelled. Okay. And four is two raised to power two whole to the power two into two raised to power eleven. Now I have this formula that if it is a raised to power m upon a raised to power n. That is the base is same and the powers are in division, so I will subtract the powers. Okay, so now what will happen is now it will be it will be two raised to eleven minus two square into two raised to eleven. Okay, so it will become two raised to nine into two because these powers will get multiplied into two to the power eleven. So it will be nine to the eighteen. So two raised to power eighteen into two raised to power twelve, and then I have again this property. If the base is same and the powers are in multiplication, so I will add the powers. So what I'll do is I will add them. So it will become two raised to power eighteen plus eleven. That will give me two raised to power twenty nine. Now what I'll do is now two raised to power twenty nine will be two raised to power nine into two raised to power twenty. Bytes. I will you no. Know, I will just divide those powers. I mean, I will distribute those powers. So two raised to power nine. Two raised to power nine is five hundred and twelve. Two raised to power twenty is m, and b will be written as it is. So my answer becomes five hundred and twelve mb. Ma'am, if we were given two double indirect pointer, then in power what we will write two or four. Agar if you have two double indirect pointers. So it will be for two double and right. I am telling you, you will multiply it with two here and raise to power two only. Okay. Agar if you have been given that two double indirect pointers are there, so two indirect me you will multiply two with this and double the power two he I G always. I hope this is clear. Uh, okay. ठीक है. So the answer is five hundred and twelve MB of this question, but in my option they have not mentioned five hundred and twelve. So I will look for the option that is nearer to five hundred twelve with the uh, unit MB that is me megabytes. Okay. So now MB five hundred twelve ke approx me aata hai five hundred thirteen. So my correct answer will become five hundred and thirteen MB. Okay, clear everyone. Now, when you will solve operating system questions, no, then आपको और अच्छे से clear हो जाएगा ये topic. But अभी के लिए just remember this formula is very important that maximum file is if you because generally mostly they will ask maximum only. ठीक है? Now this is another question from your discrete only. Clear? Okay, okay. This is another question from discrete and that same reflexive relations. The question is on the relations only. So try to solve this question and give the answer. Kirti saying option D, okay. And what about others? Done, everyone. Okay, Mahesh is saying option C. Deepak is saying option A. Okay. I will give you a trick for these questions. Always, always go for elimination method. Okay, always opt for elimination method because उससे आपका question बहुत ज़्यादा easy हो जाएगा. It will make your question very easy and you will be able to solve question in less time. Okay, so let's see the correct answer. It is option D. How we got two power eleven? See, uh, uh, just wait, students. Let me clear the doubt. 
we were having two K B. Okay, so we all. I hope you all know that if we have K K B. Okay, in computer science, K denotes two raised to power ten. Then we have it is for kilo, right? Kilobytes. Then we have M B. M B is for your megabyte, right? Then that M M denotes two raised to power twenty. Okay. So now what I have done is I have written two. That is two into K B. Okay. So two is denoting two raised to power one, and K is denoting two raised to power ten. Okay. Now what I have done I have here multiplication with me, and I have I know this property that if the base is same. And I do multiplication. I perform multiplication. The powers get add. That is a to the power m plus n. So now when I will add them, when I will uh, apply this property here, so it will be two raised to power one plus ten. That will give me two raised to power eleven. I hope it is clear. Is clear now? Similarly, I uh, just for your uh, more you know clearance. If we have two MB, if I have two MB, so I will uh, you know divide it in two into MB. So two is two raised to power one, and M will be two raised to power twenty. Okay, and when I will add, when I will add these powers because they are in multiplication, so it will be two raised to power twenty one. This is how we got two raised to power eleven. Clear now? Okay, so the next the question that we were discussing here they have given us two relations R one that is one one two two three three and R two that is one 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 two one three and one four and these are certain operations that are being performed. Now this first option I hope you all know it is union, right? It is your union. So what does union do? Union will add all these together. मतलब one one two two three three R one की R one elements will get will will be added with the R two elements. Like one one. So what will union becomes one one two two three three one two one three one four. It will only add distinct elements. Repeated repeated of elements नहीं add होंगे. Okay. So what it what will be the answer? One 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 two one three इंटरसेक्शन Intersection tells that if I talk about in Venn diagram, if I talk in a sense of Venn diagram, this is A and this is B. Okay, this is your A and this is your B. So A union B. If I talk about A union B, A union B will be all this whole. All these two blocks will be considered together. This is your union. Now, if I talk about intersection, this part, the common part between the two, is known as intersection. So, in this question, what is the intersecting part? Only one one is common between R one and R two, right? Nothing else is common between R one and R two. Only one comma one is clear in one uh, is common between both the two. So, one comma one, that is C, will go for. C will connect to one comma one. That is your second option. ठीक है ये आपका first है ये आपका first option है second option. So now C for second. C for second is only in these two options. So I will cancel out A and I will cancel out B. ठीक है now go for B option. R one minus R two. Now C this is known as set difference. Okay. This is another important thing. Set difference. What does it mean? If you have this A and this is your B. Uh, and if i say a minus b it means that i will take all the elements of a which are not present in b okay i will take only those element of a which are not present in b so if i have r1 as 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 and 3 comma 3 
so which which only elements i have in r1 that are not present in r2 i have 2 comma 2 and i have 3 comma 3 correct because r1 to aapka r2 may be present hai so it will get eliminated in r1 minus r2 so r1 minus r2 will link to option 4 that is b will link to option 4 Now, what does B minus A indicates? B minus A indicates all those elements of B which are not present in A. Okay, so B minus A may what is it? One comma one will not be included. Rest all the elements will be included. That is your option D will be linked to option third. So D is linked to option three. So my answer becomes D. Okay, clear? I think there is some problem in net. I hope because it is becoming blur every time. Okay, clear this option. And uh, abhi, uh, is it clear to you how do we got two power eleven? You didn't mention any uh, thing that it is it clear to you or not? So that's why I'm asking. Okay. And uh, abhi, please also give me confirmation that you got two two power eleven. So much time I thought you didn't. Please, okay. So moving on to the next question. This is of your DBMS. It is very important, uh, very easy. Sorry, very easy question. It belongs to your ER diagram, and I hope everyone will give a right answer to this. Okay, okay. I have already received the answer. Okay, the answer is A. A basing uh, option A. What about others? What is the answer according to other students? Kitty is saying A. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see what is the correct answer or you do you all need more time for this question because i have received only two answers till now punam is also saying a okay Kirti is saying C. Deepak is also saying option C. So let's see what is the correct answer. So the correct answer is option C, right? I don't know why you all mentioned option A because C in ER diagram this represents entity, right? This rectangular box it represents your entity, and when so it is very clear to me. That this rectangle box will always represent entity. Now, what type of entity? Now, if I make a double, make a double rectangular box, it represents your weak entity. Okay? It represents a weak entity. So, a right option is option two. So, a will two and option c is having two. So, I will rule out option b and option d. Okay? Now, I will see for option b. Now. We all know that this this uh, oval shape represents your attributes, right? It represents attributes. And whenever I have a primary key, primary key when we have a primary key, suppose I say that I have a relation that that's name is uh, I have an entity. Sorry, that's name is student. Okay. And student may they have certain attributes. They have attributes. Like the attributes, like your roll number. Then we have uh, first name. Then we have last name. Okay. Like this, I have certain attributes, and I say that roll number is your primary key. Okay. So how do I represent in ER diagram? What I do is I will make a attribute like this, and I will say roll number, and I will underline it. Underline it to represent the key attribute. Correct. So here, what they have done is they have formed an attribute and they have underlined it. So it represents your key attribute, key attribute type. So B will go with first. So from here only, without checking the next option, I can click my answer as C. But okay, still let's see. Again, there is an oval shape. Oval. I have already told oval shape always go for attribute. And whenever we have. a uh, double oval it always represent multi valued multi valued means the ones having more than one value so option c will get linked to fourth 
and this this represents total participation because yahan pe you can see that there is a double bond and here is a single bond so this will represent your total participation so d is goes with 3 and c will go with 4 okay so the correct option is option c now this is the next question and this is from your computer networks it is basically on protocols and if you go with the eliminating option na very easily every one of you will get the right answer even if you don't know ki ye jitne bhi protocols hain wo kaun si option ko belong karte hain ya kaun si layer ko belong karte hain if you just go with this apply uh, with this sorry uh, with this uh, no one protocol and if you know what the where that one protocol belongs you will definitely get the correct answer just try this question option a okay uh student this is 1 2 3 4 okay i just forgot to type here 1 2 3 4 and this is your a b c and d okay so punam is saying option a kriti is saying option b deepak is saying option b okay so Two more seconds, and then we'll see what is the right answer. So the correct answer is option B. All those who are saying option B, you are right. Good. The correct answer is option B. C. We we don't know what is serial line input uh, internet protocol. We don't know what is border gateway protocol. We don't know what is simple network management protocol. All we know is user data gram protocol, user data protocol. Whenever you must have studied computer networks, there you have this transport layer, right? And in transport layer, we have these two protocols. One is your TCP. and other one is your udp right so if only by knowing that udp belongs to transport layer you would have got your answer because in no other option c is linked to 2 if only by only the c option you would have got your correct answer that the user data protocol belongs to your transport layer okay then another option that will help that we have read you was simple network management protocol when you study application law, application protocol layer there we have few protocols like snmp then we have smtp then we have pop we have these few protocols so simple network management protocol will link you to option 1 that is d will link you to 1 and there uh, see there are so many protocols it is a possibility that you must not know all the protocols but in question always they will give you certain protocols that you must have studied that you would have been studying it and you must have been knowing it as well so even if you don't know any protocol you just know this one you have studied you definitely have studied user data protocol and you know it belongs to transport layer so with this option only aapka you know the entire question has been correct so always look for these type of uh, uh, questions always these type of parts jo aapko ye pata chale ki what is the correct answer See no no option no other option is having C relates to two. Only this option was there, and if you would have marked it correctly, it would have been correct. Okay. Now this is very easy question. Another very easy question. The following types of machine in one human architecture you must have studied. There are four types of machine. One is SISD, simple input, simple uh, SISD right, simple input and simple output. Then we have multiple input. then we have simple in single input and multiple output and then i have i think mimd simd sisd and one other remaining is misd here they have given you only these three options and they are asking you descending order of complexity descending order means from big to small so you have to tell instruction data okay right right simple single instruction single data multiple instruction multiple data 
then we have single instruction multiple data and we have multiple instruction single data theek hai in this they are asking you you have to arrange these machines in the descending order of complexity means you have to tell what will be the most complex one then the less complex one and the third one will be the least complex one okay so okay kirti has answered a what about others punam has answered a okay thank you thank you jashman uh, jashman for your information thank you i just forgot it it is uh, instruction and data thank you so much and what about others uh, chitra is saying a first at first place it will come the most complex one most complex third one will be the least complex i understood madam okay okay uh, abed so the correct answer is option number c c uh, everyone if i have s i s d means that single instruction and single data and i have m i m d that means multiple instructions and multiple data okay so obviously which one will be more uh, uh, complex obviously mimd right mimd will be more complex because you have to give multiple instructions and multiple data in sisg only single instruction is there and single data variable is there right so the correct option is b c a MIMD being the most complex one, then I have SIMD that is single instruction and multiple data, and then at second, third, last, the least uh, complex is your SISD that is single instruction and single data. Okay, I hope ki aap pe doubt uh, clear ho gaya hoga. This question may almost everyone gave the answer A. I think you must have uh, misunderstood this descending order. I may be any issue like that. okay clear everyone so i'll keep it till now uh, here only if all parts are given then if all parts are given then the most complex will still be your mimd theek hai then it will be m i i think m i s d then i think it will be s i m d and then it will be i guess s i s d theek hai i'm not confirm for this order i'll just look to it and then i'll tell you in tomorrow session which is the most or whenever we will solve these type of questions okay i'm not just confirm for it but i think this will be the correct order if all four parts are given okay i'll just look into it and then i'll tell you uh, tomorrow in tomorrow's class that which what is the correct order in order of the descending order of complexity okay so for now i'll keep it till here only from tomorrow we'll start with from tomorrow at 6 pm again we'll meet here and then we'll start with the previous year questions of computer architecture theek okay? hai now we will be covering the uh, questions that is your topic wise that is subject wise okay so first first subject that i'll be taking is your computer architecture and uh, we will do all the possible pre py uh, pyqs that we have in uh, computer architecture subject so just please try to be on time and uh, just uh, brush up your concepts of uh, br brush up your concepts of computer architecture okay so that it is clear to all uh, ki whatever we are doing and uh, see you all tomorrow then okay chalo okay everyone thank you hello everyone good evening and welcome to today's session i hope you all are in good health and you all must have had a good sunday 
so before starting just please tell me is my voice and audio and video all clear to everyone good evening mohan good evening navdeep uh, my voice is clear right everyone okay so today we will be starting with the operating system pyqs and uh, we have already covered few subjects okay okay thank you okay and uh, this is the channel uh this is the website where you can visit if you have any query this is the number that you can call and this is the telegram channel that you can join if you want to uh, get the notes and if you want to study and if you want to pdf and all okay good evening alok good evening okay so now in operating system we have few concepts uh we have few concepts like uh, please give me a telegram link uh this is the link alok um this is the link digimento is the name and uh, digimento education is the name of the channel good evening raghuveer good evening jasna good evening roslyn okay so now in operating system we have few uh, topics that are first and foremost your cpu scheduling okay then we have disk scheduling if i talk about scheduling only okay this related few questions were asked in your exams in your 2020 exams okay then we have deadlock another important topic then we have paging then we have page replacement questions on page replacement good evening tripti okay so basically these are the most important topics major topics and then uh, and then we have one synchronization semaphores okay so these are the major topics from which questions are asked Ma'am, I am absent for the M P V G. No worries, Raghuvi. You can watch the recorded sessions. You can see them. And if you have any doubt, just you can ask me. I have. Uh, you all have my Telegram number. I have given you, so you can ask me over there. Okay. So these are the basic. Uh, what you can say the topics that are asked that are majorly asked in your operating system. And uh, uh, in our two thousand twenty paper, November two thousand twenty, there were five questions from disk only, right? uh related to disk structure and one was your disk scheduling okay so this these were there then we were have we had a question on page replacement okay and we had a question on i i am not able to yeah on tlb that is from tlb translation look aside buffer that is a part of your paging okay so now first and foremost i have started for today's session i have started with the questions that were asked in your 2020 the disk questions okay i have started with that concept why because this is a different concept and it needs a brief explanation so that you all may get the idea about your disk hard disk or your disk structure okay so everybody please uh, just uh, uh, join and then we will start so as you can see is this diagram i hope this diagram is visible to everyone as you can see here you can see that here is few uh, circular tracks okay circular disk are there these are known as platters good evening poonam okay these circular structures if i draw it like this if i if you see here this is what is your structure okay this is the circular structure okay good evening uh, good evening sara vanan i think i am pronouncing your name right okay theek hai this is the uh, circular structure and this is known as platter okay now every platter it can either be one sided or two sided theek hai so each uh, the above side this uh, the above portion and the below portion they are known as surfaces okay so if my platter is a double sided one so this means that my platter has two surfaces if they are saying double sided platter means two surfaces are there for a platter okay then what comes next the next thing is your track so inside a platter there are few tracks let me just draw it like this okay 
if i draw it like this ठीक है सो नाउ दिस इज व्हाट माय दिस इज माय प्लैटर एंड इनसाइड दिस दिस प्लैटर व्हाट आई हैव आई हैव अ ट्रैक ठीक है दिस इज अ प्लैटर एंड नाउ इनसाइड दिस प्लैटर व्हाट आई हैव वी हैव डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ट्रैक्स लाइक सर्कल्स लाइक दिस ठीक है दीस सर्कल्स आर नोन एज ट्रैक्स these are your tracks theek okay? hai so what is this this is a track this whole circle is a track okay now what is this track track basically is used for recording the information theek okay? hai uh, good evening kani theek uh, hai good good evening sir so this is for recording information theek okay? hai information is recorded here theek okay? hai ab track always start from index 0 okay so the track first track will be t0 then it goes inside like this theek okay? hai now each track is basically divided into small small portions and these portions are known as sectors okay so i can divide this track into small small portion and these portions are known as sectors like this this ठीक है, so ये पूरा uh, this this whole track is divided into small portions and this portion, this complete portion is known as a sector. The unit where your data is basically present, okay? Basic unit where the data is present, okay? And one sector, one this one sector can store up to five hundred and twelve bytes of data. One sector can store up to five hundred and twelve bytes of data. Good evening, Ruhi. Okay. Then we have one term that is your cylinder. Now, what is cylinder? So, cylinder is basically the number of tracks on each surface. Number of tracks on each surface okay so now if you see here you see this diagram this is a platter that is your circular device okay the circular structure and this is your surface 1 this is your surface 1 and the below portion is your surface 2 okay so every platter if you try to understand if this is my uh, this is my platter so this is my surface 1 and this is my surface 2 okay so this is your two surfaces then what what they are saying this whole uh, this uh, circular this portion is a track it is one track and inside one track we have so many sectors okay and the combine the number of tracks that are present on each surface is known as your cylinder and this is your spindle basically on uh, what performs the rotation okay so and this is your lead or right head so now if you remember you have to remember this that first thing is your platter good evening var lakshmi now inside platter i have tracks inside tracks i have sector and one uh, tracks is known as cylinder the combine number of tracks on a surface is known as cylinder and then sector is the basic unit that holds the data and it can be its size it can hold up to 512 bytes of data ठीक है, so this is the basic knowledge that you should have that was needed to solve that question. Okay, this was the basic information or knowledge that you should have. Now moving on to the question. Let's see the question. Now they are saying consider a disk with sector size five hundred twelve bytes, two hundred two thousand tracks per surface, fifty sectors per track, and five double sided platters. now what they are saying that i have five double sided platters now what does this mean five double sided platters means that i have 10 surfaces right 10 surfaces are there with me okay then one surface contains how many tracks one surface has 2000 tracks and one track one track has 50 sectors okay and one sector size one sector size that is the amount of data that one sector can hold is 512 bytes okay good evening An anbu okay so this is information that have been provided to you and i have we have already studied that 
this is the platter this is these are the tracks that are inside platter and these are your sectors okay good evening komal so i hope okay this is clear to you now now what they are saying they are saying if t is the capacity of a track in bytes okay so they are saying t is the capacity of track and s is the capacity of each surface you have to tell what is t comma s okay so try to do this question i have given you the basic information there is no formula for now just simple knowledge and simple mathematics try to do it and then we will discuss how to do this question and the timer start now operating system is basically used for the interaction between the hardware and the software and the user okay the software and the user how we interact with each other and a computer architecture is basically the hardware how we uh, how we design the hardware of a computer how different different you know hardware is designed how to design them how to design such a way that we get the optimized result or effective result okay so c you are saying answer c okay what about others C C C. Okay. C. Okay. So the answer is C. Correct, everyone. Correct. Okay. So now what they are saying T is the capacity of track. Now I have to find the capacity of track in bytes. so i know that one track is containing 50 sectors and one sector size is 512 and total tracks are how many but total tracks are 2000 okay so now i have to find the capacity of a track so capacity of track or capital t it will be 50 sectors into 512 bytes so that will give me Twenty five thousand six hundred and bytes. Okay, so I can write it as twenty five KB. So they are asking in bytes. So my answer is twenty five K. Now twenty five K, twenty five K. I have two times. Okay. So now I have to calculate the capacity of sur uh, surface. Now one surface is having how many tracks? Two thousand. Okay. So what will be the capacity of surface? capacity of surface will be your 25k into 2000 that will give you 500 and 500000 50000 50000k so this is your capacity of surface so kb will be the answer but they have already given you in bytes so you just have to write 50000k this is basic maths i hope this is clear to everyone how we got these things see capacity of track can be calculated on the basis of sectors because we have studied that this if this is a track so if these are different different tracks so this is a sector right this is one sector this is one sector and how many sectors do i have one track is having 50 sectors right 50 sectors are there in one track and size of each sector is what size of each sector is 512 byte so if i multiply these two terms i will get the capacity of this track okay, what is the size what is the data holding capacity of this track and then we know that if our platter is having two surfaces upper and lower so they are asking capacity of each surface and i know that each surface is having how many tracks 2000 each surface that upper surface is having 2000 tracks so if i multiply 2000 with this term i will get the capacity of each surface so that is how i will do this question clear everyone any doubt if you have the basic knowledge of the this structure you will be able to solve it completely okay now moving on to the next question now they are saying 
what is the capacity of the disk they have given you the same information now they are asking the capacity of disk so try to solve it and then we will discuss okay so people have started giving the answers let us see the correct answer the correct answer is option number b now capacity of disk means the entire structure that is that we have entire structure along with all the platters that were there so whole structure what is the capacity of this whole structure so now what i will do i know that first i have a double side platters i have five double sided platters so capacity of disk will be what it will be five double sided platters double sided so that is by 5 into 2 now what it mean now it's saying that 2000 tracks per surface so 2000 then one track is having 50 sectors and how many bytes of information is there 512 bytes of information so what i'll do i will multiply all these terms all together that will give me the capacity of the complete disk and this will be equal to 500000k then b will also be there but they have already given in bytes so our answer will be 500000k clear everyone clear this question now moving on to the next question what is the next question now they have given you two statements they are saying that this has a total number of 2000 cylinders this is your statement 1 and statement 2 is 51200 bytes 512000 okay 51200 or whatever you say is not a valid block size for the disk so you have to tell what is the correct answer from the options given below so try this and then we will discuss and the time starts now okay okay so let's see the correct answer is option number 1 option number 1 is the correct answer See, this is you all said correct that this has total number of two thousand cylinders. What is cylinder? Cylinder is the total number of tracks on one surface. Okay, and they have given us that two thousand tracks per surface. So one surface is having two thousand tracks. This means that our this will have a total number of two thousand cylinders. Okay. Now let us see about the second statement. Now for second statement, remember one point that is. block size i'll write it somewhere i'll write it here block size is a multiple of sector 
and size okay so block size is a multiple of sector size and it should not exceed it should not exceed the sector size okay now if i look here what is the size of one sector one sector is having size 512 bytes okay how many sectors are there 50 sectors are there per track so 50 sectors the size what will be the size of 50 sectors 512 into 50 that is equal to what that is equal to 25600 bytes okay so this is what the maximum size of sector maximum size that can be hold okay block size and what is the block size given to me block size given to me is 512 so 5120 is way greater than 25600 so that is why 5120 cannot be a block size why because its its uh, value is greater than the total sector size so that is why statement 1 is also correct and statement 2 is also correct clear everyone clear this one this question clear no see what they are saying is that your block size this is a block size okay so block size is always a multiple of sector size but the block block size should not exceed should not exceed the total sector size theek hai matlab if my sector size is 512 bytes one sector is able to hold 512 bytes try to understand like this that one sector is able to hold 512 bytes of data and in total i have 50 sectors on one track theek hai so how many data they can hold how much amount of data can they hold they can hold 512 into 50 that is 2 Five six double zero bytes of data they can hold. Okay, and they are saying that the block size is of how many bytes? Block size is of five hundred twelve double zero bytes. Now you tell me if my maximum space is two five six double zero, can I have a block size that is much greater than this value? No, obviously not. How can I accommodate five one two double zero inside two five six double zero? Right. so that is why 51200 cannot be a block size and this is what they have written here 51200 is not a valid block not a valid block size for the disk so that is why this statement is correct it is not a valid block size for the disk they are not saying it is a valid block they are saying it is not a valid block okay clear everyone now moving on to the next question what is the next question now they have mentioned one more thing to us they are saying that if the disk platter rotate at 5400 rpm that is revolutions per minute theek okay? hai what they are saying that now the disk platter we have we saw spindle there right so on that spindle on that spin the disk platter is rotating at 5 5400 rpm that is revolutions per minute so what is the maximum rotational delay so they are asking the maximum rotational delay so try to solve this question and then we will discuss the correct answer and the time starts now A okay, A okay, and what about others? 
what is the answer according to you all b b okay well the correct answer is option number a ठीक है, the correct answer is option A. Now, how come option A is the correct answer? See everyone. See, rotational latency or we can say rotational delay. ठीक है, so what it is? Rotational latency or rotational delay is the delay waiting for the rotation of the disc to bring the required disc sector under the read or write head. What this mean is that if my uh, this spin this uh, spin in this spindle is rotating okay so now in on this platter i have a sector over here and this is my read and write head okay this is my read write head okay now i want this particular sector to be present at to be come here to be present at this position on this read write head so now the delay that i have to wait the delay that is occurring while waiting for the rotation of the disc to bring this required sector at this read or write head. This is known as your rotational latency. I hope this point is clear. Okay. So the delay that that the time, that the amount of time that I have to wait or that is wasted on waiting to bring this sector, this particular sector on this read write head is your rotational delay or rotational latency. Okay. Now it depends on the rotational speed of the disc measured in revolutions per minute okay then maximum rotational latency is the time it takes to do a full rotation so the time taken to do a full rotation is your maximum rotational latency and these two are your formula maximum latency is 60 divided by rpm 60 divided by rpm and average latency is calculate maximum latency and multiply it by 0 0.5 or 1 by 2. Okay. So now in this case, I have 5400 RPM. So what will be my maximum latency? Maximum latency will be what? Maximum latency will become 60 divided by 5400. And when you will divide it, you will get 0 0.011 seconds. So this is how you calculate the maximum latency or your average latency. So now if they would have asked, average latency what you would have done you would have calculated maximum latency and then you would have multiplied with 0 0.5 clear everyone okay so this is your rotational latency and it is calculated how this is the formula for calculating the maximum latency and your average latency this point here now moving on to the next question. What is the next question? The next question is. Now they are saying if one track of data. If one track of data can be transferred per revolution. That is in one revolution I am able to transfer one track of data. What is the data transfer rate? Okay. So try to solve it and then we will discuss it. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, good everyone, these good everyone is giving the answers, correct. So the correct answer is option number D. Okay, now this is basically there is nothing to be in the formula, there is no formula here, just simple math. See, what they are saying that one revolution, if I talk about one revolution, so it is transferring how much amount of data? 
वन ट्रैक ऑफ डेटा ठीक है वन ट्रैक ऑफ डेटा इट इज ट्रांसफरिंग ओके देन आई हैव फॉर दे हैव गिवन मी फिफ्टी फोर हंड्रेड आर पी एम राइट दे हैव मैंशन दिस फिफ्टी फोर हंड्रेड आर पी एम सो दिस मीन्स दैट इन वन मिनिट हाउ मेनी रेवल्यूशन आर बींग डन फिफ्टी फोर हंड्रेड रेवल्यूशन आर बींग मेड करेक्ट नाउ दैट मीन्स इन सिक्सटी सेकेंड हाउ मेनी रेवल्यूशन आर बींग मेड फिफ्टी फोर हंड्रेड राइट सो इन वन सेकेंड हाउ मेनी रेवल्यूशन आर बींग मेड फिफ्टी फोर हंड्रेड डिवाइड बाई सिक्सटी सो दीज आर द रेवल्यूशन दैट आर बींग मेड इन वन सेकेंड ओके नाउ दे आर सेंग दैट हाउ मेनी वॉट इज द डेटा ट्रांसफर रेट डेटा ट्रांसफर रेट इज मीन्स दैट इन वन सेकेंड हाउ मच अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा आई कैन ट्रांसफर ठीक है इन वन सेकेंड हाउ मच अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा आई कैन ट्रांसफर सो वॉट इट से दैट इन वन सेकेंड टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा दैट आई कैन सेंड इज द कैपेसिटी ऑफ ट्रैक वॉज वॉट कैपेसिटी ऑफ ट्रैक वॉज ट्वेंटी फाइव के बी राइट ट्वेंटी फाइव के बी वॉज द कैपेसिटी सो नॉ इन वन सेकेंड I have these many revolutions, and I can send this much amount of data. So now, when I will solve this, I will get two two five zero kilobytes per second. This is your basic maths. Uh, Tripti, this was not mentioned in this question, but they have since they have written per revolution. So this means that they have taken this information from the previous question. Okay. since this was not this was a question that was linked with one another so they have not mentioned uh, separately 5400 rpm but they have mentioned here per revolution so that is why from the previous question we will take 5400 rpm clear everyone so these were your questions from your 2020 Few uh, operating system questions we have already discussed, like the question of your disk scheduling. We have already discussed. We have discussed the question of page replacement. You can check the uh, ma'am please again. Okay, wait. Okay. See what what they are saying is that one track of data can be transferred per revolution. This means that in one revolution, I can transfer one track of data. Okay. So what is the capacity of a track? We have already calculated that the capacity of track is twenty five kb. Okay, now fifty four hundred rpm was given to me in the previous question. This means that in one minute I can the disk is able to make fifty four hundred revolutions. Okay, now one minute is equal to sixty seconds. So sixty seconds is equal to how much revolutions? Fifty four hundred revolutions. So now I will calculate how much time, how much revolutions are done in one second. So in one second, if I try to calculate it, it will be ninety. So in one second, ninety revolutions can be made. Okay. Now what they are asking, what is the data transfer rate? Now as soon as you heard this, you hear this uh, word now rate. Rate means that upon upon second. Okay, upon time. So now they are asking that how much data can be transferred in one second? Per second, how much data can I transfer? So all I have to calculate is. the amount of data that has to be calculated in one second so i have i have revolutions with me why because I, it is written here one track of data can be transferred per revolution okay per revolution so now i have 90 revolutions and 90 revolutions may how much amount of data is there we have capacity of the track capacity of the track is 25 kb so i have to calculate now in one second how much amount of data i can transfer So the amount of data that that I can transfer per second is two two five zero kb per second. Clear? Okay. Now moving on to the next question that I have is based on your page replacement algorithm. Okay, we have already discussed this LRU and we have there are three page replacement algorithms. one is your first in first out then we have least recently used and then we have optimal okay so first in first out is based on what elements come first will be removed first okay least recently used as a name suggest it basically sees what was the page that was least recently used and we edit or remove that page out and then we have optimal optimal basically looks into the future See what is the need? Whether the page is needed in future or not? Whether I need it? If I need it, I will keep it. Otherwise, I'll discard it. Okay. 
so try to solve this question they are saying that process has been allocated three frames and the sequence is given to you as this one two one and all okay and they're saying what is the difference in page fault they have given you two techniques lru and optimal page replacement algorithms and they're asking the difference in the page fault so try to do this and then we will discuss the answer okay so the time starts now Yes, anyone answers? C, okay. And what about others? So the correct answer is option number A, that is 2. Okay, 2 is the correct answer. Now let us see how come 2 is the answer. What we will do, we will first write the string here. 1, 2, 1, 3, 7, 4, 5, 6, 3, 1. Okay, and then we will solve first by LRU. So after, now we will solve it by LRU. How many page frames are there? 3 page frames are there. So I will draw a block of 3 page frames. So these are my 3 page frames. Okay, now first is 1. So, 1 will come here and 1 will be a miss. Okay. So, page fault occurs whenever we encounter a miss. Okay. Then I have 2. I will check whether 2 is there. 2 is still not present here. So, again 2 will be a miss. Okay. I will enter 2 here and it will be a miss. Then I will see 1. So, 1 is still in my table. So, what? Everybody's screen is not clear or this problem is with Swati only. Good evening, Carnival Fun. Okay. Uh, everyone, is the screen not clear or this problem is with Swati only? Okay. Now, 1 is already in the table. Okay. So, it will be a hit. So, H is for hit and M is for miss. Okay. M is for your miss. Okay. Then, we have 3. Now, still there is a place, there is a slot that is remaining in my frame. A frame is remaining. So, I will enter this 3 here and this will become a miss for this LRU. Now comes now 7. Now, I will see my least recently used. Now, tell me which of the following will get eliminated or discarded if because of 7. See, there are 3 page frames. Now, the trick that you can use to do this question or the thing that, you, that help you to remember is in least recently used, you have 3, pay, three frames. Okay. So, look back at the three places, these three places, just look at these places and discard the last one, okay, discard the last one that you have from your this side, you move from this side, this is your last one, so I will discard two and I will enter seven here, okay, so my seven is again a miss. Now, I will see four, now what I will remove to enter four, to make four? I will remove this 1. So, my 4 will get entered into the frame. Then, I have again, this is a miss. Now, I have 5. So, what I will delete now? I will look here and I will see 3. So, I will delete this 3 and I will five, enter 5. Again, a miss. Now, I saw 6. Now, what I will remove for 6? For 6, I will remove this 7. So, I will remove this 7 and it will come here. Again, a miss. Now, for 3... 3 ke liye what I will remove? 3 ke liye I will remove 4. So, 3. Again, a miss. And for 1, what I will remove? For 1, I will remove 5. Again, a miss. So, how many miss are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
सो टोटल पेज फॉल्ट इन केस ऑफ एल आर यू एस नाइन टेल मी दिस इज क्लियर एवरी वन पेज फॉल्ट इन केस ऑफ एल आर यू एस नाइन इज दिस क्लियर एवरी वन नाउ यू नो द ट्रिक दैट वी हैव टू यूज वाइल फॉलोइंग एल आर यू जस्ट लुक बैक द नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स द नंबर ऑफ फ्रेम्स दैट यू हैव ठीक है एंड डिलीट द मोस्ट एक्सट्रीम लेफ्ट वन फ्रॉम द टेबल दैट इज द योर लीस्ट रिसेंटली यूज नाउ लेट एस लुक फॉर ऑप्टिमल वन ठीक है आई विल रिमूव आई विल डिलीट दिस एंड आई विल डिनोट ऑप्टिमल विद रेड पेन ओके सो दिस इज माई ऑप्टिमल नाउ फॉर ऑप्टिमल अगेन आई विल स्टार्ट विद द थ्री फ्रेम्स आई हैव वन एंड टू एंड थ्री ठीक है ऑप्टिमल रेफर्स टू फ्यूचर मतलब आई हैव टू लुक एट द फ्यूचर ऑफ दिस फ्रेम सो नाउ आई स्टार्ट विद वन वन अगेन इज अ मिस बिकॉज माई टेबल इज स्टिल एम टी सो मिस टू इज ऑल्सो अ मिस अगेन आई राइट इट वन वन इज ऑलरेडी प्रेजेंट सो इट विल बी अ हिट देन आई हैव थ्री थ्री अगेन विल बी अ मिस बाय बिकॉज थ्री इज आई हैव स्टिल स्पेस लेफ्ट विद मी हाउ टू रिमूव फ्रेम सी फॉर एल आर यू वॉट आई डिड वॉज आई लुक बैक एट नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स द फ्रेम्स वर देर इफ सपोज आई हैव थ्री फ्रेम सो इन केस ऑफ एल आर यू आई लुक बैक एट द प्रीवियस थ्री स्पेसेस ठीक है Now I saw that least recently used may you have to delete the one that is at the extreme left. Okay, in case of least recently used, I am saying delete the extreme left frame. Okay, delete that value that is present at the extreme left. And in case of optimal, you have to look for the future one. Now I am having seven as the value. Now what should I delete for your optimal? I will look at this side. and i will see that okay 3 is what i need and 1 is what i need so what i will delete i will delete 2 i will delete 2 and i will write 7 here so this is a miss okay now i saw 4 again i saw that 3 and 1 are needed so i will delete this 7 and it will be 4 here okay this is again a miss now 5 similar case 5 will also enter here by removing 4 Now six will also enter here by removing five, and three and one are already present. So how many total page faults in optimal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven page faults. And what is the difference between the two? The difference is two. So my answer is two. Okay. So if I have to, if I tell you the trick now, what you have to do? So for first is your first in first out. nothing you have to do the one who will get entered first will be removed first so first in first out nothing for l r u that is your least re recently used now what do you have to do for least recently used suppose i have the string this is my string okay this is the string these are the values a b c d okay these are the values and page frame is what frame is of 3 ठीक है, so what I will do, I will look back at the three places. If I have to enter this D, if I have to enter this D, and my frames are full, that is A, B, and this C is my in my frame. ठीक है, so now what will happen is, I will look back at the three places. D से पहले जो three places हैं, I will look for them. These three places I will look. and i will delete the one that will be at the extreme left in case of least recently used so i will delete this a and i will make the entry of d here in case of least recently used now if i talk about optimal optimal means it looks for the future okay it looks in your what is there in the future so suppose if again my string is of this type a b c d a c ठीक है एंड ईज है सो नाउ आई हैव अगेन थ्री पेज फ्रेम्स वन टू एंड थ्री सो आई एंटर्ड ए बी एंड सी नाउ आई हैव दिस डी नाउ आई हैव टू सी व्हाट आई हैव टू डिलीट सो इन केस ऑफ ऑप्टिमल यू विल लुक एट दिस साइड एंड यू विल सी दैट ए इज नीडेड एंड सी इज नीडेड ई इज व्हाट आई हैव नॉट हैव विद मी राइट नाउ आई नीड ए एंड सी सो व्हाट आई विल डिलीट आई विल डिलीट दिस बी एंड आई विल फिल दिस डी हेयर so this is how you solve the page replacement questions okay what will happen if there is four at last where four is there at which place just now yes 
यहां पे यहां पे यू आर सेइंग इफ फोर इज देयर सो इफ आई हैव फोर हेयर सपोज आई हैव फोर वैल्यू हेयर ठीक है सो आई व्हेन आई एंटर्ड फोर नाउ आई हैव फाइव सिक्स थ्री वन फोर आई सॉ दैट ऑल आर रिक्वायर्ड टू मी बट फोर इज द वन दैट इज बिहाइंड थ्री एंड वन ओके सो आई विल डिलीट दिस फोर फर्स्ट आई विल डिलीट फोर ओनली बिकॉज बिफोर फोर आई नीड थ्री एंड वन okay so i will delete 4 from here because 4 will be after 3 and 1 clear i hope you got this clear just now okay everyone so this is how you will do questions of page replacement i have told you all the three page replacements that you can that can be asked from you in your exam okay now moving on to the next question what is the next question This is the question of your TLB translation look aside buffer. ठीक है. So what they are saying in a paging system, it takes thirty nanosecond to search translation look aside buffer and ninety ninety nanoseconds to access the main memory. So they are saying if the TLB hit ratio is seventy percent, effective memory access time is. Try to solve it. Right side removal optimal, left side removal for LRU. right side removal right side yeah for optimal and left side yes yes you are correct roslin for lru check left hand side and for optimal check right hand side okay this is the one you can remember like this okay so try to do this question everyone and then we will discuss it what is this question what is it saying Raghuveer, now your doubt is clear. How to remove the frame? Okay, Ritu is saying option number A. Okay, forty nanoseconds. Okay. C okay B okay So let us see the correct answer is option number B that is 147 nanoseconds okay now before discussing this let us see the um, this diagram this diagram is visible to all everyone can see this diagram or is it bit blur see now what happen is what is the basic idea that you have to keep in mind while solving tlb question is this is your cpu okay now cpu CPU has generated a logical address. Remember that CPU generates a logical address. Okay. Now CPU generated this logical address. Now what will happen is we will try to find whether this page is present in cache memory or not. For now, our cache memory is this TLB. Okay. So what is it saying that CPU generated a logical address? I'll write it here. This is that you will understand more. Okay. CPU generated a logical address. and then we will check whether this page whether this page is present in cache that is at tlb or not okay so for this first we have to search tlb okay first step is search this tlb okay now there is a certain amount of time that will be taken while searching this tlb now suppose my page is present in tlb okay now it is present here so what i will do it will become a tlb hit if my page is present in tlb so it will become a hit then what will happen is i will send this page and i will check in the main memory i will check in the memory where this page is present okay so what i am trying to explain that first cpu generated an address okay and the address generated by cpu is your logical address 
okay then what happened was this address will be checked whether it belongs to the cash or not whether it belongs to cash so for checking this what i have to do i have to search my tlb okay now suppose that yes the page is there in the tlb okay if my page is there in the tlb what will happen is then i will go to the memory and bring the page from there so when i have a hit when i have a tlb hit how much access i have to do first i access your tlb and then i access your memory okay so whenever we will have a tlb we whenever we will have a hit what we will do first we will access the tlb because first we will search whether our page lies in this tlb or not then only we will decide whether it is a hit or a miss so if we found the page in tlb this means that it contains the information where this page is present in the memory so it will directly lead us to that place okay so that is why one hit means that one access to tlb plus one access to memory okay now what happens if my page is not present in cache again how will i decide whether this is present or not i have to search tlb right suppose suppose if my this is my tlb okay this is my tlb and it contains 2 6 and 9 values okay and the page here that i want to search is 8 up if i want to find whether this 8 belongs to this tlb or not i have to search this tlb hit or miss to baat ki baat hogi hit hoga to wo different case hoga miss hua to wo different case hua but first i have to search this tlb right so this is what they are saying first you have to search the tlb now you know that in this tlb the required page is not present so when this page is not present then i will go to this page table ठीक है, so first I access the TLB, then I search the for this page table, and then after TLB miss, I will search that page into the memory. So if I have a TLB miss, how much memory I have to access for a TLB miss? First I have to search the TLB, then two times the memory. Why two times? Because first is for your page table, and second is for your memory. ठीक है, so I have to access this two times. Two times the memory will be accessed. Okay, so now that is why that is why the formula that effective memory access time for effective memory access time will be what? Effective memory access time means how much memory, how much time, effective time will be taken to access this whole procedure. So first was if I have a hit TLB hit के लिए what will happen is that first i will access the tlb and then what i will do i will then i will access the memory okay this is in case of tlb hit but what happens if this there is a tlb miss so for a tlb miss what will happen is for tlb miss for tlb miss what will happen first i have to access tlb and then i have to access two times the memory i hope this is clear to everyone this formula is clear to everyone okay so remember this formula now let's try to solve our question what was the question given to us the question that they gave us was that it takes 30 nanoseconds to search the tlb so time taken to search tlb is 30 nanoseconds and time taken to access the main memory in how much time i can access main memory that is your 90 nanosecond tlb hit is what tlb is 70% so i can write it as 0.7 so what will be miss miss is 1 minus hit okay so it will be 1 minus 0.7 that will be 0.3 now what i have to do i just have to simply put this into the formula so what is the formula effective memory access time is equal to what is the hit hit is 0.7 and what was tlb access time plus main memory access time plus what is the miss here miss is 0.3 and then what is the formula tlb access time plus 
टू टाइम्स मेन मेमोरी एक्सेस टाइम सो वेन यू विल सोल्व दिस यू विल गेट योर आंसर एज वन फोर्टी सेवन नैनो सेकेंड्स एंड दिस विल बी योर फॉर्मूला फॉर ईच एंड एवरी केस इफ योर केस इज ऑफ टी एल बी दिस विल बी योर फॉर्मूला फॉर ईच एंड एवरी क्वेश्चन ऑफ टी एल बी आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू एवरी वन ठीक है नाउ आई हैव द सेम क्वेश्चन फॉर यू दैट केम इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी पेपर ओके दिस वॉज दिस इज योर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी पेपर क्वेश्चन दिस वन ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट एंड आई होप कि यू विल गिव द राइट आंसर बट स्टिल नो प्रॉब्लम नहीं आया तो भी दे इज नो इश्यू जस्ट ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट ओके एंड द टाइम स्टार्ट नाउ Yes, everyone. What was the answer? Just remember the formula and put these values into the formula. Direct, you will get the answer. There is nothing in this question. Just remember the formula. okay b and what about others okay तृप्ति चेक योर कैलकुलेशन दे इज सम मिस्टेक इन योर कैलकुलेशन सो दिस इज द फॉर्मूला एंड नाउ आई सब्सिट्यूट द वैल्यूज हेयर सो वॉट विल कम हिट इज वॉट एटी परसेंट दैट इज जीरो पॉइंट एट देन वॉट इज योर टी एल बी टी एल बी इज योर फिफ्टीन नैनो सेकेंड प्लस मेमोरी इज वन फिफ्टी नैनो सेकेंड then what is your miss miss is 1 minus 0.8 then what is the tlb 15 plus 2 times 150 theek okay? hai so when i will solve it i will get 195 nano second so the correct answer is option b okay understood everyone this is how you will solve the question of these types that is your tlb type there is nothing in it so this is simple question of tlb clear okay right 195 is the correct answer now moving on to the next question this again question is of your page replacement algorithm we have not done a question of p4 that is first in first out so i just found it and I added it now they are what they are saying they have first done the question with three page frames and then they have done the question with four page frames okay so you have to do the question twice one with three page frames and another one with four page frames so try to do this question and then we will discuss the answer b b b <clears throat> okay what about others
B, okay. B, everyone is getting B as the answer. Ma'am, if you increase page frame, page frame, page fault become increased or decreased. See, uh, Roshan, now in case of FIFO, there is a problem that what happens even if we increase the page frame sometimes number of page fault increases okay and this is your Bellardi's anomaly okay this is what is your Bellardi's anomaly whatever pronunciation you can use here what it happened it says that in FIFO if I increase the page frame if I increase the number of page frame the number of page faults increases okay this is a case of FIFO only okay so now let's check what is the correct answer. The correct answer is option number D. That is 9 and 10. So first let's check for 3 page frames. How to do for 3 page frames? I have 0. I will enter here. I have 1. I will enter here. I have 2. I will enter here. So this is a miss. This is a miss. This is a miss. Now what about 3? 3 will be a miss and it will replace 0. Why 0? Because it is first in first out. So 0 was the first element to enter. That's why I will remove the element 0. Okay, so 0 is removed again. Then 1. So 1 is already present. So it will be a hit. Then about 4. Now what element will I delete for 4? What I will delete in case of 4 everyone? Tell me. One, one or three. Okay, so if I delete now one here, why one I will delete because one was the first to enter. That is why one will get deleted. One is a hit. Okay, so one is a hit now. 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 4, 0, 1, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0. Okay, so now what will happen? I will delete this 4. I will delete this 1. Okay, so now this is again a miss. Now what about 0? What I will delete for 0? I will delete 2 for 0. Again a miss. Now for 1, what I will delete for 1? I will delete 3. So again a miss. Now for 2, what I will delete? I will delete 4. Right? Mm -mm -mm. Good evening. Good evening. But ma'am, one came later. Yes, just wait. Let me check this thing. Uh, first in, first out. If I have to remove this. Wait. This is there. This is there. This is there. And this is there. Okay. Now what I have. I have this. I have removed this. I have removed this. I have removed this. I have removed. I have this with me and I have 0. So, I have done this 3 and I have replaced this 3 with 0. Correct. What about 4? Uh, 0 is also replaced with 3. Uh, no. Achha. Okay. Everyone, I just missed 0 here and nobody told me. Wait, 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 wait. See everyone, see here. 0, 1, 2 we entered with the miss. Okay, up 3 ayah. So, 3 ke liye what we will replace? We will replace this 0, right? So, we it is a miss again. Now, what about this 0? This 0 is also a... This 0 is also a miss because 0 is not here. So, what I will replace? I will replace this 1 with 0. 
Why? Because one was the second one to enter. So again a miss here. ठीक है एवरी वन प्लीज पे अटेंशन हेयर ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस थिंग आई एल एक्सप्लेन अगेन सी आई जस्ट मिस अ एलिमेंट एंड दैट्स वाई दी प्रॉब्लम केम सी एवरी वन जस्ट फोकस हेयर जीरो वन टू थ्री सो जीरो आई एंटर्ड वन आई एंटर्ड एंड टू आई एंटर्ड सो दिस इज अ मिस दिस इज अ मिस दिस इज अ मिस देन वॉट अबाउट थ्री सो वी सिंस वी आर यूजिंग फी फोर दैट इज फर्स्ट इन फर्स्ट आउट सो आई विल रिमूव दिस जीरो फ्रॉम हेयर एंड आई विल एंटर द थ्री हेयर सो अगेन अ मिस now for zero now zero is not present in my page frame in my page in my frame so what will happen zero will be a page fault but at what place zero will come zero will come at place of one so i will replace this one with zero so again a miss now what about one so one will be replaced because one is not present here so one will be replaced by two because two is first one first in first out so two ki jagah what will come one will come again a miss ठीक है देन फोर नाउ व्हाट व्हाट विल बी रिमूव्ड फॉर फोर थ्री विल बी रिमूव्ड फॉर फोर व्हाई थ्री बिकॉज थ्री इज द वन दैट केम बिफोर जीरो एंड वन क्लियर सो दिस मींस दैट फोर विल बी योर अगेन मिस नाउ दिस जीरो इज अ हिट एंड दिस वन इज अ हिट बिकॉज दे आर ऑलरेडी प्रेजेंट ओके देन वी सी टू नाउ व्हाट विल फॉर व्हाट आई विल एंटर टू व्हाट आई हैव टू रिमूव फॉर टू I will remove this zero for two. Okay, so again a miss. Then for three, what will I remove? For three, I will remove this one. So again a miss. And four is already present in the table. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine page faults are there for your three frames. Now tell me, is this clear, everyone? This is clear. But ma'am, zero came after four. Zero came after four. Zero came after four. Where, where zero? This, this, this zero. I'm talking about this zero. This one. This one replaced this three. Sorry, this one replaced. Ha! Huh? This one replaced one with it. The two is it out clear? Or should I repeat again? This zero will replace this one. because this 3 has replaced this 0 so now in my page table i was not having 0 anywhere so now 0 will be a miss and 0 will replace this 1 if it is there then the place is updated if it is there then the place is updated if it is there we just leave it as it is if miss is there then we update the place miss means in 401 yeah 0 and 1 are already present in my table 0 and 1 were already present in my table that's why i will not change my table and i will name it as a hit okay chalo there's some confusion let us look again i'll draw this again try to try to put attention here okay i'll draw this again try to understand this see first we have this element 0 so i will enter 0 here this is a miss then i will enter 1 again a miss then i will enter 2 again a miss theek okay? hai now i have element 3 theek okay? hai if i have element 3 so what will happen what will happen is ki ab aapke paas 0 1 and 2 are already there in the frame and you you don't have an extra frame because you have three page frames so this means that 3 has to replace someone so what someone will three replace three will replace this zero why why because zero is the one that came first so i will remove this zero add this three and three will become a miss why because i have to remove someone from this point from this page frame then i have zero here now what will happen now zero is not present in my page frames in any of my page frames i don't have zero so i have to enter this zero now now what i will do i will remove this one and i will enter zero here why i will remove this one because one was the first element among these present elements to came to come in the table now i have one i have removed one so i need to enter one so one will replace this two again a miss now four Four will replace this three. Why? Because zero and one were the elements that were just now entered, and three was the one that entered before them. So four is will be four will replace three. Four will be a miss. Now see this zero. 
डू आई नीड टू एंटर जीरो अगेन इन माई टेबल नो Why? Because zero is already present in my table, so I will not update this. I will simply write it as a hit. Okay. Then I have one. Now what? One one is already present in this block in this frame, so I will write it as a hit and I will not change it. Now for two, two will replace what? Two will replace this four. Why? Two will replace this four. <clears throat> so two now what will replace two will replace what see now this is the confusion whether two will replace this element or this element or this element see now zero and one were the elements that were entered before four what they have been used after four no matter what happens they were entered before four so I will delete this zero and I will write two here so again a miss now for three. Three is I either it will come at place of four or at one. One has been used after four, but it was entered before four. Try to try to uh, keep this thing in mind. One was used after four, but this one was the one that was entered before four. So I will replace this one with three. So again a miss. And four is already present inside the table, so it is a hit. I hope this is clear now. Okay, now let's check for frame num frame where we have four frames. Okay, now try to do this. We have zero here, so zero I enter here. One I will enter here. Two I will enter here. Three I will enter here. Okay, this is a miss. This is a miss. This is a miss, and this is a miss. Now zero is already present in my one of the frames, so this is a hit. One is already present in one of the frames again a hit. Now what about four? What will four replace? Now tell me, four will replace what element? Four will replace what element? Correct. Four will replace this zero. Why four will replace this zero? Because zero was the first element to enter in the page frame. Though zero has been used here, but still I will delete that element that has entered first. No matter whether it has been used or not. Okay. So that is why four will replace this zero, and it will be treated as a miss. Now zero. Now I have zero. So now what will zero will remove? Which element? Zero will remove your one. So this will also be a miss. Now one will remove which element? One will remove this two. So one is your miss element. Two. Two will replace what element? Two will replace your three. So miss. Three. Three will replace what? Three will replace four. So miss. And four. Four will replace this zero. So a miss. So how many elements? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten page faults are there for your this four page frame. So nine and ten respectively. So D is the answer. Clear, everyone? This is how we solve these questions. Okay. Everyone, doubt is clear. So now, now we have discussed the questions of page replacement. Okay, there are so many PYQs on page replacement. Okay, so now you have to do this homework. That try all the PYQs of page replacement. Okay, then try the PYQs of TLB, and from my previous. Session that is of November twenty twenty P Y Q. There is the first video or the second video. I am not sure. I have discussed the question of your this scheduling. If you want to see that, you can see and you can get an idea how do we solve the questions on this scheduling. Okay. So try the questions of page replacement T L B and your this structure. If you find any question on this structure, this is a homework for all of you. Please try these questions because the concept is same. 
ठीक है ओके आई सेंड द पी डी एफ आई विल सेंड द पी डी एफ नो वरीज ठीक है द कंसेप्ट इज सेम आई सेंड द पी डी एफ टूडे ओके इफ यू वॉन्ट द पी डी एफ नाउ यू वॉन्ट द पी डी एफ इन इंस्टॉलमेंट्स और यू वॉन्ट द पी डी एफ ऑल टूगेदर मतलब इफ आई कंप्लीटेड दिस फर्स्ट लेक्चर तो यू वॉन्ट द पी डी एफ एट दैट सेम डे और यू यू कैन वेट फॉर थ्री डेज एंड टेक द पी डी एफ एट द लास्ट वॉट डू वॉन्ट एवरी वन वॉट इज प्रेफरेबल अकॉर्डिंग टू यू टूगेदर मतलब एट द लास्ट ठीक है सो इफ यू आई होप यू हैव रिटर्न डाउन ऑल द इम्पॉर्टेंट इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट आई हैव वी हैव डिस्कस टूडे दैट इज फर्स्ट योर पेज रिप्लेसमेंट वन देन सेकेंड योर टी एल बी फॉर्मूला ठीक है फॉर्मूला इज सेम फॉर ईच एंड एवरी क्वेश्चन ऑफ टी एल बी ट्राई टू डू दैट ठीक है सो एंड दिस स्ट्रक्चर इफ यू दिस स्ट्रक्चर ऑल्सो ठीक है Yes, uh, I'll I'll try to add theory question as well. Uh, don't worry. But mostly from your uh, operating system, no questions are basically on on your uh, numericals only. Mostly, okay. If I'll find any th uh, theory type questions, I'll add it. Okay. So now for tomorrow, what we will be studying to so practice these questions. Okay, everyone, practice these questions. There are many questions on page replacement. You will find on TLB. You will find from previous year questions. Try to solve them. Okay. I have discussed one question on uh, <clears throat> on your I note concept. Okay, in this uh, in this PDF, I have discussed one question that is on your I note concept of I note. Okay, so try to look that question in this video, November twenty twenty PYQ. There you will find this question and try to understand it. We will discuss questions related to it. Okay, don't worry, but still you will have an idea on how to solve those questions. So please do check that video as well. because it contains certain 3 to 4 questions of os are there in that video okay and that's why i have not discussed those questions in this week in this video <clears throat> what happened what happened krishna what happened what help do you need okay so now tomorrow we will be starting with cpu scheduling okay so come prepared with the concepts of cpu scheduling and then i will see what other concepts i can add but just uh, revise the concepts of cpu scheduling okay what happened krishna dr krishna and what happened why what help do you need See, I am uh, I am sending the PDF uh, after ev or not every class, but after we complete one subject, I always send the PDF in the Telegram group. So please join that Telegram channel. You will need you will get the PDF there. Join the Telegram channel, and the link of that Telegram channel is this. Mm. This is the Telegram channel t dot m e slash digimento. and the name of the channel is digimento education so join that channel subscribe to it you will get the pdfs welcome saravan no thank you so much thank you so much saravan okay okay so join this channel you subscribe to this on your uh, telegram you will get the pdfs there i have sent the pdf of discrete mathematics uh Yes, I have sent the PDFs for discrete mathematics. I have sent the PDFs for DBMS, I think. Okay, and rest all I will send it. Uh, I am not sure about TOC and all, but I have sent the PDFs for these two sessions. And I will send as we complete our operating system. I will send the PDF operating system as well. Okay. So for now, what you have to do, you have to first you have to go and subscribe to this channel on Telegram. Okay. Second, you have to practice the PYQ based on the concepts that we have completed today. बिकॉज एट दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम यू विल कम्प्लीट द सेशन तो आपको बहुत ज्यादा याद रहेंगे कंसेप्ट सो डू नॉट वेस्ट योर टाइम एंड डू रिवाइज दो ठीक है टूमोरो वी विल मीट सेम सिक्स पी एम विथ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम पी वाई क्यूज पार्ट टू डू जस्ट कम ऑन टाइम एवरी वन ओके एंड बी डू द रिविजन एंड वॉट ऑल डाउट यू हैव जस्ट आस्क मी विद इन अ डे और टू आई ट्राई टू रिप्लाई टू एवरी वन whatever doubt you send okay so try to be on time and take care everyone okay good night everyone thank you so much good night
Hello everyone. Uh, just as you will join, then I'll see whether my voice is audible now or not. This is audible, right, everyone? Good evening, just now. Good evening. Okay, now I think the voice is clear. Okay. Let others also join and then we will start our class. Okay. If there's any problem in audio, please just let me know. Good evening, Swapnil. Good evening. Okay. So, uh, we have already uh, discussed few topics of our operating system and these were your... Good evening, Priyanka. Okay, these were the topics that we have covered were page, page replacement. Many of you have sent you some doubts. Okay, so I will uh, revert back to it as soon as I get time. Okay, now uh, today we will start with few other topics and one of them that I have taken for today is your this one that is your paging. Okay, paging is one topic that I have taken for now. Okay, so we will discuss the basic but first Try to do this question yourself and see to it whether you are able to do it or not. And then we will see that how we can do these type of questions. Okay. So now they are saying that a memory management system has 64 pages with 512 bytes page size. Okay. Then they are saying physical memory consists of 32 page frames. Then they are asking number of bits required in logical and physical addresses are. So try to do this question. Hello Harsh. Ticket. Try to do this question and then we will discuss how we can do this type of question. And the time starts now. Okay, so what is the answer according to you all? C. Okay. So computer classes for learners is saying option number C. Alok is saying option number C. What about others? Correct. The correct answer is option number C. Okay. Now, before proceeding further with this type of questions, let us discuss it, what is this and how do we, uh, what is the theory behind all this, okay. So, now if you try to look here, everyone, there are two type of addresses, okay, that are generated. One is your logical address and another one is your physical address, okay. Logical to we also say virtual address. Logical is also known as virtual address. So, it is virtual or logical address, okay. So, now the logical address or the virtual address is generated by CPU. Okay. And physical address is the address that is located in the memory. Okay. The first point that you have to remember is that logical address is generated by CPU and physical address is what the address present in your memory. Then we have one thing that is address space. Now, what is mean that? All the logical addresses that are required by the CPU for a single program. Okay. So, it they all are collected together and they are collectively known as logical address space. So, logical address space is set of all logical addresses generated by CPU in reference to a program. 
Similarly, physical address is the set of physical address mapped to a corresponding logical address. Okay, so this means that for every logical address, you will have a physical address with you. You will be having a mapping, and that will be a physical address. Then, what is the visibility of these addresses? User can view the logical address, but not the physical address. Physical address is the address that is not known to us. Okay, user can never view the physical address of program. Generation we have already studied that logical address is generated by CPU, and physical address is computed by MMU. MMU is what? MMU is your memory management unit. In the next slide, I have added about this. We'll see what is MMU in that slide. Okay, and what is the access? the user can use the logical address to access the physical address and the user can indirectly access the physical address but not directly it is written but not directly so try to understand these points everyone that we have suppose this is my program okay this is the program here and now this program will go into the cpu for execution okay now in in this cpu a logical address will be generated okay logical addresses will be generated and these addresses are viewable to the user okay then we have this mmu this is a hardware you know, this is a hardware mmu now what is mmu mmu is your memory management unit okay memory management unit what does this mmu does this mmu is used for mapping the logical address to your physical address okay mmu is used for mapping the logical address to your physical address then what will happen is this logical address will be mapped to what to your physical address this is your memory and in your memory the addresses that are present these are known as the physical addresses okay this is basically the whole concept behind this logical address and your physical address ठीक now let us look in the next slide what they are saying the mapping from logical to physical address is done by memory management unit this is your hardware ठीक है this is a hardware device and the mapping technique is known as paging so remember this the hardware device that is used is mmu that is memory management unit and the mapping technique is known as paging okay then physical address space physical address space is divided into fixed num number of fixed size blocks so what they are saying that this is my logical address space okay las is there this is las logical address space and this is this pas physical address space okay now these are divided into fixed size blocks these blocks are of fixed size okay fixed size blocks now each of this block is a here also pas is also divided into fixed size blocks okay in case of las that is in case of logical address we name this we name this block this particular block as a page this is a page ठीक है इन केस ऑफ एल एस एंड इन केस ऑफ दिस पी ए एस फिजिकल एड्रेस स्पेस दिस इज योर फ्रेम वी कॉल इट अ फ्रेम इन पी ए एस एंड अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट कंक्लूजन इज दैट पेज साइज साइज ऑफ वन पेज इज ऑलवेज इक्वल टू फ्रेम साइज ठीक है डू नॉट फॉरगेट दिस पेज साइज इज ऑलवेज इक्वल टू फ्रेम साइज ठीक है दिस इज वॉट इज रिटर्न हेयर in physical address space a fixed size block is there and we call it as frames and in logical address space fixed size blocks are known as pages and the page size is equal to the frame size clear everyone this is clear okay now moving back to our question if this theory is clear to you tell me okay if there's any issue any doubt just ask me right over here i'll explain it to you again theek okay? hai now moving back to our question what they are saying they are saying that let's try to write it down everything what is given to us they have given us number of pages number of pages are what number of pages are 64 then number of frames they have given us number of frames is what number of frames is 32 and what is the page size page size is 512 bytes clear 
and we know that page size is equal to what it is equal to frame size so this is the frame size as well now we have to calculate the number of bits that are required in your frame in your logical address and physical address so try to remember this formula everyone number of pages is equal to logical address space divided by page size okay this is your formula for number of pages and number of frames is equal to physical address space divided by frame size okay remember these formulas these formulas will help you in doing these type of questions so this is the formula for number of pages if number of pages is if they are asking and this is the formula for number of frames if number of frames are what they are asking okay another thing that you need to remember is what is it it is that logical address space is always into 2 raised to power x okay 2 raised to power x and logical address if i talk about only logical address it is x bits so remember this important term as well that if they are asking you logical address space it is 2 raised to power x and if they are asking you logical address it is only this x this x is the answer okay now let's see the question how we will do it okay now let's calculate las first we will calculate las and then we will calculate la what are the number of pages 64 i hope this is visible right okay 64 is equal to las las is what we have to calculate upon page size what is the page size 512 clear so now what i will get i will get las as 64 into 512 64 is 2 raised to power 6 and 512 is 2 raised to power 9 right so when i will add these powers it will be 2 raised to power 15 so what will be my la logical address will be of how many bits 15 bits this is what will be my la okay so from the un from the option itself, I can see that 15 is only in one part that is here. Now what is number of frames? Let's calculate number of frames as well. So number of frames are how many? 32. 32 is equal to PAS upon frame size. Now frame size is not given to me but I know that frame size is equal to page size. We have already studied that. So it will become 512 bytes. So now my PAS will be what? PAS will be 32 into 512, right? 32 is 2 raised to power 5 and 512 is 2 raised to power 9. So, again I will get 2 raised to power 14. So, my PA will be 14 bits. Now, tell me is this clear everyone? This is how you will do these type of questions. Any doubt anyone? Okay, so remember these formulas please this is very important just try to note it down somewhere i'll give you this pdf as well but still it is better that you have this written with you somewhere okay because when you will do the question it is not possible every time to open the pdf and look for the formula so it will be better for you if you will write it somewhere with with uh, in your notes or in your copy okay now moving forward to the next question hmm, yeah this is the same question and I hope that everybody of you will give the right answer. So try to solve it and try to give, uh, try to apply the formulas that I have given you and you will be able to get the right answer. And the time starts now. Now here they have given you a logical address space is considered of 8 pages and 1024 words mapped with the memory of 32 frames. So how many bits are there in the physical address? Very simple question. Just maybe you may get a little bit confusion may be there because of this sentence or the language in which it is written. But if you will keep a bit concentration, you will get the answer correct. Okay, okay, 
I'll explain, Rosalind. Just wait. I'll explain. So the correct answer is fifteen bits. Okay. Now in memory, okay. Just remember this. Memory may we have the unit. The unit can either be in bits or bytes. Okay. We can have bits or bytes, or we can have the memory unit as words. Okay. Treated as a memory unit only. मैम प्रश्न हिंदी में लिखी हमको इंग्लिश नहीं आती ओके दीपक इट इज बिट डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज आई नीड टू फाइंड द हिंदी वर्जन नाउ बिकॉज मोस्टली पीपल हेयर आर ऑफ इंग्लिश ओनली दैट्स वाई आई स्पीक आई एम ट्राई टू मोस्टली स्पीक इंग्लिश एज वेल चलो ओके दीपक आई एल सी टू इट आई एल सी टू योर डाउट एंड आई डेफिनेटली ट्राई टू वर्क फॉर इट ठीक है नाउ सी दिस वर्ड्स नथिंग इट डज नॉट मीन एनीथिंग इट्स सिंपली अ यूनिट मेमोरी यूनिट इट इज ठीक है instead of bytes or bits they have written words here okay so now if i try to solve this question again very simple they are asking how many bits are there in physical address so what i'll do i'll write number of frames is equal to physical address space upon frame size correct and the simple substitution is there now 32 frames are there p a s upon what is the frame size frame size is 1024 Words is there, so I'll just ignore words. It will simply be one zero two four. Okay. So now my PAS will be what? It will be thirty two into one zero two four. Thirty two is two raised to power five, and one zero two four is two raised to power ten. That will give me fifteen bits for your PA. And if they would have asked me PAS, okay. Try to understand here. If they would have asked what is PAS. So P A S that is physical address space would have been two raised to power fifteen. Okay, but they are asking how many bits are there in the physical address. So that is why our answer will be fifteen only. Okay, remember this and try and read it very carefully. Ki what they are asking? Whether they are asking number of bits in physical address or they are asking number of bits in the physical address space. Okay, so do not just remove just uh, understand the question clearly. What they are trying to ask you. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. Now this is the question on memory management unit, and I hope if you would have listened to me very clearly, you will be able to give the right answer. So try to do this, and the time starts now. ओके ओके स्वाति ट्राई अरुण एंड स्वाति प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट द क्वेश्चन इज एंड देन गिव द आंसर वी हैव डिस्कस इट जस्ट नाउ आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री राइट नाउ जस्ट फ्यू मिनट्स बिफोर आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट मेमोरी मैनेजमेंट यूनिट इज अ हार्डवेयर डिवाइस राइट इट इज अ हार्डवेयर डिवाइस एंड इट इज यूज फॉर इट इज यूज फॉर मैपिंग द वर्चुअल एड्रेस दैट इज योर लॉजिकल एड्रेस आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट वर्चुअल एड्रेस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज लॉजिकल एड्रेस राइट वर्चुअल एड्रेस टू फिजिकल एड्रेस जस्ट नाउ आई हैव टोल्ड यू सो आई होप नाउ यू विल गेट दिस पॉइंट एंड नाउ यू विल नॉट डू इट रॉन्ग क्लियर एवरी मन ठीक है, सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री नॉट टू नॉट वन नॉट फोर सिंपल ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री इट इज अ हार्डवेयर डिवाइस योर मेमोरी मैनेजमेंट यूनिट इज अ हार्डवेयर डिवाइस डू नॉट फॉर गेट दिस क्लियर नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ दिस इज द क्वेश्चन ऑन मैच द फॉलोइंग ठीक है नाउ वॉट इज दिस इफ यू नो वॉट अ सिंगल थिंग इज ठीक है अगर आपको वो चीज समझ पाएगी वॉट अ सिंगल थिंग इज यू बी एबल टू डू दी क्वेश्चन राइट सो ट्राई टू डू दिस एंड देन वी विल डिस्कस इट and the time starts now okay
yes bindu yesterday there was no class yesterday there was no class okay so now let's see the correct answer the correct answer is option number 2 everyone mostly everyone gave the right answer but see now let's talk about first thing that is your interrupt okay we all know that interrupt is a type of a signal that is sent to the cpu and as soon as an interrupt is received by the cpu cpu stops it working and if that it if that interrupt is of high priority it will give that it will give the cpu to this interrupt for execution right if my interrupt is of high priority okay so this means that interrupt is a signal that is sent to the cpu so this means that interrupt is your part 2 okay now if this is also not clear to you if by this interrupt also you cannot solve the question we have studied just now that virtual address space or virtual address basically it is a set of all the addresses right so this will be somewhat somewhere in memory only addresses are stored in memory only so this c will be linked to option number 4 okay so the correct answer if i see here will be second now what is this disk this is your file system how can i say file system because this is the place where all the files are stored where all your file or all the file reading file reading is done here okay so this is related to your file system cpu will be related to thread why thread because the threads are generated in the cpu okay so that is why the correct answer is option number 2 that is a 3 b 1 c 4 d second so i have always told you that for match the following questions what you have to do you simply have to check for one of the part okay if you look for any one of the following and you know that this one i am sure with that help you can do the entire question even if you are unaware of any of the following questions okay any of the following terms okay so try to do the question with this the correct option is answer is option number 2 now moving forward to the next question now this question is basically on your cpu scheduling okay what they are saying consider three cpu intensive processes which require 10 20 30 units of time and arrive at 0 to 6 respectively so they are saying how many context switches are needed if the operating system implements shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm do not count the context which is at time 0 and at the end so try to solve it and then you will discuss it in detail okay the time starts now comprehensive class we need we need what is comprehensive class i'm not able to get this term Can you please uh, explain to me what is comprehensive class? <clears throat> okay. Okay. So the correct answer is everyone option. number or let's let this timer be end then i'll see till then any other who want to give the answer okay the correct answer is option number b that is 2 now before proceeding forward let us just discuss what is cpu scheduling and what are the algorithms that we have okay so if you see here cpu scheduling may what happens is that there are different different processes and those processes are need to be scheduled in the cpu for execution this is basically what you can understand by cpu scheduling okay now there are various algorithms that help us in order to schedule the processes in the cpu okay the first one is your fcfs now before moving forward there are certain uh, there are two types of algorithm basically if we not talk about what are those there are two types of algorithm one is your preemptive algorithm another is your non preemptive algorithm theek okay? hai so one is your preemptive and another one is your non preemptive now what does this terms mean these terms means that suppose i have a cpu theek okay? hai i have a cpu here this is my cpu and process 
पी वन इज इन साइड माई सी टू ठीक है ठीक है माई प्रोसेस पी वन इज एग्जीक्यूटिंग इन साइड द सी पी यू नाउ वॉट हैपन्स दैट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट दिस प्रियमटिव वन इफ आई टॉक अबाउट दिस प्रियमशन इफ आई यूज इफ आई यूजिंग द एलगोथम दैट इज फॉलोइंग दैट इज हैविंग दिस प्रियमशन थिंग ठीक है नाउ वॉट हैपन्स हेयर इज दैट सपोज एनी प्रोसेस पी टू हैज अ राइट ठीक है नाउ वॉट हैपन इज इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रियमशन वॉट इट विल हैपन इफ आई टॉक अबाउट having p2 is important than p1 so what will happen if p1 is the total time for p1 is 10 seconds and for p2 is 5 seconds theek okay? hai now in case of preemption what will happen suppose p1 has executed up to executed up to 5 seconds now p p1 has executed up to 5 seconds now as soon as t equal to 6 seconds at time equal to 6 seconds process p2 arrived and cpu said that okay process p2 is important than p1 so it will send this p1 out theek okay? hai it will send this p1 out and it will insert this p2 inside theek okay? hai that means that now p1 has executed up to 5 seconds theek okay? hai so this much means now remaining time is 5 seconds for p1 and now p2 will execute and when p2 will execute completely then i will take this p1 inside again this is what your preemption and what is non preemptive non preemptive means that even if p2 has arrived p2 has to wait until p1 uh, executes completely p1 will not be removed out from the cpu until unless it is not completed this is your non preemptive i hope this is clear to everyone what is non preemption what is preemption ठीक है प्रियमशन इज बेसिकली दैट आई विल टर्मिनेट द सेशन आई विल टर्मिनेट द प्रोसेस दैट इज इनसाइड माय सीपीयू एज सून एज अ न्यू प्रोसेस अकर्स एंड इट इज ऑफ हाई इंपॉर्टेंस और इट इज ऑफ द थिंग दैट इज दैट विल बी डिसाइडेड अकॉर्डिंग टू योर एल्गोरिथम द फर्स्ट एल्गोरिथम दैट वी हैव इज फर्स्ट कम फर्स्ट सर्व ठीक है नाउ फर्स्ट कम फर्स्ट सर्व मींस दैट बेस्ड ऑन द अराइवल टाइम the process that will come first will be the one to enter the cpu first it is non preemptive in nature second is your shortest job first that is the one having the shortest burst time job means your burst time time taken to execute the process theek okay? hai so that is your again non preemptive now we have a version of shortest job first and that version is your srtf ठीक है एस आर टी एफ दैट इज शॉर्टेस्ट रिमेनिंग टाइम फर्स्ट शॉर्टेस्ट रिमेनिंग टाइम फर्स्ट ओके देन वी हैव राउंड रॉबिन देन वी हैव राउंड रॉबिन राउंड रॉबिन इज ऑल्सो योर प्रियमटिव वाई इट इज प्रियमटिव बिकॉज इट हैज अ कंसेप्ट ऑफ टाइम क्वांटम what is this time quantum this means that on the basis of certain second time quantum is basically a time slice that is given to us and it says that other than this time slice my process will not execute if my time time quantum is 1 second theek okay? hai so each and every process will execute in the cpu for 1 second and then it will move out other process will go inside the time uh, cpu and then it will move out this is your time quantum thing theek okay? hai then what we have then the next term that we have is your priority now priority is preemptive also and priority is non preemptive also both type of priorities we have so it is it will be given to us what priority we want what type of priority we want are in our algorithm theek okay? hai so this is basically your cpu scheduling a brief overview of cpu scheduling uh, yes we need i do have uh, classes other than uh, youtube and that is on uh for that you have to uh, call on the number i'll show you after the class theek okay? hai uh it is on digimento theek okay? hai digimento platform is there i take my live classes daily over there we have uh, zoom sessions theek okay? hai right now i am covering i have covered yes uh, yes you will get the pdf yes you will get the pdf theek okay? hai so what i was saying yeah so zoom pe we have classes daily and uh, i have already covered software engineering i have covered this discrete mathematics i have covered your toc and now i am covering the compiler okay so now we are doing compile compiler is the pro, uh, subject that is going on theek okay? hai so yes you can you have to pay for it and uh, i'll give you the number where you can call and you can get the other information for this theek okay? hai now let's move back to our uh 
सी अभी आई टेल यू टेलीग्राम चैनल हरी बाबू ठीक है आई टेल यू टेलीग्राम चैनल यू कैन ज्वाइन दैट यू कैन ज्वाइन दैट टेलीग्राम चैनल एंड ऑन दैट टेलीग्राम चैनल यू कैन गेट दी पी डी एफ ऑफ दीज नोट ठीक है नाउ मूविंग बैक टू अवर क्वेश्चन एवरी वन जो सी है दे आर सेम वी हैव थ्री इन थ्री प्रोसेस ठीक है सो वॉट वी विल डू वी विल मेक अ टेबल लाइक दिस ऑलवेज स्टार्ट योर क्वेश्चन बाई मेकिंग अ टेबल सो आई हैव पी वन पी टू एंड पी थ्री ठीक है आई हैव दीज थ्री प्रोसेसेस then try to make this type of table every time you start solving a question okay then your arrival time for p1 is 0 arrival time for p2 is 2 and arrival time of p3 is 6 what is the time that is taken to execute 10 20 and 30 theek hai now what they are saying you have to use srtf this is your shortest remaining time first so what i will do i will start by making a gan chart Gantt chart. ठीक है, this is the chart that we have to make every time while we solve the PYQs of OS. That scheduling OS, scheduling PYQs. ठीक है. So what happens is we will start with time equal to zero. Now when I see here, I will see that at time t equal to zero, the process that has arrived is P1. ठीक है. And the next process is arriving at time equal to two. So what will happen? I will execute this at time equal to two. I will execute this process P1. Clear? Now what will happen? That now it has executed up to two units. That is now remaining units are eight. Clear? Now at time t equal to two, I saw that p one and p two are there with me, and according to your shortest remaining time first, I will execute again this p one. Why? Because eight is less than twenty, and they are saying that use s r t f. So again I will execute s uh, p one. Up to time six, so I will up to again I will run this process for time six. This is again for P one. Okay. Now this means that this was two, and these are how many units? These are your four units. Two, three, four, five, four units. That means now my remaining times become four for process P one. Clear. Now at time t equal to six, all these three has occurred. Okay. Again I'll see which is the uh, shortest time. The shortest time of P1 again I'll execute the P1 for four times. That is up to ten. So again P1 will execute, and now my process will change. That is now I'll execute P2. P2 will execute completely because twenty is less than thirty. So P2 will execute up to twenty uh, time units. That is your time will become thirty, and here P3 will execute for the remaining time. That is your sixty. Tell me this is clear, everyone. And now what they are asking? They are asking how many context switches? Context switches are there. So what is context switch? Context switch basically is when you switch from one process to another. Context switch is that switching between two processes, two different processes. So now you will say that this was also a context switch. This was also context switch. No. Why no? Because we were executing P one only. We didn't change the process. so my context switches are this one and this one why because they are saying do not count the context switches at time 0 that is this one you don't have to count this one and at the end that is you don't have to count this one only two context switches are there and that is your this one and this one now tell me is this clear everyone is this clear to you any doubt anyone just ask me please clear everyone okay theek hai so remember this what they are saying and remember the algorithm and basically mostly in questions no in net They they don't ask you the whole question. There there's a very like very less chance that they'll ask you the entire question. Basically, they ask you the question where you don't have to do the complete uh, type of question. Why? Because it will take a time, lot of time. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. The next question is this one. We have already discussed this this question, but still I felt that is a, a different question from the previous one. So that's why I've added this. They are saying consider a disk pack. With thirty-two surfaces, sixty-four tracks, and five hundred twelve sectors per pack or track. This is this is basically track. Take a track here. Two fifty-six bytes of data are stored in a bit serial manner in a sector. 
so they are asking number of bits required to specify a particular sector in the disk so try to do this question and then we will discuss and the time starts now uh, arpita uh, see in the previous question no they have clearly mentioned that you don't have to count but there may be a possibility that they may give you specifically that you have to count then in that case you have to consider both of both of these context switches but yes by default if they are not mentioning it you will not count them but generally in case they mention it whether you have to count or not but by default yes you are right we don't count the count context which is at zero and at the end but if they have specially mentioned it in the question this means that there can be question sometimes where they will specially mention it that you have to count it so you have to look for it whether they have mentioned it or not if they have not mentioned then you don't have to count it but if they have mentioned then you have to do as per the question mentioned okay now what about this one yes what is the answer for this question everyone yes little confusion in switching mode okay swati we'll clear it just wait i'll clear it just uh, let's focus on this question then i'll explain again what is switching okay don't don't worry what is the answer for this question everyone Yes. Anybody doing this question or not? This is very easy. You don't have to do so much. You don't have to do so much calculation. Okay. First answer about D C. Okay. And what about others? C. Okay. Chalo. The correct answer is option number C. Good, everyone. Those who mentioned C, now see why. we have discussed that we have a platter theek okay? hai we have a platter and platter pe there are two surfaces one and two okay these are the surfaces now they are saying that you have 32 surfaces theek okay? hai and if this is my surface if this is my surface if i talk about this then inside this surface i have tracks these are my tracks right these are the tracks and inside these tracks i have these sectors right this is clear to everyone no this is the diagram that we have drawn on that day and we have discussed okay now what is saying they are asking you that how many bits will be required to specify a particular sector so for reaching the sector first i have to reach the surface so how many surface 32 surface then i have to reach the particular track so how many tracks 64 tracks and then i have to reach the particular sector then how many sectors 512 so now in order to find whenever you have to find number of bits you always have that remember this 2 raised to power something will always be this something will always be the number of bits okay so 2 raised to power 5 into 2 raised to power 6 into 2 raised to power 9 and it will be 5 plus 6 plus 9 it will be 2 raised to power 20 so the number of bits will become 20 bits always remember this if you have to find number of bits it is always 2 raised to power something and that something is the number of bits so that is why my answer is option number c 20 clear everyone this question is clear okay now there is one query that what is context switching that what is your context switching c what is switching basically what is switching switching is that when we switch from one place to another right we have used this term in very general way that i am switching from this job to another that is switching from one place to another shifting from one place to another okay now what happens in our cpu is that suppose p1 was running okay to uh, just wait okay p1 was running at t equal to 0 now at 0 at t equal to 0 p1 was running and at t equal to 2 p2 arrived okay now 
P2 is of high priority. Suppose P2 is of high priority and I have to run it. So what I will do? I will remove this P1 from here and at T equal to 2, I will shift, I will uh, enter, let I will let enter P2 into the CPU. Now this, this is, this line is known as context switching. Why? Because P1 was already in the CPU, but at time T equal to 2, I, the CPU switched from P1 to P2. So this is your context switching. I hope this is clear to you, Swati. This is context switching. Okay? But what would have happened, suppose at T equal to 2, P2 arrived and at T equal to 4, P3 arrived. But still, P2 is of high priority. So this is my T equal to 4. Again, I will run my P2 only. But this time, this will not be my context switch, not a context switch. Why? Because I am not shifting from one process to another. I am running the same processes in that period of time. If it would have been a case that I would have changed the processes, then a context switch would have occurred. But since the processes, both the processes are same, so that is why context switching will not occur. I hope now this is clear to you, Swati. And now the doubt that Hari Babu is saying that what about to see 256 bytes of data was just an information that was given to you that one sector is holding this much amount of data. It has nothing to do with how to how to reach to a particular sector. Okay, this was just given you in order to confuse you. You can say that this has nothing to do with your information that is required for calculating the number of bits because I have to reach a particular sector. Okay, I have to reach a sector. So for reaching a sector, all I have to go first inside the surface, then inside the track and then to a sector. Okay, so this 256 bytes of data is the information that is irrelevant to this question because they have just simply said that one sector is able to hold this much amount of data. This has nothing to do with your number of bits calculation. Clear? Now moving on to the next question. Now this is the question that is of your round robin. Okay, this, this is the question of round robin. So uh, try to do it everyone. Try to do this question. Time quantum is 4 millisecond and then we will discuss the answer. okay and what about others twelve okay a okay c correct the correct answer is option number c that is twelve c now what they are saying that we have the processes and we have the burst time now here arrival time is not given. So always remember when arrival time, when arrival time is not given to you, we will assume that all the processes arrived at same time. Okay? When arrival time is not mentioned to us and nothing has been mentioned to us regarding arrival time, we will assume that the, all processes has arrived at the same time. So that in that case, we will start always start from P1. Okay. So now let us make a chart. So time t equal to 0, p1 arrived. Now what is the time quantum? Time quantum is 4 millisecond. What this means that each process will execute at the time at 4, for 4 milliseconds only at a time. Okay? This is what they are saying that each process will execute for 4 millisecond only out of the given burst time at one point of time. Now that means that I will execute my first process p1 for 4 milliseconds. So how much time is remaining now? 5 minus 4, that is 1. So remaining time is 1. Clear? Now, what, how, what will happen? P2 will execute. Now P2 will execute for again 4 milliseconds, that is 8. Now these 4 milliseconds means 8. So now, how many time is remaining P2? 3. 
clear then our p3 will come p3 will again execute for 4 milliseconds the remaining time will become what remaining time will become 2 okay this is your p3 and now your p4 so p4 will execute here for 4 milliseconds and it will become 0 now they are asking what they are asking is they are asking waiting time for p4 now if you see here p4 arrived at 12 milliseconds right p4 arrived mala p4 Go, P4 arrived at 0, okay? but it got CPU at what time? It got CPU at T equal to 12 millisecond, right? At 12 millisecond, P4 got CPU for execution. So basically, P4 has to wait for how much amount of time? P4 has to wait for 12 milliseconds for its turn to get executed. This was what they were asking. So our answer will be option number C. Clear everyone? This thing is clear? And since they were asking only this much, so we will not proceed for further. We will leave our question here only. This is what they were asking only from us that what is the waiting time of P4. So P4 has to wait for 12 milliseconds before getting the CPU to execute. Clear everyone? This web point is clear. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. What is the next question? The next question is basically on your readers and writers problem. This is a synchronization problem. Okay. Now they are asking which of the following is true. Try to think a little bit and uh, just from a basic purpose. Okay. Matlab, from a basic uh, point of view, just try to understand this question. It has nothing to do with your operating system and all. Just try to think from a basic point of view. Okay. And then try to solve it. So the time starts now. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. So the correct answer is option number 1, A. That is 1 only is the correct. Now see, try to understand this point everyone. Suppose I have a process, I have a file. I have this file with me, okay? This is any file, file A I have. This is file, okay? Now there are two users, user 1 and user 2, okay? There are two users. Now, user 1 wants to read this file clear and user 2 also wants to read this file so if both the users want to read this file will they have any problem while reading it correct answer is option number a not option number b correct answer is option number a so now tell me Will any problem occur if I let user 1 and user 2 read the file simultaneously at the same point of time? No. Reading is reading read by 1 and read by 2. That is read by user 1 and read by user 2 at the same time is allowed. Okay? There, there will be no problem. Now, what happens if user 1 wants to read and user 2 wants to write? Or user 1 wants to write and user 2 also wants to write. So this will create a problem. Yes, as soon as one is performing read operation and other one is performing write operation or both are performing write operation, this will create a problem. These oper operations are not allowed. This will create a problem. Okay. So, what they are saying? They are saying writers are given exclusive access to shared objects. Right. Correct. Some access, exclusive access must be given to writers because both the writers, if there are two users, both cannot write at the same point of time if they are sharing one object. Correct. Readers are given exclusive access? No. 
there is no need to give exclusive access to readers because if they are reading same file and they do not have to make any change in it so there is no need to give them access you can read the same file if you are sharing it and if you are only reading if there is no updation to be made so writers are writers are to be given an exclusive access but there is no need for readers to give an exclusive access now third is saying both readers and writers are given no we have already discussed that readers so there is no need to give exclusive access only writers are there to be given exclusive access so my correct answer will become option number 1 clear everyone clear this point okay so now moving forward with the next question we have this is your disk scheduling this is the question of disk scheduling similar to cpu scheduling we have few disk scheduling algorithms as well so exclusive access exclusive access basically is that type of a lock that you have studied in your uh, database there was exclusive locks like shared lock was there s lock and there was x uh, exclusive lock was there basically that is your exclusive access from that point of view you can understand this that there is somewhat a process called locking okay and in database we have studied this locking so that is what that writer should have exclusive access means that if one person if user 1 is writing something no other if writer if user 1 is writing something then no other user should have an access to that same file it should wait until unless the updation is made to the file no other operation should be done until and unless user 1 or any of the particular user is done with the updation or writing clear now this is the question everyone they are saying that they, these are the request input output request and they are arriving in this order the disk head is assumed to be at cylinder 23 and moving in the direction of decreasing number of cylinders you have to use a scan scheduling algorithm try to do it and then we will discuss theek hai navdeep i hope your doubt is clear now and the time starts now okay Okay. I think you told your name right. Computer classes for learners. I think you have told your name. I just forgot your name. <clears throat> What is the answer for this, everyone? Only one person has given the answer. What about others? okay so the correct answer is option number c 151 theek hai now before proceeding let's discuss some algorithms and what is this scan scheduling algorithm theek hai so everyone please put your attention here now we have this this scheduling algorithms now what is this basically that we have a disk theek hai we have a disk and in that disk we have few of the uh, slots that theek hai so request input output request arrived at this disk in some order okay and we have different different algorithms to how to uh, allot these requests and how to uh, you can say execute this re uh, request okay so now what we have first one is your if you look here uh, hmm. so first one we have already discussed it is your sstf that is shortest seek time first okay if you need information on this uh, algorithm so what you have to do just uh, go for the uh, pyq first pyq session that we had first pyq class that we had there i have discussed the 2020 question that came okay in that they have given this type of uh, algorithm they have asked the question and it was based on this algorithm so i have discussed in detail short as it and first so there you can understand that this what is this algorithm basically okay then if i talk about second one we have scan now what is scan basically suppose if you have if they have given you 
few input output request yeah anita sorry yes okay what they are giving they are saying that you have few request that is 11 just for example okay i am taking an example everyone 11 20 35 70 190 okay and they are saying that you have to start from 0 to 200 or 199 for more precisely take 0 to 199 now what this scan means you will notice that in scan they will mention it every time that whether you have to go to the largest number whether you have to go in ascending order or you have to go in descending order every time you will have this question on scan you will see that they will mention it whether you have to go in ascending order or descending order okay now suppose first of all what we will do we will make this type of line okay this is for those who are just new to this basic i'm explaining you will make this line okay this is your 190 and this is your 199 so if i have to follow this scan one what will happen is i will and suppose they are saying that my disk head is currently at 20 so i am at 20 and they are saying that you have to move towards larger value okay they are mentioning that move towards larger value if they have mentioned you this okay now since they have said to me that i have to move towards larger value this means that i have to move in this direction so after 20 i have 35 after 35 i have 70 after 70 i have 190 now what happens in scan is that if you are moving towards larger value you will go up to the last that is 199 even if 199 is not included in this list still you have to go up to 199 this is what your scan means okay if you are going towards a larger value you will go up to the last value if you are going towards a smaller value you have to go up to the last value And after one ninety nine, I saw that still one request is remaining. That is eleven. So from one ninety nine, I will come back to this eleven. This scan is also known as elevator algorithm. Okay, so this is basically your scan algorithm. Now, if I see this question, they are saying that what they are saying that these are your requests. Okay, and first what we will do we will try to make a line timeline type of thing and we'll write these request in the what you can say in the correct order okay so it is zero then what will be the one just wait i have already done it so it will save our time yeah so zero then six then 10 i'll not explain the entire thing I, you have to do the calculation yourself i'll just explain how to solve this so 12 15 23 why i have added 23 because 23 is where the disk head is present here so since this 23 is not mentioned here but they have written clearly that disk head is assumed to be at 23 so you have to include 23 as well okay 34 then we have 44 then we have 45 then we have 54 73 97 and 10 120 110 128 and the last is 150 okay now they are saying that this head is 23 so this head is here okay and they are saying moving in the direction of decreasing number they have clearly mentioned in the direction of decreasing order means you have to move here so you will go to 15 then you will go to 20 12 you will go to 10 6 And say it is a scan, so this means that you have to go to zero as well, and then from zero you will move back to thirty four, forty four, forty five, fifty four, seventy three, ninety seven, hundred ten, hundred twenty eight, only up to one twenty eight. You will not cover one fifty because one fifty is not in your request. Okay, in scan, if you are moving this way, you have to go up to the last and. but you don't have to go to 150 here okay just remember this point so now when you will calculate it you will get to 23 plus 128 and the result will be 151 i hope this thing is clear to everyone clear everyone how we did this question so always remember for scan what we have to do we have to move in a direction and that direction will be mentioned to us and in that direction we have to move up to the last value that is here in case it has zero okay okay now moving on this is another type of question that is your 
based on your first fit and best fit okay try to do this we will discuss it and then we will 128 kaise aaya see what you have to do this is 23 if i do it in a manner this will be i have to subtract these numbers the distance between these two numbers so 23 minus 15 will give me 8 this will give me 3 this will give me 2 this will give me 4 and this will give me 6 so when i will add them i will get 23 similarly if you do here this will give you 34 this will give you 10 this will give you 9 this will give you 1 this will give you this will give you 10 this will give you 1 this will give you 9 this will give you 19 24 13 and 18 and when you will add these values you will get 128 so this is how i got 128 repeat again see nothing is there everyone just try to uh, see here in scan what they say is that in scan no they will mention that which order you have to follow which way you have to go okay if i try to explain it in a nice way if i draw it so it will be basically that i was at 23 my disc was at 23 now they are saying move in the direction of decreasing number so decreasing means the ones that are less than 50, uh, 23 so i will go to 15 then i will go to 12 then i will go to 10 then i'll go to 6 and since it is scan so scan means ki aapko, you have to go towards the end whichever path you are following you have to go towards the end so end is my zero and you will notice that zero is not in my input output request but still i have to cover zero because this is scan algorithm okay now what are the next remaining now 34 so from zero i will go directly to this 34 then i will go to this 44 then 45 then 54 then 73 then 97 then 110 and 128 i will not cover 150 because in the scan i only have to cover one side okay if i would have been going in this direction i would have covered 150 first if i would have been going in this direction if they would have written increasing number okay if they would have mentioned increasing number then i would have gone in this direction and would have covered this 150 but since they are saying decreasing so i will go in this direction and i will cover zero not 150 now what i have to do i have to find the difference what i have to do i have to find the this head movement total disc head movement so how do we find this head movement this head movement is fine by adding the difference between these the movements that we have made so 23 minus 15 is what it is 8 15 minus 12 is 3 12 minus 10 is 2 10 minus 6 is 4 6 minus 0 is 6 34 minus 0 is 34 नहीं स्कैन हाँ अगर आप ये डिपेंड करता है कि आप अगर आप ये यहाँ पे हो ठीक है आपका डिस्क यहाँ पे डिस्क हेड आपका यहाँ पे ठीक है अब अगर आपसे वो मेंशन दे विल क्लियरली मेंशन यू दैट यू हैव टू गो टुवर्ड्स द लार्जर वैल्यू और टुवर्ड्स द स्मॉलर वैल्यू नाउ सपोज इफ दे आर सेइंग but the range of your disc, range of disc is from 0 to 199. Okay? This means that the last value here is 199 and the starting value is 0. Now if they are saying towards, first they are saying towards larger value. So you will cover all these in between. You will go from here to here, then to here, then to here, then to here. Okay? This is the last request. Suppose it has uh, 5, 18, 20 and 128 suppose this this is my 5 okay so here it is 18 here it is 28 and it is 128 now if 199 is still not mentioned but because i am using this scan algorithm i will move till 199 no matter what okay if they are saying towards larger value now second option arises if they are saying towards a smaller value second is they are saying towards a smaller Okay, so in case of smaller, what I'll do, I'll start again from 5 and I will cover this and I will go up to 0, even if 0 is not mentioned. So this is basically in your scan. If you are moving in a part, if you are moving in this direction, you will go up to the last. If you are moving in this direction, you will go up to the last. Depends on which, what they have mentioned in the question, whether it is towards larger value or increasing order or towards smaller value or decreasing order. Clear?
clear this point we need i hope this clear to you now and priyanka i hope this is clear to you how 128 came theek hai i'll just write here 10 1 9 19 24 and 18 okay now the next question that we have is your your memory partitions we have theek hai now try to do this question and then we will discuss it how to do these type of questions theek hai so the timer has already started you do it and then we'll discuss it लास्ट वैल्यू में से स्मॉलेस्ट वैल्यू लास्ट वैल्यू में से नहीं अगर आपका ये ऐसे है यहाँ पे आपका ट्वेंटी थ्री है और यहाँ पे आपका थर्टी फोर है यहाँ आपका फोर्टी एट है ठीक है एंड इफ यू मूविंग फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी थ्री टू थर्टी फोर एंड फ्रॉम थर्टी फोर्टी एट टू थर्टी फोर तो वॉट विल हैपन दिस वैल्यू विल बी इक्वल टू थर्टी फोर माइनस ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड दिस वैल्यू विल बी इक्वल टू फोर्टी एट माइनस थर्टी फोर ठीक है दिस इज हाउ यू विल कैलकुलेट दीज वैल्यूज Okay, so uh, Anita has already given the answer. What about others? Clear, we need. Now the doubt is clear. Okay. Let's see the correct answer. What happened? Everyone doing or not? What is the answer for this question, everyone? The correct answer for this question is option number D. Cannot be fit in any block. ठीक है. Now let's see what is all this. ठीक है. Everybody, please pay attention here. Now in memory management in operating system, we have resource allocation schemes. ठीक है. There are resource allo uh, allocation algorithms you can say or schemes you can say whatever. ठीक है. There are different schemes for that or algorithm. First is your first fit. ठीक है नाउ व्हाट इज दिस फर्स्ट फिट नाउ व्हाट विल हैपन इन दिस इज दैट दे विल अलॉट दे विल गिव यू अ मेमोरी ब्लॉक ठीक है दे विल गिव यू अ मेमोरी ब्लॉक एंड दैट मेमोरी ब्लॉक विल बी डिवाइडेड इनटू स्मॉल स्मॉल मेमोरी पार्टीशंस ठीक है सपोज इफ दिस इज माय द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस मेमोरी इज 200k द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस मेमोरी इज 50k द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस ब्लॉक इज 100k दिस ब्लॉक इज 300k ठीक है लाइक दिस दे विल मेंशन यू द ब्लॉक्स ऑफ मेमोरी and then what will happen they will give you certain processes or jobs jobs or processes whatever you feel like that job 1 is of 25k space that the space required by job 1 next job job 2 require 50k space that is random randomly they will allot you these uh, they will give you these jobs or processes now what they will expect from you is that by using there are three uh, fit algorithm one is your first fit one is your best fit and another one is your worst fit theek okay? hai so by giving you these three algorithms they will mention any one of them and they will say that try to fit these jobs in the blocks that are been provided to you whatever you whatever method they will give according to that you have to try to fill these jobs in these particular blocks This is clear. This is how we allocate the jobs, the following memory. Okay. Now let's take an example for this, and then we will try to solve it. Now the first one, if I talk about first fit, what they are saying is that they have mentioned a, uh, they have given you processes. They have given you twenty five k. Then they have given you fifty k. then they have given you 100k and then they have given you 175k theek hai these are your jobs theek hai these are your jobs or you can say the processes whatever uh, you want to say them theek hai and they have given you this memory that this is the memory block and the memory block is divided into certain memory partitions now what are those partitions they have divided the memory into 50k then they have divided the memory into 75k 50k then it is 150k 
है इट इज वन सेवेंटी फाइव के एंड इट इज थ्री हंड्रेड के ठीक है दीज आर द मेमोरी पार्टीशन दैट दे हैव डन फॉर दिस मेमोरी एंड दे आर सींग दैट दिस मेमोरी स्पेस इज ऑलरेडी ऑक्यूपाइड दिस मेमोरी स्पेस इज ऑलरेडी ऑक्यूपाइड एंड दिस मेमोरी स्पेस इज ऑलरेडी ऑक्यूपाइड So what are the remaining spaces? Seventy-five k and one seventy-five k, and you have to allot these processes to these places. Now let's look what does first fit means. First we have twenty-five k. Now first fit says that as soon as you find the first block that is able to accommodate this job, allot that pro allot that position, allot that memory block to this job. ठीक है, so I'll start from this place. I saw seventy five k, and I know that seventy five is greater than twenty five. That is, seventy five will be able to accommodate twenty five in itself, right? So what I will do? I will do a partition here. I will allot this twenty five k to this seventy five k from this seventy five k. I will take this twenty five k and I will allot it this much space. Now the remaining space is what? Remaining space is fifty k. Now this seventy five k is divided into two blocks. That is twenty five k and fifty k. Now this is allotted. Now I saw the second process. Second process is fifty k. Again I start from here. I saw this fifty k is already occupied. This twenty five k is already occupied. Now what is here? I have fifty k. So I will allot this memory partition to this fifty k. Check. Now I have hundred hundred k. Again, I'll start from there. I'll see that this is not free. This is not free. This is not free. This is not free. Here I have one seventy five k, and one seventy five is greater than hundred. This means that one seventy five will accommodate hundred in itself. So this is also accommodated here. Now the remaining value is seventy five k. So this this is not one seventy five. This is seventy five. Sorry, this is seventy five. So this seventy five will be allotted the space here, and I will allot it this much. ठीक है, दिस इज हाउ वी डू अलॉटमेंट इन केस ऑफ फर्स्ट फिट नाउ वॉट हैपन्स इन बेस्ट फिट इज कि वी ट्राई टू लुक फॉर द बेस्ट स्पेस दैट इज सपोज इफ आई हैव अ मेमोरी ब्लॉक ठीक है एंड इन मेमोरी ब्लॉक हेयर आई एम हैविंग फिफ्टी के एंड हेयर आई एम हैविंग ट्वेंटी फाइव के एंड हेयर आई एम हैविंग फिफ्टीन के ठीक है दिस इज द मेमोरी पार्टीशन एंड द प्रोसेस जॉब दैट हैज अराइव इज टेन के नाउ टेन के कैन बी अकोमोडेटेड हेयर ऑल्सो Here also and here also. What what will I prefer? I will look for the best option. So the best option out of these three is your fifteen k. So I will allot ten here and this five. This five will be the remaining one. So this happens in your best fit. Okay. Now try to do this question. What was given to us? They have given us these memory partitions. So what will I do? I will draw these memory partitions here. I hope you are getting my point. What I am trying to explain everyone. कुछ भी ना समझ में आए सो प्लीज जस्ट से टू मी देयर एंड वरलक्ष्मी जस्ट वेट आई क्लियर योर डाउट ठीक है फाइव हंड्रेड के देन वी हैव टू हंड्रेड के देन वी हैव थ्री हंड्रेड के एंड देन वी हैव सिक्स हंड्रेड के ठीक है एंड दीज आर द प्रोसेस आई राइट इट एज पी वन पी टू पी थ्री एंड पी फोर नॉट दर थिंग यूजिंग फर्स्ट फिट एलगोरिट ठीक है ट्राई टू शू इट बाय फर्स्ट फिट नाउ व्हाट वी विल व्हाट विल हैपन इज 212 नाउ टेल मी वेयर आई कैन अलॉट दिस 212 बाय फर्स्ट फिट टेल मी दिस वेयर कैन आई अलॉट दिस 212 बाय फर्स्ट फिट एवरीवन प्लीज टेल मी इन व्हिच ब्लॉक कैन आई अलॉट दिस 212 के इफ आई एम यूजिंग फर्स्ट फिट No, 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 no. Not hundred, five hundred. Correct. You will take this two hundred twelve k space from this five hundred. You have to do in such a way that pura ek saath. No, the whole process is allotted to one memory space entirely to one memory space. Okay. Now this two hundred twelve is allotted. Now what is the remaining space? The remaining space is hundred and twelve. It will not be two hundred k because I am using first fit. And when I start from here, first I will encounter hundred k. 
I saw that hundred k is there, but two hundred twelve is greater than hundred, so hundred will not be able to accommodate it. Then I saw five hundred, so five hundred is greater than two hundred twelve, so it can accommodate two hundred twelve completely in itself. So that's why I give this much space to two hundred twelve. The remaining space will be what? The remaining space will become one hundred and twelve k. Clear? Okay. No, sorry, not one hundred twelve. It is two eighty eight. Sorry, sorry. It is two eighty eight. The remaining space will become two hundred eighty eight k. Now check for process number two. That is four hundred seventeen. Where I will allot this four hundred seventeen. <coughs> Now, where I'll allot this four hundred seventeen, everyone? Correct, six hundred k, because six hundred is the only place that can accommodate four hundred seventeen into it. Okay, so this four hundred and seventeen will be accommodated to this one, and the space remaining will be one eighty three. Okay. It is first fit, so you have to look for the place that is first available to you, where you can accommodate it. Now one hundred and twelve. Now where can I accommodate one hundred twelve, everyone? Where can I accommodate this one hundred and twelve? Where can I accommodate this one hundred and twelve? Right, right, Supriya. Uh, no, no, not Supriya. Sorry. Uh, right, you are. Two hundred and eighty-eight. May I will accommodate this hundred and twelve, and the remaining space will be what? The remaining space will be. Uh, if I see here, one seventy-six is the remaining space. Okay, one seventy-six is the remaining space. See, you have to look for that space which can fully accommodate your process. Okay, you have to look for the. Yes. Okay. Now we have four twenty six process P four four twenty six. Now you see here, here you have hundred and hundred k remaining. Here space remaining is hundred k. Here space remaining is one seventy six. Here space remaining is two hundred k. Here you have three hundred k, and here you have one eighty three. Now no space is bigger than four twenty six. So that is why four hundred twenty six cannot be fit in any block or cannot be accommodated in any of the given blocks, because I don't have this much space where I can fully accommodate this four hundred and twenty six. Clear, everyone? Six <clears> hundred <throat> is no more left with us because we have allotted four hundred seventeen to six hundred. So the remaining space with S is only one eighty three, and two hundred maybe you cannot accommodate four twenty six because four twenty six is greater than two hundred. I cannot do this. Clear? Clear, everyone. Now the question that Var Lakshmi asked, she asked if they are moving towards larger, then also we know. Var Lakshmi, if they are moving towards a larger value, then you have to go to the last value that is here, that is this value. If you are moving towards a larger value, if you are moving towards a small value, then you have to go towards zero. Otherwise, if you have to see that to which direction they are moving. Okay, clear everyone. This is clear. See you in in this resource allocation. You have to keep in mind one thing that first you have to allot whole process, allot whole process in one piece. Okay, whole process in one piece. Even if you are having uh, the space available in slots, that is, if suppose your you have space fifty k left here and you have space twenty k left here, and the job that has arrived is of seventy k. You cannot allot fifty here and twenty here. No, you have to allot this job seventy at one place all together. You cannot divide this job into slots like fifty and twenty. This is not possible. Okay, so allot the whole process in one piece. Okay, clear everyone. Now in your operating system, the most important topic that is remaining is one is your deadlock. 
and other one is your semaphore that occurs in your synchronization okay so still we have one day left for our os so we will complete that these two type of questions there and i'll see to it if any more questions are still remaining of any type we will cover them also okay now i basically so i don't think that your exam will happened on the uh, tentative dates why because 10th exams have uh, <clears throat> have been cancelled out and 12th exams have postponed board exams right so i don't think that your exam will also take place on the tentative dates that is second may to 17 but still we don't know we'll just wait for the admit card and then if if the admit card comes tomorrow then we'll plan accordingly and if it does not come then we will plan accordingly we will move as we have already thought about okay so tomorrow in your operating system class that is your third session of operating system we'll be covering this deadlock questions and these semaphore questions so try to revise the concepts of deadlock and semaphores if possible okay and try to revise these questions that we have already covered today and this pdf this is the telegram channel uh, that is here okay join this telegram channel t dot i'll write here t dot m e slash digimento this is the telegram channel and the name of this channel is digimento education this is double i okay double i digimento education is the name of the channel you can sub you can join it subscribe to it and there i i share the pdf so operating system pdfs you will get tomorrow after your third class will also be co completed and if you want to take the subscription so this is the number that you can call on and take the help from the ma'am is there uh, so you can call on this number 9821876104 or 02 okay there are two numbers where you can call and you can get the help if you want to join my sessions that i take on zoom okay the sessions take place on zoom where you can pay for and you can take the sessions we have already covered their software engineering discrete mathematics toc and right now i am doing compiler design okay so compiler design ki we have already done two classes so if still if you if you are not late and if you want to take the subscription you can take and be prepare uh, and uh, try to take subscription for at least 3 to 6 months because this is such a vast syllabus it becomes very impossible to teach the whole syllabus complete in 3 months okay so try to take subscription for a bigger amount of time that is up to 6 months i prefer because 6 months are more than enough for completing your paper 2 okay so if you want to take the subscription the, uh, right now is the time you can take it otherwise we are having these sessions on youtube as well but what happens in youtube now uh, see there are so many distributing there are around 6 to 7 algorithms but with due to lack of time we can only cover 3 or 4 that depends on the question that has been asked okay but what happens in zoom session is that we complete the entire syllabus we complete all the questions all the you know algorithms that are given to us so try to take that subscription if it is feasible to you and if you are not if it is not feasible then we definitely have this youtube session for you all so you can always join this youtube session and study on this platform as well okay so this much for today tomorrow we will have another operating system session and then we will discuss what is the next session that we can have on next subject okay so that is all for tomorrow that is all for today sorry so take care everyone and have a nice day that is remaining and good night